Chapter 1901, the situation is critical. Both of them crouched on the stone blocks and fingered the cracks inch by inch before touching the blue stone on the two walls. However, they weren't able to feel anything out even after a good amount of time. The water inside the corridor was about to reach the bottom of their feet. It had to be known that everybody was currently hovering in the air. Therefore, the water current was almost about to reach their ankles at a horrifying speed in the span of several short minutes. When the entire corridor got submerged in this icy water, everybody could only protect themselves with their defensive barriers, as well as fight against the monstrous fishes in the water they would pay a heavy price in that kind of environment. After all, defensive barriers would not protect them without limit either. If the monstrous fishes were to tear open a crack, then the entire mystic weapon would go to waste. Quickly find it. Yuxin panicked when she saw that the water had already reached her ankles as she stooped on the stone block. At this time, a student from Sunlight Academy climbed onto the blue stone wall nearby and exclaimed in surprise, Come look quickly. There's a ring to pull on here. The people standing below were simply unable to see it. That student was only able to see this ring pull on the blue stone wall when he hovered to the ceiling of the corridor. Molian and Feng Chen's eyelids jerked uncontrollably. Before Kiao Mu could blurt out wait, that dummy gave a hard pull. A rumble. The sounds of a cranking mechanism came from deep within the tomb. A round hole abruptly appeared in the blue stone wall beside the student. Suddenly, a monstrous fish abruptly shuttled out from within and bit that person's neck. Ah, cough, ah, ah. That person struggled to break free, but he was unable to retaliate. The monstrous fish bit off half of the Sunlight Academy student's head with a chomp, and fresh blood flowed down the blue stone wall into the icy water. The monstrous fishes got triggered by the blood and all jumped out of the water, chomping at the people's legs. Chi Xuang Xuan, the little fatty, and them quickly steadied themselves, doing their best to hover against the blue stone ceiling. Chi Xuang Xuan was groping along the ceiling, and she reflexively pulled on something she discovered. Don't pull. Kiam Yu keenly saw that Chi Xuang Xuan was also holding on to a ring pull. This ring pull was made out of bronze and painted with the color of stone, making it camouflage perfectly with the blue stone wall. You simply couldn't discern that there was a ring pull the when you didn't pull on it. But when you touched it, people would just pull on it due to all kinds of unfathomable reasons, whether it be from curiosity or a survival instinct. Chi Xuang Xuan's petite hand froze just like this on the spot. She didn't know whether she should keep holding on or let go of that ring pull. Kiao Mu, Mo Lian, and Feng Chen hastily drifted over and examined this ring pull on the uppermost ceiling. Meanwhile, that monstrous fish had finished feasting on the Sunlight Academy student's remaining corpse. It then rapidly swam over to the stone blocks where Yuxin and Hiwai were. Yuxin's expression changed, and she gritted her teeth using all her might to strike the monstrous fish with mystic energy. Bam! Yet the monstrous fish did not slow down at all. Instead, it bit toward Duxin at an even more abnormal speed. At the moment of imminent peril, Sunlight Academy's mentor threw out a wood vine. Chapter 1902 Escape route. After flinging over that wood vine, it wrapped around two students' waists and lifted them up instantly. At the same time, that gigantic monstrous fish had opened its mouth wide and chomped down on the stone block, instantly biting off a large chunk of stone. Its teeth's sharpness made everybody's expressions falter. Fook, how did this mutated fish get so big? Daoji's gaze sank as he struck down a monstrous fish with a flip of his hand. Ever since that student dumbly pulled the ring pull and opened up another round hole, a lot of monstrous fishes kept jumping out. Besides, Daoji was the first to check out that hole. It was pitch black inside, without a ray of light. This was probably a dead end. What are you people still waiting for? Quickly enter the hole. Yuxin grumbled as she floated over, wanting to enter the newly opened hole. However, the head mentor of Sunlight Academy quickly pulled on her. Wait. Zudanjin and Waigzu were already standing behind Chi Xuang Xuan by now. Seeing the ring pull she had touched, their expressions sank. It's very possible that pulling it again would screw them over. I if I let go, it it might not be okay either. 
Shi Xuan Xuan grumbled unhappily. She hadn't used that much energy to pull it, and she had a bad premonition that something unlucky would happen once she let go. It's fine. Kiao Mu patted her shoulder. You'll have to release your grip no matter what. See what kind of trouble might happen. Shi Xuan Xuan tightened her petite hand. Just as she pulled her hand back, another round hole opened up on the opposite blue stone wall. This made a perfect symmetrical match with that stone hole on the other side. This time, Everybody was more wary. They all contributed their spiritual energy when they saw a large-scale monstrous fish jump out in front of them. This soon killed that arrogant serrated tooth monstrous fish. Sweat beaded on Yuxin's forehead. Go, go to which hole? Everybody quickly looked up at their various masters. Zudanjin and Waigzu were momentarily silent, and they couldn't help but look at Molian and Fang Chen. Where do you say we go? Molian pointed at the hole Xuan Xuan made. Over there. Okay. Zudanjin nodded, and he was the first to lead the group toward the round hole that got opened up on the blue stone wall. That mentor from Sunlight Academy hastily shouted for them to stay. This mentor, this mentor, would you like to consider our offer some more? Even though the water current hadn't risen to the top yet, it wouldn't be long before the water completely submerged everything. At that time, the extra water would definitely be filling up the round holes in the blue stone walls. Hence, they would still be unable to escape the fate of getting hunted by monstrous fishes. Yet Zudanjin did not say anything while wearing a grim expression. He decisively jumped into a blue stone hole with a group of students. A huge tremor came from the corridor behind them. Hong Yui Academy and Shuangfing Academy's head mentors had also gritted their teeth and made their resolves with a wave of their hands. Let's go. Since River Horse Academy didn't have a mentor to lead the team, the unlucky students could naturally only go along with a bandwagon. Sunlight Academy's head mentor naturally did not get the chance to hesitate too much about the decision. They would soon see the water current engulfing them like a waterfall. Subsequently, gigantic monstrous fishes would jump in and out of the water. But they did not have the time to ponder over it anymore. They quickly caught up to the bigger group and abruptly leapt into the holes in the blue stone walls. Tilda, Chapter 1903 a missing person. When the last student from Sunlight Academy stepped inside the round hole in the blue stone wall, a loud sound rang behind them. Turning around, everybody saw that a boulder had descended out of the sky and blocked up the path from which they came. Everybody's heart couldn't help but sink. This tomb was very bizarre. The holes those ring pull mechanisms opened seemed to be coaxing them forward step by step, yet they did not know whether the road ahead was a dead end or an escape route. If the road ahead turned out to be a dead end, then everybody would suffocate in this tiny corridor. This place would become their burial ground. Everybody took a deep breath as they strode after Zudanjin's group. Even though that boulder blocked the way back out, it did not stop the water current and the non-stop fighting with the monstrous fishes. The people from Sunlight Academy were at the very back of the procession. They had mixed emotions from anxiety and melancholy as they looked back at that pitch black corridor. Those monstrous fishes were so numerous that their combined offensive power would do a number on them. Moreover, the mutated monstrous fishes that appeared afterwards were at least three to five times larger than the ones from before. That put them in even more strained circumstances. They would exhaust their mystic energy if they overextended themselves. No one could persist for more than four hours in an enemy encirclement without tiring out. Yuxin and Hiwai followed closely after their head mentor, and all the students had anxious expressions as they paced forward quickly. A psychological pressure unavoidably weighed down on them after walking in the dark for a long period of time. Besides, the psychological pressure was only multiplied by their uncertain future ahead. Hey, Feng Tong, you think we can safely walk out of here? A Sunlight Academy student whispered to the classmate following behind him. Because of the narrow clearance, only one person could pass through the corridor at a time. Therefore, everybody had stretched out single file like a snake as they meandered forward. When Wang Zi did not hear a response from his classmate after some time, he looked back puzzledly. His good friend Feng Tong was trailing behind him dispiritedly with a drooping head. No one else was around them anymore. Wang Zi sighed when he saw Feng Tong's condition and patted the latter's shoulder. Don't worry, we will definitely be able to go out. However, 
it was unknown whether he was saying this to comfort someone else or to comfort himself. Wang Zi turned around with a sigh and picked up the pace as he called, Feng Tong, hurry up, Zi, say, what should we do if this ends up as a dead end? A female student in front of Wang Zi couldn't help whispering. Wang Zi's blood ran cold, and he shrugged. If worse comes to worst, we could drill through the ground and get out that way. The female student nodded dispiritedly and casually swept a look behind him when she suddenly halted. Zi, where is Feng Tong? Wang Zi turned around and felt the chills seeping out from his body. Feng Feng Tong? Feng Tong? Wang Zi whipped his head around. Feng Tong? Feng Tong? The female student shuddered in fright and hastily ran toward the procession. She shouted, Mentor, Mentor, Feng Tong is missing. How could Feng Tong be missing? The head mentor of Sunlight Academy turned around upon hearing this. Chapter 1904 An Extra Person Didn't a boulder block the path behind them? As Feng Tong had vanished so silently, everybody felt the chills as they looked at the pitch dark corridor they had passed through. Pay attention, everybody. The head mentor declared gravely. He felt extremely frustrated. They hadn't encountered many zombies after entering the mountain, nor had they even reached the zombie base, yet his academy had already lost two students. It was truly a headache. Men mentor, what should we do now? Wang Zi felt his hair standing on end. Feng Tong was still following behind him just now, yet he had actually vanished without a trace in the blink of an eye. Continue walking forward. The mentor from Sunlight Academy looked back at the glows of light from the night luminous pearls and hastily said, it's not the time to be mulling over this, we have to catch up quickly, let's go. Wang Zi gulped his saliva and glanced behind him again. That pitch dark corridor was still and silent. They couldn't see the end of it, and the darkness was like a huge phantasmic beast that was opening its mouth to await its delicious meal. Wang Zi gave a shudder and quickly caught up to the procession. This long and narrow corridor seemed to stretch on for a long time. They had walked for nearly two hours, yet they still hadn't reached the end of it. After walking for another fifteen minutes, Wang Zi could hear the indistinct sound of breathing behind him. The breathing was heavy and mixed in with some pants, like a sluggish donkey pulling along a cart with leaden footsteps. Wang Zi quickly strode forward his face practically green from terror. Since Feng Tong had vanished behind him earlier, he had become the last person in the procession, so who was breathing heavily behind him right now? Wang Zi felt as if his neck had stiffened to the point that it was like a wheel that had gone into disrepair, he could even hear the cracking sounds his neck produced from moving it. He carefully peered behind him, after which Wang Zi let out a blood-girdling scream. The procession stopped. There were sixty to seventy people all together in this snaking procession. Because Kiao Mu and them were walking at the very front, they were momentarily unaware of the reason for that horrific scream in the back. What happened? Mentors turned toward the back of the procession in concern. The head mentor of Hong Yui Academy, which was following after Apex Academy, quickly walked up and suggested, This is Mentor Zhu, correct? Do you want to stop for a short rest for now and send someone to the back to check it out? After walking for so long in this dark corridor, the students' conditions weren't too good. Upon hearing this, Mentor Zi looked back at the students behind him. Under the glow from the night luminous pearls, even though Lu Yu and them did not look great, their faces red as drained of color as the students from the other academies. Might as well. Let's rest in place for ten minutes. Mentors gave a nod. After all, they had been fleeing for their lives ever since the start of the monstrous fish attack. They had practically been unable to catch their breath. The head mentor of Hong Yui Academy nodded gratefully at Mentors before turning around to give instructions. Pass the word down that we'll be resting in place for ten minutes. Everybody take advantage of this time to recover your strength and mystic energy. Don't let your imaginations go wild. Everybody nodded at his words. Chapter 1905, Ghost Spirit Possession Just as the mentors finished speaking, one of the students collapsed from the exhaustion and starting heaving heavy breaths. It was primarily from mental exhaustion. They had stayed tense the entire time, after all, so these ten minutes of rest were simply a lifesaver. After everybody sat down against the wall, the people from Sunlight Academy standing in the back stood out. Everybody sit and don't move. After instructing his students, 
Hong Yui Academy's mentor walked to the back of the procession. Since everybody was sitting against the wall while tucking in their legs, this created some free room in the narrow corridor for Hong Yui Academy's mentor to quickly get past them. Kiao Mu sat beside Mo Lian quietly thinking about something with half-lidded eyes. At the very back of the procession, Feng Tong, the missing student from Sunlight Academy who had reappeared, was choking his classmate Wang Zi like he had gone mad. A dim light flashed in his eyes as he looked indifferently at the other party. It was as if there was some irreconcilable hatred between them that made him want to choke Wang Zi to death on the spot. He did not budge no matter how the other students attacked his back. Although blood was already trickling from Feng Tong's mouth and his body was getting injured, his strength seemed to have no limits as he squeezed Wang Zi's neck. His hands were like two iron clamps as they secured his neck in a death grip, making Wang Zi's eyes roll back from asphyxiation. Hong Yui Academy's teacher's gaze sank when he saw this, and he quickly flung a yellow talisman onto Feng Tong. Screech! This short and piercing cry was petrifying in this dark and long corridor. Kiao Mu returned to the present and suddenly took out a spiritual weapon dagger. She carved five tally marks on the wall behind her. She then gravely turned to Sunlight Academy and looked from a distance at Feng Tong, who had been restrained on the ground with the mentor's collective efforts. The students' faces were green as they watched Feng Tong who was struggling underneath Hong Yui Academy's mentor's foot and screeching barbarically. They silently gulped down their saliva. At this time, Wang Zi was finally able to breathe again. He clutched his chest with a ghastly pale complexion and coughed loudly. Zi, how are you? The students from Sunlight Academy gathered around him worriedly. Wang Zi smiled bitterly. The feeling of skirting past death's door really was terrible. He had thought that he was about to die when Feng Tong was choking him just now, because no matter how much mystic energy he accumulated to retaliate back, he was still unable to extricate himself. Feng Tong's strength was simply frightening, like it was an inviolable existence. The head mentor of Sunlight Academy looked alarmingly at Feng Tong whom Hong Yui Academy's mentor restrained under his foot. This mentor, what is the matter with my student? What happened? He probably got possessed by a ghost spirit. Hong Yui Academy's mentor explained gravely. He stepped harder on the incessantly struggling and howling Feng Tong. But my protective talisman is not enough to chase out this ghost spirit. We need to think of another way. That mentor said while creasing his brows. It would be great if we had rope to tie him up first for now. Didn't someone bring a bundle? Chapter 1906 The Savage Young Couple Yuxin looked meaningfully in Kiao Mu's direction. As the people didn't lower their voices, Kiao Mu naturally heard them. She then trotted over with her blue and white bundle. Mo Lian also followed along. He creased his brows when he saw Feng Tong whom Hong Yui Academy's mentor had restrained under his foot. Feng Tong bared his teeth fiercely when he saw more people crowding around him, roaring at Kiao Mu and Mo Lian. However, Mo Lian merely curved his lips in a spurious smile before generating a cluster of purple flames at his fingertips, motioning to toss it at Feng Tong's body. Screech! Feng Tong screamed shrilly, as if terrified by that cluster of flames. He curled up into a ball on the ground and stopped his struggling. Are you coming out by yourself, or do I have to beat you up until you do? Kiao Mu stated nonchalantly as a dozen blue protective talismans shot out from her sleeves, each glowing with a dim blue light. Screech! This ghost spirit probably didn't expect to encounter a young couple who was each more savage than the other. If his consciousness still existed, he would certainly cry tears of sympathy for himself. You're still not coming out? The little fellow shouted impatiently as she raised her arm, motioning to throw the dozen blue protective talismans at Feng Tong. Yet suddenly, Feng Tong started coughing violently. Crown Prince Mo hastily grabbed the little fellow's finger and helplessly pointed in another direction. He came out. Ah, Miss Kiao glanced up at the Crown Prince who immediately understood. He turned her petite body in that direction and pointed at the corner. He's over there. That black apparition had curled up into a ball in the corner, invisible to the little fellow's naked eye. He wished for nothing more than to burrow into a crack in the wall. It wasn't that he couldn't burrow into the wall, but he was afraid any reckless movement would cause that savage couple to hit him with purple flames and talismans before he could escape. 1. At that time, 
his soul would definitely scatter. The little fellow took out her ghost spirit bead and beckoned in the direction that Crown Prince Mo had indicated. Come, the ghost spirit was probably trembling while wincing, afraid to get close. Even though Kiao Mu couldn't see him, she naturally knew that this ghost spirit hadn't entered the ghost spirit bead since the bead hadn't lit up yet. She immediately scowled, and the talisman paper in her palm jumped up. You're refusing a toast just to drink a forfeit. Just as she was about to have a fit, screech. That ghost spirit let out a plaintive cry and rushed toward the bead in Kiao Mu's hand in the blink of an eye. After a blinding glow passed, Kiao Mu looked at Crown Prince Mo. He went inside. The Crown Prince nodded helplessly. MHM. Kiao Mu gave a no before putting away the ghost spirit bead. She then looked coldly at Feng Tong, who kept coughing and vomiting spit while on the ground. She wrinkled her brows in distaste and made some biting remarks. You're a useless guy if a mere ghost spirit has put you into this state. Take it. She took out an ordinary water gourd from her bundle and tossed it to Feng Tong. Feng Tong caught the gourd and quickly pulled out the plug, taking five to six gulps of water at once. The water was sweet and refreshing, making his entire body warm up after drinking. He wiped his mouth and called gratefully after Kiao Mu, thank you miss for saving me. Kiao Mu simply harumphed and grumbled quietly, it's just cause you're dragging us down. Chapter 1907, Transfer Talisman Matrix Crown Prince Mo couldn't resist laughing. No matter how sharp this little fellow's words may sound, her actions were always heartwarming. The Crown Prince caressed the little fellow's head and chuckled, My Kiao Kiao is so nice. Miss Kiao pridefully turned her head around, but even so, she couldn't resist peeking back at Crown Prince Mo. However, she just so happened to meet the Crown Prince's smiling gaze. This guy's gaze had been on her the entire time not even moving away once. Sunlight Academy's students hastily made the most of this time to rest. Once the ten minutes were up, Zudanjin called out, we're leaving. The procession started crawling along the corridor once again. After walking for nearly two hours, Kiao Mu halted and said gravely, everyone stop. What's wrong? Zudanjin was confused. Kiao Mu squatted down solemnly and pointed at the five fresh tally marks on the wall. I carved this here when we were resting earlier. Zudanjin and Waigzu's expressions both changed. Everybody's expressions also turned unsightly. No wonder. The little fatty's face turned pale as he exclaimed, No wonder why this corridor doesn't look long yet we seem to never reach the end. I was also finding it strange. Chi Xu and analyzed, so we were just walking back and forth on this path. Kiao Mu nodded. Everybody go and see if you can find something. There should be an invisible transfer talisman matrix on this path. Every time we walk to that transfer talisman matrix, it will soundlessly transfer us back to the starting point. What? Yuxin shouted in surprise. How is that possible? Did nobody sense anything walking into a transfer talisman matrix? If you could sense something, you wouldn't be walking back and forth in circles, unable to get out of this corridor. Marta shouted at Yuxin in annoyance. Senior sister Yuxin. He Y pulled on Yuxin's sleeve and gave her a look telling her to grasp the current situation. They had to rely on Kiao Mu and her group to be able to get out. It wouldn't be too late to settle accounts with Kiao Mu and them after getting out. Yuxin had evidently thought of this, hence she kept level-headed and stopped talking. Everybody then spread out through the corridor to search for the transfer talisman matrix Kiao Mu had pointed out. After everyone had gone far, Kiao Mu turned to say to Zidanjin. Mentor, come here for a moment. This invisible transfer talisman matrix is embedded inside this corridor. We probably won't find it unless we dig up the corridor, Kiao Mu informed coolly. Zudanjin and Waigzu looked at her puzzledly. Then you want to? Just now, the reason the little fellow had ordered the group to look for a transfer talisman matrix was to send them away so that they could talk privately? Right now. I have a plan to bring all of us out at some risk, but I'll have to trouble everybody to go hide inside a storage talisman. Would you be willing? What? Do you plan to do? This black rank transfer talisman matrix that I created with blue talismans will transfer a group of 10 people at most 10 kilometers away, with a maximum of 6 continual transfers. Kiao Mu explained, 
I would need the mentors and senior brother Duan Mu and them to enter a storage talisman. Would you be willing? Zudanjin nodded in a daze. If, if it can get us out, we are naturally willing to. But but, that transfer talisman matrix, mentors felt as if he was listening to an exotic tale, chapter 1908, as long as you're happy, was a transfer talisman matrix something anyone could create, yet the little lady spoke of it so calmly, as if creating a transfer talisman matrix wasn't a big deal, deviations might occur during the transfer, the little lady continued, we might end up in the zombies headquarters, or we might end up in the pool of water that we just passed through. It was all up to chance and one's luck. That's right, this transfer talisman matrix basically produced the same results as the teleportation talisman. But at least a transfer talisman matrix could move 10 people at the same time. Not to mention, her black rank transfer talisman matrix could perform 6 continual transfers. It would be fine as long as one's luck wasn't the absolute worst. Kiyamu felt that they would at least be able to get out of this lousy corridor, as long as they left this corridor with a hidden transfer talisman matrix, there would be a ray of hope. Then, then what about them? Zudanjin asked quietly, pointing behind them at the students and mentors from the other academies. Kiyamu frowned. She could bring them along, but there were two especially annoying people that Kiyokia truly did not want to bring along. Zudanjin quickly said, how about this? Mentor will go talk to them. We'll bring them out if they fork out some money for our academy's funds. All right. We can then purchase two sets of uniforms of excellent quality for you all. I guarantee that you'll definitely be countless times more handsome than those brats from Sunlight Academy. Kiao Mu gazed expressionlessly at her stingy mentor and then turned the back of her head to him. She didn't know what to say to this guy who was treating her as a means to rake in money. He was willing to give them two sets of uniforms only after fleecing the other academies. There was nothing they could do. The mentors were poor. It was not a lie that poverty stunts ambition. Zudanjin chuckled mischievously before jogging to Hong Yui Academy and Shuangfing Academy's mentors, jabbering away. The two academies' mentors were elated, and they nodded vigorously while asserting, Of course, of course, if you can bring us out of here without injury, a commission is definitely in order. Afterwards, Mentor Zhu used his seniority to extort money from River Horse Academy's unlucky students before finally getting to Sunlight Academy's mentors. Needless to say, Mentor Zhu was exceptionally eloquent in speech. When Mentor Zhu triumphantly returned back to Kiaomu's group, Kiaomu observed that the complexions of those brats and mentors from Sunlight Academy had worsened. Just now, Sunlight Academy's mentor begged desperately for us to also bring along those two girls, Yuxin and Yui. For that, mentor fiercely exploited them. Don't worry Kyo Kiao, I will definitely split what I got with you. One fifth. Everybody couldn't help but vomit blood when they heard this. Could you be even more stingy? The storage talisman and the transfer talisman matrix were both Kyo Kiao's, and she was the one bringing everybody out of this DMN place. Yet you, mentor, were the one raking in the money. Kiao Mu gazed exasperatedly at Zudanjin and gave him a look that said as long as you're happy. She then tossed out an empty blue storage talisman, collecting everybody inside. Kiao Mu paid no mind to their surprise over the space inside the storage talisman and turned to the remaining people outside, Mo Lian, Feng Chen, the little despot and company. Let's go. Sixty blue ebony talismans rose up slowly around her. Chapter 1909. Are your storage talismans for sale? In the blink of an eye, everybody appeared inside a main palace with a lofty dome. This main palace looked much larger than the side palace they had entered earlier. The construction itself was much more luxurious and imposing than the side palaces, not to mention the sixteen huge columns with gold lacquered coiled dragons drifting chiffon silk, and tinkling bells that they saw. At a glance, it looked like the bedchamber of some aristocrat. After leaving the transfer talisman matrix, Daoji heaved a deep breath. It's good, it's good that we didn't go back to where we had come from. If they got transferred to the collapsed area, that really would have been awful. At least they finally left that corridor with an invisible transfer talisman matrix for good in the first dry. At this time, 
Kiyami waved the storage talisman and let everybody out. Go check out the surroundings. This main palace looks so majestic and grandiose, yet it's completely empty inside. Sunlight Academy's head mentor muttered as he glanced at Kiyamu in passing. Besides some gold lacquered columns, there really was nothing else inside this main palace. With this mentor's accidental reminder, the people from Sunlight Academy looked at Kiyamu and company with queer expressions. Zudanjin immediately berated sternly when he saw this situation. You don't know good from bad. What are you insinuating? That they emptied out everything in this main palace before letting you guys out? Yuxin harumphed. It's not impossible to take away some things with such a large storage talisman space. Kiyamu shot sharp daggers at Yuxin with her gaze, making the latter shiver inexplicably. Afterwards, Kiyamu declared coldly, this main palace was originally empty, but even if it wasn't, what can you do if I had emptied it out? Yuxin couldn't respond to that. Even though what Kiyamu said wasn't pretty, she was correct. What could they do even if she did empty out all the treasure here? Fight? But could they beat her? Turn hostile? But they hadn't even gotten out of this unknown tomb yet. If something happened after they got hostile, there wouldn't be anybody to help them. He Y coughed lightly and pulled on Yuxin, whose expression had gotten unsightly. She then turned to say to Kiyamu with a smile, Miss Kiyamu. This is all a misunderstanding, so please don't get angry. Oh, that's right. I see that you should still have a lot of storage talismans on you, right? Are you willing to sell them? Sell my SS. Zudanjin waved his hand gruffly as he walked up and took out several bags from his pocket. All right, all right. Time to pay up. We'll continue forward after you pay. Sunlight Academy's head mentor glared at Zudanjin with an ugly expression before reluctantly taking out a spirit currency card from his pocket and tossing it to Zudanjin. This Zagai was simply aggravating. They were clearly part of the same team, yet their Sunlight Academy's fee for using the transfer talisman matrix was five times more than the other academies. Zudanjin took a look and snorted. All right. Go find if there are any exits anywhere. Wait. He Y was practically unable to maintain her fake, amiable smile. Miss Kiao, about my earlier suggestion. In your dreams. Giving them storage talismans, my foot. Did they really have absolutely no shame at all? Kiao Mu turned around and pulled Molian along to one side. On the other hand, He Y's expression turned extremely unsightly. Chapter 1910 falling out. She was so livid that her teeth threatened to shatter from how hard she was gritting them. He Y sinisterly watched Kiyamu and Molian go, and she subconsciously clenched her fists. This DMN, hateful girl. She simply didn't know what was good for her. She was willing to pay, yet the girl told her in your dreams. How hateful. Zudanjin was also very upset. He had originally planned to smooth things over by bringing Sunlight Academy's group along since they were all academies from the six prefectures. What he didn't expect though was that both the mentors and students from Sunlight Academy didn't know what was good for them and were all troublemakers. That mentor from Sunlight Academy even dared to slander his students, saying that they had taken away the treasures in the main palace, sure enough. Greed knows no bounds. Without Kiyamu transferring them out of the corridor, would their lives still be intact for them to fight for these treasures? Zudanjin was regretting it now. If he had known these people would be so troublesome, then he should have charged them a hundred times extra for bringing them along. Soon, everybody had assembled in the center of the main palace. Hongyui Academy's mentor announced, after a preliminary inspection, there are four total passageways branching off from this main palace. It is unknown what each path will lead to. The best course of action would probably be for our four academies to split off into the four passageways. Wagza suggested after some deliberation, if it's a dead end, we'll just make our way back and meet here in the main palace. Everybody looked at each other in dismay. Hong Yui Academy's mentor shook his head and said, if we split up, our strength will also disperse. In that case, we'll be in deep trouble if we happen to encounter any kind of danger. Wagza swept the other party with an indifferent look. Oh, then this mentor, you think it's better for everybody to take the same passageway? Correct. Sunlight Academy's head mentor quickly nodded and said, we had better advance together. Wagza gave them a non-committal glance. Let's go. 
Zudanjin led his students to a passageway on the left. That Sunlight Academy mentor was still shouting out after them, Hey, hey, you aren't planning to think it over more prudently? Yet Zudanjin and company simply ignored him as they entered the passageway. The Sunlight Academy mentor was sullen. Behind him, Yuxin suggested, how about we go by ourselves? There's no need to defer to those people from Apex Academy. What does that Apex Academy think they are to immediately turn hostile? Criticized one of the students. Feng Tong knitted his brows. Can everybody stop belly aching for now? It's courteous if they bring us along, but there's nothing we can say even if they don't. After all, they weren't on familiar terms, so the other party didn't have the obligation to protect people from Sunlight Academy. Feng Tong's words immediately provoked glares from several Sunlight Academy students. He Wai yelled at him, you traitor, of course you'd speak up for them. Hearing this, Wang Zi glanced at He Wai. In any case, Miss Giao had saved us earlier. You shut up. He Wai screamed, that was nothing to her. If she didn't dawdle, she could have long brought us out with that whatever transfer talisman matrix. One. On the side, Xiliang chastised with a darkened face. Are you done yet? Who do you think you are? Why don't you think back to the mess you caused with those two girls from Apex Academy? Yet you still have the cheek to tell them to do this and that? He why was instantly enraged. Chapter 1911, Self-Entitled Xiliang snorted at the women. You can dream on. He why was both indignant and aggrieved at Xiliang's merciless criticism, so she cried out with a frown. Senior brother Xiliang, we're your junior sisters. Humphrey. Xiliang loathed to pay these two people any more attention. He really had enough of these two women's stupidity and ignorance this entire time. Did they really think that the sun revolved around them? It was simply baffling. Why should other people humor them? Would their stupidity even give them the qualifications? Let's go. The Sunlight Academy team split into two. Without looking back, Xiliang led Wang Zi, Feng Tong, and several other young men into the passageway that Kiao Mu and her group took. The Sunlight Academy mentor's expression had turned so sullen that you could practically hang a bottle from his frowning mouth. His indignation was apparent. He also wanted to cast aside the people from Apex Academy and lead his students into another passageway. But this was not the time to get angry with people. At his level, he and the other two mentors might not be able to protect so many students at once if something were to happen. He as an ordinary mentor, would not be able to shoulder the consequences of heavy student casualties. Besides, he also coveted Kiao Mu's transfer talisman matrix. There would certainly be lots of benefits to following Kiao Mu. Even if they encountered another place that they couldn't walk out from again, they would be able to get out using the transfer talisman matrix, no? It's just that the cost was too far in high. All these thoughts happened in an instant, and the Sunlight Academy mentor gestured to the other two mentors with his gaze to chase after Kiao Mu's group with the remaining students. Upon entering that spacious passageway, they saw Apex Academy's mentors withdrawing quickly with his group. The Sunlight Academy mentor was just about to ridicule him when he saw a group of black apparitions chasing after the group. His expression instantly faltered, What's up with you? How come you drew ghost spirits over? The Sunlight Academy mentor simply wanted to curse. He had told these bastards to carefully consider which passageway to take, yet they ignored them and chose one at random. Hence, drawing out a nest of ghost spirits as a result. Meanwhile, Zidanjin, Waigzu, and the other mentors had grave expressions as they withdrew to the main hall while shielding the students. They could care less about that brainless Sunlight Academy mentor, Feng Tong blurted out, Mentor Kaodan, you're mistaken. It's not that there are ghost spirits in this passageway we took. You'll understand if you look back. Suddenly, the mentors and students from Sunlight Academy had a bad feeling. They turned back and saw dark shadows pouring out from all four passageways. So it wasn't that a single passageway was filled with ghost spirits but that all four passageways had them. From the moment they entered, the ghost spirits were already gathering. It was simply that they just so happened to erupt at this time. Kaodan's expression changed drastically as he hastily shouted, Quick, quick, whichever one of you people has protective talismans, key quickly pass them out to everyone. 1. Even though Kaodan said you people, 
his eyes had been fixed on Kiao Mu from beginning to end. 1. Even though he was unaware that Kiao Mu was a grand talisman practitioner 1, it was certain that Kiao Mu had a lot of talismans. This self-entitled attitude amused Kiao Mu, and she merely snorted expressionlessly at that mentor Kao Dan. Ha! Huh. Chapter 1912, You guys go get them. These really were a bunch of utterly naive people. On what basis did they think that Kiao Mu was obligated to give them protective talismans for free? Zudanjin also couldn't help snapping. Scram, there are ghost spirits everywhere, yet why aren't you directing everybody to resist them together, mentor? What are you staring at our Kiao Kiao for? Cheeks you anks you and disliked the way Kao Dan was looking at Kiao Kiao. Where did that entitled attitude come from? Did Kiao Kiao owe their academy? Crown Prince Mo glanced at Kao Dan and company with a spurious smile, but he didn't say anything. He merely pulled Kiao Mu towards the back of the crowd, giving off an air of go ahead since you're so capable. Kiao Kiao, you should be hungry after all this fuss. Mo Lian patted her head and said smilingly. What do you want to eat? Yet Kiao Mu had those people already gave me a belly full of anger written all over her face. So she said spiritlessly, even dragon meat would be tasteless being together with these people. Hearing this, Little Seven flew into a rage inside Mo Lian's mental conscious pool. Master, listen, just listen to her. She wants to eat dragon meat. She just wants to eat me. No wonder she did nothing but beat him up whenever she saw him. It turned out that she wanted to beat little Seven to death so that she could barbecue him. Master had really gone crazy to like this violent woman so much. All right, there, there. Mo Lian helplessly placated our dear, rampaging seventh Yan. Kiao Mu looked up at Mo Lian and wrinkled her petite nose. What are you doing? She suddenly kept mum after saying this. It couldn't be that seventh Yan, that imp, was bad mouthing her again, right? Mo Lian couldn't help but be amused, and he waved his hand to take out a small stool and square table from a storage talisman. Kiao Kiao, how about drinking some porridge first? As he spoke, he took out the pre-cooked white porridge from the storage talisman and served Kiao Mu a bowl. How is it okay to just eat a single carrot for the day? You'll get skinny. Here, just eat a bit for now. I'll cook you a feast once we get out of here. Kiao Mu agreed after musing it over. She sat down and picked up the small bowl, drinking the porridge with a spoon while occasionally eating some of the appetizers as well. Mo Lian was all smiles when he saw her eat and he took out another stool from the storage talisman with a wave of his hand. He asked her, how do you have the energy to fight if you don't eat, right? Right. Kiao Mu nodded in complete agreement as she grabbed a pastry to nibble on. She didn't even look up as she ate her meal happily. After all, she didn't even need to look up to sense that Sunlight Academy's Kao Dan, Yuk Sin, and them were shooting daggers at her with their venomous gazes. At this time, the venerable Beach Blossom Immortal flashed to their side. I'm hungry too. You can scram. Mo Lian waved his hand. It was impossible for this guy at the venerable Immortal Realm. It was impossible for him to get hungry even if didn't eat for six months. The venerable Beach Blossom Immortal loathed to acknowledge Mo Lian and got a fully supplied storage talisman from Kiao Kiao. Afterwards, he helped himself to the food with his own utensils. Mo Lian snorted. No one would believe it if he said that a venerable immortal realm cultivator was actually a foodie. Lian, why aren't you eating? Kiao Mu ladled another bowl. It's rather tasty. Yet Mo Lian caressed her head. You eat more. Since he did not feel hungry at all, he naturally wouldn't be like that foodie. The rotten peach blossom, who always wanted a bite of whatever Kiao Kiao was eating. Chapter 1913. The Bizarre Thing About Kiao 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 Mu rubbed her round belly after eating two bowls of porridge and three pastries. Finally, she finished by wiping her petite mouth. She then stood up and took out lots of fruits and pastries from her storage talisman with a casual wave of her hand. She beckoned to Chi Xuang Xuan and the others. Xuang Xuan, little fatty, come eat something if you get tired from fighting. The people were currently in a desperate struggle against the ghost spirits up ahead. Explosions added to the chaos, with spiritual energy rampaging everywhere. On the other hand, Kiao Mu was just sitting by and watching from the sidelines. The scene was especially comical. When Zudanjin and the others turned around, 
their mouths twitched at what they saw. They didn't know if it was just their imagination, but they didn't find a single ghost spirit within eight meters of her. What was going on? Xuang Xun and the little fatty were already incredibly tired, so they ran over to Kiao Mu when they heard her. However, the ghost spirits that were chasing them while brandishing their claws stopped in their tracks when they got within eight feet of Kiao Mu. They screeched in annoyance before rushing toward Sunlight Academy's mentor Kao Dan nearby. Kao Dan jumped in fright. He was already struggling to fight against four to five ghost spirits. Yet the ones that had been chasing Chi Xuang Xuan and the little fatty were now attacking him. His back momentarily exposed an opening and one of the ghost spirits tore open his defensive barrier with its sharp claws. Kao Dan shivered with a start when he felt a sinister chill seeping into his body. It was an extremely unfair battle against the ghost spirits. Besides fire spiritual cultivators who had the natural advantage over ghost spirits, the other people were practically unable to hurt the ghost spirits at all. It was extremely worrying that the ghost spirits remained uninjured while their own spiritual energy reserves continued going down. All of a sudden, Chi Xuang Xuan stopped running as she gave Kiao Mu a queer look. Kiao Mu beckoned her over with her finger. Come quickly. I have your favorite hibiscus pastry here. Yet Chi Xuang Xuan did not respond to Kiao Kiao and abruptly ran in the opposite direction instead. The ghost spirits around her simultaneously swarmed over when they saw this. When Chi Xuang Xuan retreated several steps backward, those ghost spirits turned around and left. When Chi Xuang Xuan walked forward again, the ghost spirits whisked over. That's right. No wonder it was so weird. The little fatty also figured out what Chi Xuang Xuan was doing. He also started experimenting beside her, advancing several steps before promptly retreating backward. Afterwards, the two of them exchanged queer glances before looking at the confounded Miss Kiao. What are you two doing? They seemed to be acting loony. Senior brother Duan Mu and Lu Yu, stop fighting. Quickly come over here to where Kiao Kiao is. Chi Xuang Xuan shouted at the top of her lungs. Juan Mu King glanced back at them and then escaped from the ghost spirit's encirclement, arriving beside Kiao Mu with a leap. Subsequently, he raised an eyebrow in surprise as he glanced at Kiao Mu. When Kiao Mu saw Lu Yu and the others examining her weirdly, she couldn't resist wrinkling her petite nose. She deadpanned. What are you guys looking at? Kiao Kiao. Have you not noticed? What should I be noticing? Kiao Mu wanted to throw a fit. However, her face remained serious and stoic. What is it? Chi Xuang Xuan twitched her mouth and turned to shout at Kiao Mu. Kiao Kiao, pay attention now. Look at me, at me. Chi Xuang Xuan rushed more than eight feet away. Chapter 1914. Exhausting our spiritual energy. Before Chi Xuang Xuan could get encircled by the ghost spirits. She quickly retreated backwards. Afterwards, Chi Xuang Xuan turned to Kiao Mu and blinked. What did you notice? Kiao Kiao? When Mo Lian saw the little fellow's befuddled but adorable expression, he burst out in laughter. Afterwards, as the venerable peach blossom immortal slowly savored an appetizer, he raised his chopsticks and said, Don't waste your energy. It's not like you guys didn't find out that this little fellow can't see ghost spirits at all. So sorry. The little one simply isn't able to see your funny experiment. Don't you see her utterly confounded expression? Chi Xuang Xuan was at a loss for words. So she was simply preaching to deaf ears by performing this experiment in front of Kiao Kiao. She gave up and ran back to Kiao Mu, grabbing a hibiscus pastry to nibble on. Kiao Mu looked at her curiously. What did you want me to see just now, ghost spirits? Kiao Kiao was also quite vexed that she was unable to see ghost spirits. Why couldn't she see what everybody else could see with their spiritual conscious? Don't worry about seeing them. It's it's not like they're anything lovely. They look gruesome and ugly, so it's perfect that you can't see them. Feng Chen remarked. Crown Prince Mo gave her a nod of agreement, as well. Kiao Kiao, are you not able to sense the slightest trace of the ghost spirit's presence? Kiao Mu nodded emphatically. She also found this extremely strange. Xuang Xuan was doing an experiment just now. The little fatty Kui Hong Win explained. The ghost spirits swarm toward her every time she is more than eight feet away from you, but they leave on their own once she comes back to your side. That's why your body constitution is rather unusual, 
Okiao Okiao, is this the legendary ghost spirit dispelling constitution? Mata mused while rubbing his chin, ah, does such a strange constitution exist? Chi Xuang Xuan was mystified, of course not, don't listen to Mata's nonsense. The little fatty rolled his eyes at Mata and explained, I've only heard of an innate spiritual water constitution, innate pure origin constitution, and the like. The ghost spirit dispelling constitution he says doesn't exist. Chi Xuang Xuan glared at Mata before giving a nod. MHM, don't overthink it. This is a good thing. Lu Yu said with a smile, the ghost spirits will disperse on their own as long as we stand next to Ye Okiao. Isn't that pretty good? As they spoke, Zidanjin, Waigzu, and the other three mentors ran over while panting. Zudanjin grabbed a cup from the table and filled it with water. There are too many ghost spirits here. We will definitely exhaust our spiritual energy if we continue getting tangled up with them. Rest a bit first, mentor. Chi Xuang Xuan urged. I'm afraid that there will be more and more ghost spirits later. The five mentors all took a seat. Zudanjin then looked toward Kiao Mu. Are you able to transfer us again? It is possible, but the destination is uncertain. If we return back to the start, then all of this trouble would have been for nothing. Kiao Mu replied indifferently. Zudanjin gritted his teeth. It certainly won't do for things to go on like this. The moment everybody exhausts their spiritual energy will be the moment we. Huh? Afterwards? Zudanjin looked at mentor Waigzu, the person pulling his sleeve. Why are you pulling me? Waigzu handed him a pastry before also expressionlessly eating one himself. I'm talking about important stuff here. Zudanjin grumbled as he bit on the pastry. Dumb SS. Waigzu was worried about his IQ. Chapter 1915. You're a retard. Did this guy not notice anything abnormal after sitting down for so long? Mentor Waigzu swept Zudanjin a look of contempt and he even gestured for Mentor Hu to give Mentor Zhu's IQ a good lesson. Mentor Hu couldn't help but be both amused and exasperated as he shook his head and said, Mentor Zhu, haven't you noticed that not a single ghost spirit has gotten close after all this time we've been sitting here? Mentor Zhu was taken aback before finally nodding in enlightenment. That's right. What's going on? Mentor Zhu pressed, Mentor Hu. We've been sitting here for quite a long time. Why haven't the ghost spirits followed us over? Mata twitched his mouth and explained with a light cough. Isn't it obvious, Mentor Zhu? We have Kiyokiao's ghost spirit dispelling constitution here. No ghost spirit dares to get close. Ghost spirit dispelling constitution? What kind of rare constitution was this? Mentor Waigzu glanced quizzically at Waigzu. Yet Waigzu looked up at the sky. He simply couldn't care less about speaking to this stupid colleague. He actually believed the bullshit the students were randomly spouting. Watch me, watch me. Chi Xuang Xuan ran back and forth again to demonstrate to Zhu Danjin the reason for the ghost spirit's abnormal behavior. Zudanjin goggled after seeing this demonstration. He then glanced around and remarked with a nod, This really is a ghost spirit dispelling constitution? They had been dodging the large batch of ghost spirits just now, so nobody had the leisure to pay attention to what was happening over here. At most, they only found it somewhat weird when they glanced over. After sitting still here for a while, they could immediately tell the difference. Zudanjin's eyes lit up and he wolfed down some food before guzzling down two cups of water. He said with a smile, that's all good, then, let's go. That passageway is still rather spacious, so as long as we keep Kiao Mu in the center, we will be able to advance forward. Waigzu was gratified as he looked at Mentor Zhu, it wasn't easy, but his IQ is now on point. After seeing everybody eat their fill, Kiao Mu finally put away the remaining food and water. Yet an angry shout suddenly entered her ears. Wait up! Yuxin darted over and glared at the empty table. She was so indignant that her eyes were bulging out. You, you, selfish! Yuxin screeched as she pointed at Kiao Mu with a shaky finger. Slap! The little fatty gruffly swatted away her hand. What are you doing? If you don't know how to talk nicely, then you can scram. Who were you pointing at? Yuxin glowered at the little fatty, her face flushing bright red. You people are simply, simply, going too far. You clearly brought so much food and water, yet you only care about yourselves. Look at how tired everyone has become. You, are we close? 
Miss Kiao coldly cut off Yuxin's censure. I see that you're probably a retard, everyone. Yuxin's eyes had turned red from the glaring, and her knuckles were cracking from how hard she was clenching her fists. What do we have to do for you to share food and water with us? There is no way with this attitude of yours. Chi Xiu Xiu in rebuked, who do you think you are, ordering people around with this and that, you can go home to be your Ms. High and Mighty, don't flaunt your pitiful IQ in front of us, beach. The blood went to Yuxin's head due to her anger, and she lunged at Chi Xiu Xiu and with bloodshot eyes, wanting to slap her, slap, Chi Xiu Xiu and didn't hold back either, she wasn't an idiot, so how could she not retaliate when the other party was pouncing at her? Chapter 1916, Asking for Trouble, she directly gave Yuxin a tight slap in the face. Ah! Yuxin crashed to the ground. After all, how was the exhausted Yuxin a match for the satiated and spirited Chi Xiu Anxuan? She was definitely asking for trouble by fighting with Xiu Anxuan. After struggling to get up from the ground, Yuxin yelled at her fellow schoolmates, who were just standing by anxiously, hurry and go get her, catch this beach for me, she was naturally unwilling to take this insult lying down, yet Chi Xiu Anxuan was extremely nimble, while sidestepping at a tricky angle, she abruptly grabbed Yuxin's left wrist, Yuxin screamed painfully, Chi Xiu Anxuan followed up by kicking the back of Yuxin's knee, causing the latter to fall flat on the ground, you overestimate yourself, Chi Xiu Anxuan dusted off her hands with a harem and stomped on Yuxin's back. I'll butcher you if you continue spouting nonsense. Ah, ah, mentor, senior brother Xiliang, please stop this miss. Sunlight Academy's mentor Kaodan chastised while furrowing his brows. It would definitely be catastrophic if something were to happen to Yuxin. At the same time, Several well-built male students from Sunlight Academy charged at Chi Xiu Anxuan, yet Kiao Mu irritatedly swept her sleeve, and several immobilization talismans drifted out. They darted past everyone and split apart on Yuxin and the other Sunlight Academy students. Yuxin got immobilized instantly, freezing on the spot. She felt that her posture of lying on the ground was incomparably humiliating. The feeling of completely stiffening up made her furious, garrulous. Kiao Mu ignored Yuxin and company after flinging out those immobilization talismans. By the time she turned around, Molian had already packed up the table and stools. Let's go. Molian caressed the little fellow's head with a smile. Kiao Mu nodded, her expressionless face exuding a killing intent. She eyed Yuxin coldly for a moment before leaving with Molian without a word. Yuxin, Yuxin. Mendor Kaodan couldn't help but panic. Yuxin was the apple of Dean Yu's eye. If something were to happen to her, he, as an ordinary mentor, would not be able to withstand Dean Yu's wrath. Stand right there. Stop. Boom. A ball of fire suddenly exploded in front of Kaodan, promptly causing him to shut up. Crown Prince Mo's icy gaze immediately scared Kaodan into stumbling backwards. Kaodan dared not shout even after Kiao Mu's group left. He merely muttered to himself as he watched them disappear, I, I only wanted to ask that Mr. to release the students from the immobilization talismans. Yet no one paid attention to Kaodan's mutterings. Most of the people got scared by the gaze Crown Prince Mo directed at them before he left, and they tightly shut their mouths. Xi, let's move quickly. Xiliang abruptly jumped up. He was already chasing after Kiao Mu's group before he could explain anything. A large batch of ghost spirits was congregating, which stunned Kao Dan. Afterwards, he was both ecstatic and shocked. Quick, quickly carry Yuxin and the others and chase after them. He remembered now. Just now when they were talking to Kiao Mu's group, not a single ghost spirit came to attack them. What did this mean? It might be that Deedlas had some kind of spiritual talisman that could allow her to effectively evade ghost spirits. Chapter 1917, Underground Base Kiao Mu's group plus Apex Academy's five mentors advanced at a swift pace. Even with Xiliang, Kao Dan, and the other people running at full speed for 15 minutes, they still didn't catch sight of Apex Academy's group. The large batch of ghost spirits chasing them prevented them from taking it easy, and all they could do was barrel straight ahead. Even the students' horrific screams gave them no choice but to abandon those students. Xiliang, 
Wang Zi and company finally caught sight of Apex Academy's group after another 15 minutes, and they rushed over without another word. Once they neared Apex Academy's group, Xiliang and them abruptly discovered that the ghost spirits wails and howls muted substantially. Their pounding hearts also calmed down greatly at this point. Xiliang and Wang Zi heaved a long sigh in unison. They were abruptly washed over with relief from having survived this incident. Kao Dan, as well as the people from Hong Yui Academy and River Horse Academy, had also finally caught up. The last ones were the miserable students who had to carry Yuke's sin. One of the two students carrying Yuke's sin had gotten torn apart by ghost spirits, while the other person abandoned Yuke's sin after pissing his pants in terror. If one of the Sunlight Academy mentors hadn't promptly grabbed Yuke's sin with a leap, Yuke's sin would probably have ended up as the ghost spirits feast by now. By the time the last people had caught up, a large batch of ghost spirits had congregated in the passageway, they howled and brandished their arms at the group with bared teeth before angrily turning around to leave. Kao Dan was surprised at the direction that the ghost spirits were leaving in. He furrowed his brows before abruptly chasing after the ghost spirits. When the ghost spirits turned around in pursuit from his provocation, he hastily cowered back beside Apex Academy's group. It turns out that it wasn't an illusion. That stoic-faced little lady from Apex Academy indeed had a Dharma treasure that could effectively repel ghost spirits. After realizing this, Kao Dan's face turned ashen. However, Kao Dan was afraid to speak too much due to Crown Prince Mo's sharp gaze from earlier. Neither did Kao Dan dare show any resentment. He merely followed the other people with low spirits. When they came upon a turn in the passageway, Everybody could feel that they were going down a slope. Zudanjin glanced back worriedly at Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu, this isn't the path we passed by earlier, right? The various traps inside this tomb were nearly driving him crazy. Most likely more than half the day had passed since they entered the tomb. Yet right now, he felt like he was unable to see any hope. Kiao Mu shook her head. A faint astonishment surfaced in her eyes and she lowered her head while furrowing her brows. It seemed as though she was contemplating something. As they walked down, an indescribable emotion was shouting at her in her mind, making her so jittery that she couldn't resist frowning in shock. What kind of strange emotion was this? Kiao Mu lowered her eyes as she slowly followed Mentor Zhu and the other mentors down into the sloping passageway. Soon, a rusty ancient iron door appeared in her eyes. Kiao Mu's expression changed abruptly and she couldn't help but hug herself while trembling. Her distinct mood swing alarmed Mo Lian, Feng Chen, the little fatty, Xiu Xuan, and the rest who were worried about her. What is the matter? Gyeo Kiao. Some of the students spoke up at the same time. Mo Lian hastily reached out to pull her into his embrace, yet his hand was instantly covered in cold sweat from where he touched her forehead. Realizing this, Mo Lian panicked, and he inquired softly while embracing her, Kiao Kiao, what happened? Yet when Kiao Mu looked up, her eyes were filled with horror. Chapter 1918, I can save her, bang. Kiao Mu landed a kick. Subsequently, that black rusty metal door fell noisily to the ground. The clang it made echoed through the passageway without receding. Kao Dan's expression changed drastically as he shouted, are you fucking crazy? Making such a loud sound? Were you scared that these supernatural beings weren't going to come after them? Kiao Mu's gaze promptly turned vicious. She smacked Kao Dan's chest with her palm and sent him flying instantly, causing him to crash into a wall and spurt out blood. All of you shut up. Miss Kiao was fuming as she turned hostile and glared ruthlessly at the group of people from Sunlight Academy. Soon after, a water spirit sword energy formed in her palm with a whoosh. Get out of the way if you all don't want to die. Kiao Kiao. Just as Crown Prince Mo called out to her, the little fellow charged inside the metal door with her water spirit sword. When they stepped inside, the strong stench of blood and stink assaulted their senses. Mo Lian and the rest who walked inside were startled. They didn't expect to see individual prison cells lined up along both sides. They then saw Kiao Mu sprinting forward and kicking open the nearest cell door. The dirt door crumbled to dust as Kiao Mu charged inside and screamed, Fan Kaiyu, Fan Kaiyu get the hell out here, you scum. Wake up. Hey, are you still alive? Kiao Mu dashed up to a single bed made from dirt, 
and she patted the young woman who was at her last gasp. When Kiaomu saw her ghastly pale and sunken cheeks, her body so emaciated she was only skin and bones, Kiaomu's vision immediately blurred. Wake up, I tell you, wake up, wake up. Kiao Mu patted that woman's cheek. She took out 17 to 18 medicinal solutions at once and poured them into that person's mouth one after another. You, you. The people from Sunlight Academy who rushed into the prison cell after her were shocked by her extravagance. This, these medicinal solutions. It was obvious that they were expensive to produce just from smelling the soothing fragrance entering their noses. In the minds of the Sunlight Academy students, Miss Gia was an extremely stingy little devil who charged them for bringing them along with her transfer talisman matrix. The fact that she was pouring a large amount of medicine down a dying person's throat created a huge visual contrast. Cough, cough, cough. The frail woman on the bed spasmed twice, coughing numerous times prior to opening her eyes weakly. She vaguely seemed to be seeing a celestial maiden from heaven. You're fine. You're fine now. I will save you, so you won't die. It's all fine. Kiao Mu messily wiped away the filth on the woman's face as she declared while looking at the latter determinedly, Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I will definitely save you. I will. Cough, cough, cough. That woman was evidently in her death throes. She opened her mouth to speak, but her breathing was so weak that she couldn't even utter a sound. In the end, the woman wasn't able to say anything. She merely gazed warmly at Kiao Mu before slowly closing her eyes. Kiao Mu was startled, and she hastily reached out to touch the woman's icy face. She cried out repeatedly, Hey, 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 quickly wake up, wake up. Take this medicine, I have a lot of medicine. I, Gyo Kiao. Mo Lian appeared by his wife's side in a flash. He held her in his arms and patted her on the back as he said softly, She's already dead. Hearing this, Kiao Mu trembled in fear before hugging him back. After a long silence, she suddenly started to bawl her eyes out. Chapter 1919, Stop Your Insanity. She hasn't died. She hasn't died. She's not dead yet. I can save her. I can save her. Kiao Mu struggled to get out of his embrace. Yet how was Mo Lian going to let her go? He hugged her tightly while simultaneously comforting her in a soothing voice. Kiao Kiao, Kiao Kiao, it's alright. Look at me, Kiao Kiao. Kiao Mu's vision had blurred from crying. She looked up dazedly at him. It's alright, Kiao Kiao, Kiao Kiao. He patted her trembling body on the back and consoled her softly. I'm here. I will protect you. Kiao Kiao. Kiao Mu looked at him. The man's pitch black and abyssal eyes seemed to give her an inexplicable peace of mind. Rescue them? Mo Lian turned toward a little despot and the rest. Everyone understood, and they quickly darted out the door to break down the dirt prison cells. The scenes inside were simply terrible to look at. Every person who got carried out was either like a tattered doll or on their deathbed. Each dirt prison cell was fully equipped with all kinds of tools. Even the noisiest Yuxin kept her mouth shut upon seeing these people's severed limbs and destroyed bodies. It was truly too tragic. They couldn't imagine what kind of hell they had been through. After they carried everyone out and lined them up along the passageway, they saw the stoic-faced little lady feeding each and every one of them medicine and giving them shots while muttering, I can save them, I can save them. Yet those people were all beyond cure and at their last gasps, even feeding them the best medicinal solution was only enough to keep them from taking their last gasp. Their injuries were truly too serious. Some of their arms and legs had already festered beyond recognition, while others had their abdomens cut open, their intestines spilling out. Little friend, little friend, stay with us. Miss, miss, wake up. Miss, uncle, uncle. Chi Xiu Ang Xiuan watched as Kiao Mu threaded back and forth non-stop through the patients like a busy bee to feed them medicine and arouse their consciousness with her cries. Chi Xiu Ang Xiuan felt a sour taste in her mouth at this sight. Oh how Kiao Kiao hoped that they could live on well, alright. Stop your insanity. We have to keep moving forward. Yuxin yanked Kiao Mu's sleeve in fury. It's apparent that these people are on their deathbeds. They can't be saved. Who says they can't be saved? 
Kiao Mu sternly declared as she roughly brushed away Yuxin's hand. She then took out a cup of spiritual tea and poured it into a youth's mouth. You will definitely be fine, definitely be fine. Are you pretending to be stupid? Seeing that no one was stopping Kiao Mu, Yuxin couldn't resist shouting, although I do not know what you are feeding them. But even if you fed her celestial pills and sacred medicines with her destroyed body, there's no use at all. People in poor health cannot handle strong tonics. As a physician, you should know this better than anyone. Pew. Just as Yuxin finished speaking, that little friend spewed out blood. Kiao Mu pounced over to hug his filthy head, and she attempted to wipe away the blood from the corner of his mouth. Little friend, little friend, don't die on me. Little friend, stop your craziness. He's already dead. Yuxin hollered angrily. Mo Lian, Feng Chen, Qi Xuang Xuan and company glared back over, yet Yuxin even yelled, even if you kill me with your glares, I still have to say this. You think it's a good thing for her to vent like this by going crazy? You're not afraid that she'll suffer from inner demons and succumb to vital energy deviation? He is dead. Yuxin glared back without cowering. You guys are afraid to say the truth, but I'm not. Chapter 1920 an aching heart. This set Kiao Mu off like a cannon, and she rushed over to beat Yuxin with her fists. He hasn't died. He's not dead, he's not dead. He is dead. Yuxin stiffened her spine and rebutted, it's too late to save these people. You're simply just wasting your energy. Those people won't come back to life even if you beat me to death today. You told me in my dreams earlier. These words, I now give back to you. Kiao Mu was shaken up. She slowly released her grip and curled up into a ball, burying her petite face into her arms. You're right, I'm the useless one. It's all my fault for being useless, useless. It's my fault, it's all my fault. She cried like a baby curling up into a fetal position. Her voice was choked with sobs, and her drooping shoulders were shaking. Her mind was in a tangled mess. She was indeed useless. It wasn't until just earlier that she realized that this hell on earth was where Fan Kaiyu had locked her up back then. If she found out its location earlier, would she have been able to rescue them? Yuxin was stunned, and she kicked Kiao Mu lightly with a solemn face. Get up. Where did the complacency you used to diss me for being a retard go? The arrogance with which you threw out Mentor Kao? Yet Kiao Mu ignored her, wishing for nothing more than to bury her head into the ground. Mo Lian's heart ached to know and seeing her self-reproach. He quickly scooped the little lady up in his arms and glared fumingly at Yuxin. Even though this woman was right, but, but, his heart ached dearly for Gyo Kiao. Could she use a more roundabout way to counsel Gyo Kiao? Don't be scared, Gyo Kiao. Don't be scared. Mo Lian patted her back and murmured, The deceased have departed. Everything will pass on. What we have to do is uncover the demented mastermind and make them pay the deserved price. How dare these bastards make Gyo Kiao break down like this? After he found them, he was going to shred their bodies into thousands of pieces and reduce them to ashes no matter what. There's still a child here. Juan Mu King suddenly strode over while carrying a child who was as skinny as a monkey. Mo Lian took the child from Juan Mu King and handed her to Kiao Kiao. Kiao Mu hastily wiped her tears and began to treat the injuries on the girl's body before feeding her several mouthfuls of nutrient fluid. Only after finishing did she look up. She'll live. This child had probably just been brought here, even though she was emaciated. At least her limbs were still sound and she hadn't gotten dissected. All right. After we get out of here, we'll find a good foster family for her. She will definitely grow up healthily and happily, Crown Prince Mo said with a nod. Kiao Mu nodded. She subconsciously hugged this scrawny child tightly. Mo Lian looked up and said, the scent here is foul. Let's take a break outside. Everybody had no objections. After witnessing a tragedy, they moved quietly and neither did they yap at each other. One mentor sighed with emotion. Life really is fragile. It was best to use their limited time to do meaningful things. After going outside, Kiao Mu turned around to look at that prison that was glowing with a purple light. She knew that this was the result of Mo Lian cremating the corpses. Chapter 1921, she was in there before. We'll be resting here for a bit. Zudanjin announced. Everybody automatically sat along both sides of the passageway. Catch. 
Kiao Mu suddenly tossed Yuxin a bottle. Yuxin caught it in surprise. She harumphed at the little stoic who was sitting across from her before applying the medicinal powder to her arm with a grumble. That fellow had left marks on her arms and neck when hitting her earlier. It was only right to give her medicine. Kiao Mu also gave a harumph before tossing her a bag of food. Go distribute it. Yuxin was momentarily dumbfounded. She opened the bundle and saw that there was a lot of food and fruits inside. It was about the same amount as what Kiao Mu and them were eating earlier. Yuxin was elated but did not show it on the outside. She took a portion before passing the food on to Hiwai, for your mentor. Kiao Mu then tossed two pills at Yuxin like she was throwing trash. Afterwards, she turned her head away and hid in Molian's embrace not paying them any more attention. Yuxin snorted. You have a bad attitude. Your attitude is bad too. Kiao Mu turned around to glare at her. When she recalled how she had lost control of her emotions and bawled out loud in front of so many people, she pridefully turned her head aside in embarrassment and buried her face into Mo Lian's chest. Crown Prince Mo reflexively caressed her head as he surreptitiously focused his gaze on the prison flickering with purple flames. Kiao Kiao. He asked quietly, can you be certain that Fan Kaiyu was the one who created this prison? Of course she could be certain. She remembered the trusty metal door the moment she saw it. She had vaguely caught sight of it when Second Gin carried her out of this prison back then. Even though her memory was fuzzy, she would never forget that familiar scent of blood and stink mixed together. She was in this place for a full two years. From a healthy young girl. She turned into a bag of bones and a monster with missing limbs. Of course it was impossible for her to forget this place. Kiao Mu was reticent before nodding. I am certain. Who is it? Suddenly, they heard the peony immortal's crisp shout, and a palm strike crushed at the wall. A faint shadow flashed at the end of the path. Kiao Mu jumped up and hastily gave chase. Fan Kaiyu. There was no time for everybody to eat. They hastily packed away their food and liquids before running after her. Soon, everybody could hear the sound of fighting using spiritual energy. By the time they caught up, they saw that Miss Kiao and Crown Prince Mo were surrounded by more than a hundred cyan-clothed men. Their attacks were swift and fierce as if they were chopping veggies. They were aiming for the cyan-robed man's neck. However, a dozen people fell around them in just a few short moments. This forced the encirclement to back away by half an inch. Everybody, together. After Zhu Danjin whistled and led everybody over, they started fighting without warning. There was nothing to say to these enemies who popped up out of nowhere. They just had to chop them. Everybody rushed up to besiege the dozen cyan-clothed men, directing their blades at them without mercy. Where is that deep turtle fan Kaiyu? Kiao Mu asked coldly while pressing her dagger against someone's neck. I don't know. Just as that cyan-clothed man uttered these words, Kiao Mu's knife swung down, drawing a line of blood on his neck. Chapter 1922 Won't die that easily. The man crashed to the ground as he looked at this ruthless little lady in shock before heading to the underworld. Kiao Mu's attacks were vicious as she refused to waste her breath on anyone who said that they didn't know Fan Kaiyu. They were all sent to hell without exception. She grabbed a young cyan clothed man and routinely asked while holding her dagger at the other party's neck. Where is Fan Kaiyu? Her vicious actions had long freaked the person out of his wits, and he sputtered, There the young sir eye is up, up above, go. Kiao Mu gripped that person's collar and pulled him out of the encirclement like dragging a chicken. Bring me to where Fan Kaiyu is, go. Kiao Mu pushed him forcefully. How did that young man dare refuse? He nodded repeatedly and led Kiao Mu into a passageway, but just as his hand touched the wall, Kiao Mu threw out a thunder spirit talisman, which directly exploded on the young man's body. A thunderbolt landed down on him like striking a withered tree. As a result, he flumped down onto the ground. Smoke was coming off the person's body as he rolled about on the ground while groaning. He stammered, You, why, why did you? He didn't expect her to be so shrewd even though she looked so young. How did she figure out that he was tricking her? Kiao Mu stabbed that person's acupuncture points with several needles. That unlucky lad continued rolling back and forth while yelling. A horrifying pain deep in his nerves was getting multiplied countless times exponentially. There wasn't a single place in his body that wasn't screaming in pain, 
and he hurt so much that he was drenched in cold sweat. It felt like several hundred needles were stabbing his head in a frenzy. That pain was simply driving him insane. You want to play tricks on me? Kiyamu stated nonchalantly, if you don't answer honestly, I have several hundred methods to make you wish you were dead, yet still keep you barely breathing with a clear consciousness. The man's body spasmed, and he howled in pain. On the other side, Zudanjin and company had killed most of the cyan clothed people, not accounting for those who had collapsed from heavy injuries and were at their last gasp. Kiyamu did not waste her breath on the man who was giving off black smoke from the thunderbolt. She lifted him up like a chicken and made big strides forward while dragging him like a dead dog. Where, you say? You, you won't find Th the young sir. The man finally revealed the truth. Th the young sir has long left to together with Th the assistant faction master. B, besides, you people won't be able to leave from here at all. After saying this, the man's expression contorted. Kiao Mu pressed on a point on his neck and snorted. You want to die? It won't be that easy. Roar. Kiao Mu turned around. She dragged that young man with one hand and positioned a crow repeating crossbow with the other, shooting five arrows in a row at the enemy. The five crow gold arrows pierced through a dozen zombies' heads. Suddenly, the three white puppies who were originally squatting obediently in the corner started barking. Go. Waigzu shouted while raising his arm. Everybody prudently activated their defensive barriers before charging forward to fight the zombies at close quarters. Kaodan continuously instructed his students, be careful everyone. Careful not to get scratched by the zombies. Pay attention to defense. Defense. All right, old cow. Stop begging non-stop for them to be careful, Zudanjin said while rolling his eyes. Chapter 1923 Ruthless. How can the students grow if they don't experience danger? Have them charge. Zudanjin stomped forward to cleave a zombie that was pouncing toward him. He raised his arm and shouted over the noise, Students, go get them. There's a big heap of points beckoning toward you up ahead. All the students. However, Zudanjin's shout did invigorate everybody, and they rushed forward one after another after activating their defensive barriers. Protect yourselves. Pay attention to protection. Kaodan yelled behind them. Don't panic. Pair up in groups of two and three. We don't need you to act the hero and fight alone. Old cow, you can't be cowering like this. Do you still want points? Zudanjin couldn't resist roasting him. Afui. Kaodan flared up. Points, points. What's the use of points if you lose your life? The two of them squabbled while slaughtering the zombies around them. As everybody was carving out a path of blood through the zombie pack, they did not have time to scavenge through the corpses on the ground. By rushing forward as they fought, they finally exited the passageway, yet they were promptly blinded by the bright light. Everybody reflexively closed their eyes, but their minds did not relax one bit. Everybody gather over here. After hearing Kiao Mu's cold shout, Zudanjin led the students toward her. This was most likely the main palace of the tomb. Everybody's vision was blinded because there was a large, round crystal located in the center of the main palace. Its smooth mirror surface was refracting rays of light that dazzled people's eyesight. Careful. The little fatty kicked away a zombie as he pulled Xiu Anxuan over. If you can't stand it, close your eyes and see using your spiritual conscious. This would expend their spiritual conscious but they were unable to make out their surroundings with the naked eye in this kind of situation. DRN lass, let me see how you will leave here alive. The cyan clothed man who had gotten struck by the thunderbolt gasped with difficulty. His gaze dripping with poison. Woof, woof, woof. Suddenly, the three little doggies pounced over and bit that man's legs together. Ah! The cyan-clothed man felt like he was on the verge of death. With the three little doggies biting him, his nerves were exponentially magnified, making him spasm from pain. It really was ridiculous. He was already useless to this extent. Kiyamu flung her hand, sending him through the air toward a zombie that was baring its teeth. That zombie halted for a bit probably not expecting someone to suddenly be feeding it. It then swiftly caught the cyan-clothed man by the waist. Ah, no, don't. Ah, crack. 
the zombie lowered its head and fiercely chomped down on that man's hand, it then started to feast merrily, the other zombies fervently dashed over at the sight and gathered around the cyan clothed man, they finished splitting up the meal in no time, Kiyamu kicked away a zombie before dragging the other captives over, her cold gaze passed over the men who were trembling, where is clear sky factions headquarters, no, no, ah, this great ant, we humble ones Rhea really don't know. Those cyan clothed men were about to go crazy from witnessing their companion's gruesome death. They prostrated on the ground in fear and kowtowed bitterly, it's true, this great ant, right, right. We get blindfolded whenever we enter and exit clear sky faction, chapter 1924, an attacking monstrosity, right, right. We only know that it's in a gorge, we live the law normally and call it clear sky gorge, this great ant, we humble ones are are speaking the truth, we normally train in clear sky gorge, and the assistant faction master will occasionally come for inspection, usually, we are forbidden from leaving the gorge wh when we don't have missions, we really don't know where that place is, you're lying, kiamu kicked one of the people in the face, sending him flying into the zombie pack, several zombies promptly grabbed his arms, and he quickly got dismembered, ah, the remaining people were scared out of their wits, they lay limply on the ground, pissing their pants in terror, you really think I'm a kid with no common sense, Kiao Mu sneered, it's fine if you refuse to say, wait until I have your souls searched, her eyes suddenly lit up, and she immediately turned to look at Mo Lian. crown prince Mo nodded, but just as he was about to walk up, one person fiercely smacked the crown of his own head, you really aren't afraid of dying. Fang Chen chortled from the side, a wood spirit flying from his fingertip shot through the arm with which the person was using to commit suicide, the man's arm hung limply as he groaned in pain, I, I'll talk, I'll talk, it hits inside Shanshan prefecture, in, in Wu, Yuang Mountain, Yuang Mountain, traitor. After one of them confessed, the other three people struggled to pounce over and beat him to death, yet before they could touch the guy, an explosion sent them flying, pew. The clear sky faction disciple who confessed was coughing up blood, but he still smiled brightly, our conscious pools, ha have a seal, once once we say anything about our faction, we we will be destroyed, ha ha ha, but in any case, this is much much better than getting eaten by zombies, Kiaomu gazed coldly at them, seems like none of you are willing to lead me to clear sky faction, the remaining people shut their mouths, fine then, I'll let you all die comfortably, Kiaomu raised her hand, and a mighty earth spiritual energy gathered into a giant palm that smacked the three people's heads, since you had the guts to come attack me, you were naturally already prepared to die, Kiaomu uttered coldly, make sure to find the right foe on the way to the underworld, it's Fanga that fool who killed you guys, after several light cracks, the three people fell lifelessly to the ground, two students immediately kicked those three people into the zombie pack at Kiaomu's gesturing gaze, the group swiftly advanced while the majority of the zombies were attracted by the three corpses, afterwards, Molian leapt up onto that large crystal in the center and struck down, the crystal cracked before shattering into dust, without that blinding light before them, the main palace dimmed down, yet suddenly, they heard an earth shaking roar overhead, the intensity of the sound was so great that it simply threatened to shatter everybody's eardrums, everybody's hearts also squeezed as they hastily looked up above, their hearts sank at what they saw, the ceiling was also made of crystal, but right now, everybody could indistinctly make out a thick-bodied monstrosity slowly spiraling above them through the crystal. Could, could this be some serpent? I it couldn't be what we saw earlier, th that, chapter 1925, earth dragon flipping over, the earth dragon that caused this earthquake that br brought us all down here? One of the students stuttered despairingly, everybody stared up above again, the more they looked, the more they thought that this brother might be right, woof, 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 the three little doggies suddenly started barking fiercely at the ceiling, everybody looked down at them bleakly, feeling that those three dogs were being ridiculous, how much were these three little doggies intent on seeking their death, their bodies probably wouldn't even be able to serve as that monster's toothpick, woof, 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 on the other hand, 
their zombies didn't come to besiege Kiamu and company after demolishing the corpses either. Instead, they retreated to the side as if awaiting something's grand entrance. A terrifying roar came from beyond the crystal ceiling again, drowning out those three little doggies' comical barking. Everybody felt their blood run cold, and they subconsciously huddled together while nervously gripping their weapons. It seems like this will be our last battle. Zudanjin smiled bitterly, just the pressure alone that this monster up above was emitting made them horrified. Not to mention that this was through a transparent crystal ceiling. Woof, 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 woof. The three little doggies darted forward while barking as they bared their teeth at the crystal ceiling. Everyone, you three are really trying to draw attention after getting ignored. Kiaomu looked down at them helplessly. Everybody summon your mystic beasts and prepare for battle. Kiyamu spoke coldly. Just now when they were in a melee against the zombies, everybody was of the same mind that they couldn't let out their mystic beasts. Besides aerial mystic beasts, most of the terrestrial mystic beasts used their physical bodies to run down their opponents. This did not give them an advantage over the zombies at all. Yet now, they were already at the critical point where they had no choice but to summon their mystic beasts. Mystic beasts appeared next to each person and the mystic beast's large statues practically filled up the entire main palace. Fortunately, the main palace was extremely huge. Even with so many zombies around them looking on covetously, there was enough space for both them and their beasts. After summoning their divine beasts, Chi Xuang Xuan and them hastily summoned their summoned beasts as well. At this moment, the crystal ceiling above was already starting to crack loudly. Daoji laughed out loud. I didn't expect to encounter an adult sacred beast when we came to play in this random mountain. Our luck really is quite good. When everybody heard what Daoji said, they turned crestfallen. Sacred beast. These students had practically never seen a sacred beast in their lifetime. After all, that was only something they saw in books. Who would have thought that they had the rare chance to see one today? Yet they didn't know whether to consider this good luck or bad luck. Everybody smiled bitterly as they looked at each other. Crown Prince Mo turned to look at Mentor Waigzu. Bring everybody to the back and pay attention to the surroundings. You guys will be taking care of the zombies. You do not need to worry about the rest. Kiaomu was also of the same mind. Having a group of minor spiritual cultivators face a sacred beast meant pushing them to their deaths. Besides, a lot of the students were only equipped with mystic beasts and not spiritual beasts. Xuang Xuan, little fatty, pay attention to defense. Watch out. The students from the other academies suddenly shouted, Chapter 1926, It's a Double-Headed Flood Dragon. Hong Yui Academy's mentor nodded toward Kiyamu's group. They had long become one team after going through so much together. If he still couldn't tell by now that there was something unusual about Molian's group, then he really had no eye for discernment. Crack, crack, boom. The crystal ceiling finally shattered. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, however, nobody expected that the first ones to attack wouldn't be Mo Lian, Feng Chen, the little despot, and company, but, the three little doggies jumped vertically and bit onto the huge tail that was suspended in midair. 1. The dense scales covering the huge tail were so thick that it made them terrified. Yet it was these three little doggies that probably lacked a full set of teeth that chomped down. They even bit off a good number of scales and spat them out. Everybody was instantly dumbfounded. Kiaomu also raised her delicate eyebrows in surprise sizing up the little doggies that rolled into a ball after landing on the ground. They then continued charging at the huge tail suspended in midair. When the scaly tail uncoiled and hung down, it extended several dozen meters long. Once it smashed on the ground, it swept all the crystal shards flying. Oh oh, defensive barriers. At Zudanjin's solemn shout, everybody mustered up the spiritual energy around them to push their defensive barriers to the limit. The crystal shards that were battering down on them rhythmically got blocked out by everybody's defensive barriers. Even though the mentors had been shielding the younger students in the back, the latter still felt lightheaded, with their vital energy churning in their chests. Plat. The entire crystal ceiling had fallen through, and a colossal beast appeared before everybody in its full glory. It had two sinister heads and looked akin to a dragon. Its spiraling body was in a tangle 
and it was covered from head to tail with sturdy scales. The scales on its neck, especially, had generated a row of barbs that looked extremely threatening. A, a double-headed flood dragon. Daoji yelped in surprise while twitching his face. A double-headed flood dragon was actually hiding inside a tiny Poland prefecture. How was this reasonable? Woof, woof. The three little doggies bared their teeth while getting into a triangular formation. They crouched, and then, just as Kiao Mu's eyelid jerked, they shot up while barking and bit down fiercely on the double-headed flood dragon's neck. Fook, that's too savage. Daoji felt like he was getting outdone by three little doggies. Come. The three puppies had launched themselves onto the double-headed flood dragon's body before Kiao Mu could finish her sentence. The double-headed flood dragon flailed its body in pain, abruptly flinging off the three little doggies. Woo, woo. The little doggies whimpered with bared teeth as they rolled on the ground. When they shook their white fur after getting up, Everybody discovered in surprise that the three little doggies were completely fine. They even spat out several scaly bobs. This was from the double-headed flood dragon's neck, right? Everybody could not help but be stupefied. Afterwards, everyone looked at Kiao Mu with peculiar expressions. Kiao Mu was naturally also confused, and she observed these three barking puppies quizzically. Probably no one was still treating them as normal little doggies by now. Whose little doggy was so brassy as to grapple with a double-headed flood dragon sacred beast, and could even tear off the scales and barbs on the sacred beast's neck? This was a divine dog. Chapter 1927 Ganging up on the double-headed flood dragon. This was definitely a divine dog. Otherwise, how could it have the strength to take on a double-headed flood dragon sacred beast? Everybody was lampooning in their minds as they gave Kiao Mu queer looks. Are you even a freaking human? The three little doggies you randomly took in along the way turned out to be so abnormal like you. Unlike the other people, Chi Xuang Xuan, the little fatty, Juan Mu King, Mart R. And the other Apex Academy students who had teamed up with Kiao Mu this whole time were evidently much more calm. It's fine. You'll get used to it. In any case, all of them had already gotten used to getting triggered by Kiao Kiao. This trifling matter was completely unable to stir a ripple in their minds. Wasn't it just a divine dog? Kiao Kiao even had a blood fire phoenix. What did a divine dog amount to? In reality though, the little fatty and company weren't as calm as they appeared to be. All of them were lampooning in their minds too. Kiao Mu looked dazedly at the three little doggies before looking up at Molian. What's going on? Even this old man is unable to make out where these three hail from. The little despot beside them stated like an elder, while a hint of confusion flashed past his indifferent eyes. Yet Kiao Mu promptly turned around and trotted to the little despot. Looking down at him, Crown Prince Mo's mouth twitched when he saw her push his forehead. Why are you acting all old and wise when you're a kid? 1. Dao Wuji. The little despot's slightly pale face promptly flushed red, and he pointed at Kiao Mu with a shaking finger. You, you. This old man was infuriated to death. This little girl couldn't be thinking that he was just eight or nine. Right. Kiao Mu promptly ignored him and turned to look at the three little doggies. It was only a moment, but the three little doggies had already clashed numerous times with the double-headed flood dragon in the center of the palace. Woo. The white puppy in the center bared its teeth at the double-headed flood dragon, with a strange green light passing through its eyes. Its speed promptly multiplied by several times and it pounced at the double-headed flood dragon with a whoosh. The other two were naturally unwilling to be outdone. Their fur was standing on end as they pounced forward with their companion up ahead. They crashed into the double-headed flood dragon's body like three cannons. Subsequently, they bit the flood dragon's belly with a howl. Hiss, hiss. The double-headed flood dragon actually got knocked backwards exposing its belly to the little doggy's bites. It writhed its body in pain before suddenly smacking its tail toward the little doggies. Watch out! Kiao Mu's heart jumped. At the same time, Feng Chen and Mo Lian were darting toward the double-headed flood dragon like lightning. The raven moon turned into a streak of light as it flew toward the double-headed flood dragon's head. The wood thistles Feng Chen produced also heaped up around the double-headed flood dragon's body and trapped its wriggling body. The three little doggies, whose coats of fur had gotten filthy, took this chance to roll back out. 
They roared at the double-headed flood dragon. Hiss, hiss. The double-headed flood dragon seemed to have also been thoroughly provoked, and a light purple thunderbolt charged up above its head. Yet before it could release its full might, Kiyamu flung ten water spirit talismans above this double-headed flood dragon's head. After numerous explosions, the double-headed flood dragon's head miserably got assailed by water spiritual energy before it could release that light purple thunderbolt. Chapter 1928, A Tonic for Kyukyu, the double-headed flood dragon's head sizzled when the two forces collided, giving off a thick, rolling smoke as if electrocuted. The pitiful double-headed flood dragon was forced to glide backwards due to everybody's fierce attacks. It hissed irascibly as its large, yellow eyes burned with hatred. We must eliminate it here. The little despot shouted gravely. This beast already possessed intelligence. If they allowed it to escape while harboring the seeds of hatred, then it would certainly cause great trouble in the future. Kill. Daoji laughed out loud while carrying his large saber on his shoulder. The energy from his saber was directed at the double-headed flood dragon. With a boom, the flurry of saber strikes hit the double-headed flood dragon's body. At the same time, the Ginkgo Immortal and the Peony Immortal also attacked in concert. However, even with the Ginkgo Immortal, the Horned Mendicant, and the others' help, Daoji's venerable spirit realm cultivation was not enough to crush this adult sacred beast. Luckily, this double-headed flood dragon seemed to have gone through a big battle previously, and it seemed like it had yet to recover its vitality. Even an adult sacred beast wouldn't be able to handle a group of venerable spirit realm and venerable immortal realm fellows shamelessly ganging upon it all at the same time. It had long had thoughts of retreat, but unfortunately for itself, nobody was a fool. How could they allow it to slip away like this? When they discovered that it had thoughts of retreat, their attacks became more and more intense. Zudanjin and the others heaved a sigh of relief when they saw that Molian's group were keeping the double-headed flood dragon under control. Yet just at this time, the double-headed flood dragon released a roar that acted like a signal to the zombie pack. The zombies that had originally been standing by obediently started getting restless. Watch out, everybody! Wagzu directed everybody to fight against the incoming zombies. For a moment, there were only the sounds of clashing swords and sabers countering the non-stop roars. Woof, woof, woof. The three valiant white puppies swiftly sprung forward. One of them pounced on the giant flood dragon's face, and it promptly ripped off a black scale from the latter's face with its sharp claw. The giant flood dragon's eye also suffered from injury, and it promptly fell to the ground and rolled about. Daoji even slyly took this chance to hack the flood dragon's tail. The giant flood dragon howled miserably. It writhed its tail, which was nearly cleaved in two, and knocked Daoji flying. Suddenly, its body shrunk to the size of a bug, and it darted off in zigzags to flee. A green light flashed past the three white puppies' eyes. They pounced together and bit onto the miniature flood dragon's body. The blood fire phoenix and little fat squirrel who were currently in a melee with the zombies quickly abandoned their opponents and rushed toward the miniature flood dragon. Soon, Kiaomu and the others saw a round and transparent light gold sacred beast core fly out from the flood dragon's body. One of the white puppy's eyes lit up and it leapt up into the air to bite the core. The other two astutely glared at the blood fire phoenix and little fat squirrel respectively, blocking the latter's paths. The core was about to land in the white puppy's mouth. Yet a withered vine shot out from the side and snatched the core away. Consequently, the core landed in Kiaomu's hands. Everybody's mouths twitched. They saw the little lady deadpan. You can stop fighting over it. This core will be a tonic for Kyukyu so don't think of getting it. Chapter 1929, Thigh Hugging The white puppies refused to accept the fact that their sumptuous meal had just flown away like that. They bared their teeth at Kiaomi while barking, intent on dashing over to snatch the core from Kiaomi's hands. Yet Kiaomi's gaze turned stern as she questioned the three puppies sharply. You really want to fight me? The three white puppies simultaneously halted. At the same time, Kiaomu swiftly flicked ten thunder spirit talismans above the three puppies' heads with a swish. Everybody gazed at her speechlessly. Subsequently, they saw those thunder spirit talismans suddenly activating above the three puppies' heads. Thunderbolts erupted from the talismans and enveloped the three puppies, 
immediately turning their white fur coats black. They could only whimper pitifully. Dawuji face and, unable to bear the sight. He didn't expect Boss's wife to have such a temper. She became hostile at the drop of a hat, without even giving the other party leeway for regret. She actually had the heart to attack these three cutie pies. Everybody felt like they could not look on. These pitiful white puppies didn't know the story about the mantis who stalks the cicada, unaware of the Oreo lurking behind. Woo, woo. The white puppies circled around everybody, looking rather miserable. They really didn't expect the sacred beast core they had been longing for for so long to fall into someone else's hands like this, you woo. However, the little stoic merely gave them an apathetic look. What are you three? Show your true form. The three little doggies roared at her twice. Their originally pure white fur had now turned into a smoky black and was standing on end from the explosion. Kiao Mu had long put away that sacred beast core. She swept a light glance over the three little doggies. She did not feel guilty at all. These three little doggies were originally harboring ulterior motives when they approached her. Wasn't it just that these three recognized their strength and wanted them to fight against the double-headed flood dragon? Perhaps, these three puppies were the ones that caused the double-headed flood dragon's previous injuries. Even though Kiao Mu found it a bit inconceivable, she was able to connect the dots after pondering it over. She really would be a fool if she still thought that these three were just ordinary hounds. Since the little doggies were unwilling to show their original form, she let it go at that. She wasn't in the mood to continue bickering with them and waved them off. Since the double-headed flood dragon has been taken care of now, you can leave. Let alone the three little doggies that were infuriated to no end after hearing this, even everybody else felt. Miss Gia was such a bully. Woo. The white puppies darted to Kiao Mu's feet. Crown Prince Mo was unhappy when he saw this and wanted to kick these three away. Yet who would have foreseen? New Wu, New Wu, the three little doggies with sooty coats tugged at Kiao Mu's skirt and started whimpering with sobs. Everyone, this was too theatrical. The three white puppies that had rushed up to provoke the double headed flood dragon were now abandoning their pride for the sake of the sacred beast core. If the white puppies could speak, they would definitely diss everybody back. What was their pride useful for when they lost a sacred beast core? Kiao Mu looked down at the three puppies. She then expressionlessly took out a porcelain bottle from her pocket and poured out three pills. Don't cry. Haven't you heard before that you should shed tears sparingly? This sacred beast core is for Kuki U to use. The next core will go to you, the little fellow deadpanned while handing them the pills. Here, Chapter 1930, Miss Kiao's Rules. Woof, woof, woof. The three puppies' barks were immediately invigorated as each of them quickly gulped them down. They rolled about while clutching Kiao Mu's skirt, and even their entire body felt at ease. After consuming this pill, they immediately emitted a heat that warmed their internal organs. Their internal injuries from the battle with the double-headed flood dragon earlier, as well as their fur coat that got electrocuted by the thunder spirit talismans, were recovering at a discernible rate. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. The three little doggies circled around Kiao Mu. At this time, the little stoic said indifferently, You can follow me, but you must abide by my rules. The three puppies looked up at her. One woof means yes, and two woofs mean number. If you don't agree, you can go scram. Kiao Mu continued. Everybody spectating couldn't resist twitching their mouths. This sight before them could really make a timeless painting. One stoic face plus three silly puppies that were drooping their heads after getting tormented. Firstly, you must listen to everything I say. Woof, everyone. Secondly, you cannot defy me and do the opposite. Woof. Thirdly, hand over all the zombie cores you stealthily collected along the way. These things are useless to you. In the future, you must hand over all the things you pick up, and I will redistribute everything. You cannot snatch things nor steal things that I don't give. Woof, woof, scram. The stoic face turned hostile at the drop of a hat. Everyone, Crown Prince Mo suddenly had the urge to burst out into laughter. Yet when he saw his wife's stoic face, he sensed that his wife would definitely be unhappy if he laughed out loud. As a result, it took all he had to hold it in. Woof. The three white puppies ambled to her while drooping their heads. The first one shook its body, 
shaking out around a dozen of the cores from the zombies' brains. The second and the third one also followed suit with the same motions. They shook their butts, heads, bodies, and fur, throwing all the cores hidden on their bodies to Kiao Mew. There's still more, Miss Kiao deadpanned. Everyone. How come they felt like these white puppies were so miserable? The three miserable puppies shook their fur coats vigorously, pitifully shaking out all the treasures they had stashed away. Everybody was astonished at the sight, Fook. Besides those zombie cores were a good several hundred spiritual beast cores and a bunch of random forging materials. It was likely that these three little fellows had been lording it over in Mount Tai for a long time. Otherwise, they wouldn't have targeted a huge beast like the double-headed flood dragon for its sacred beast core. Very good. Kiao Mew collected the entire heap of items into her storage talisman. She planned to separate them when she was free and toss all the forging materials to Crown Prince Mo. Fourthly, Daoji's face twitched as he almost blurted out, How come you have so many rules? There will be more as they arise. The little stoic stated, we'll see when things happen in the future. Abide by the first rule in the face of all conflicts. Understood? Woof. Miss Giao only then nodded in satisfaction. We can go now. Bang, 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 bang. Chapter 1931, Meeting. Everybody turned to where the sound was coming from. Someone seemed to be chiseling the palace wall on the left side with a sharp tool, and the wall finally gave in crumbling toward the inside. Cough, cough, cough. A group of people walked in amidst the dust from beyond the palace wall rubble. All of them were covered in dust from head to toe and were extremely worn out. Eh? Aren't these the people from Mani Prefecture's Jieking Academy and Longjing Academy? And also Yakun Prefecture's Zongwang Academy? Hey, how come everybody is coming over? Mentor Liao, how come you guys came from over there? The mentor of Yukun Prefecture's Shuangfing Academy naturally recognized Zongwang Academy from the same prefecture. He quickly walked forward to greet Mentor Liao. Ah, it's Mentor Su. It's great to see you all. Mentor Liao simply teared up upon seeing the familiar Mentor Su. Not only was his appearance unkempt, but his spirits had also sunk low. The academies making up their team were basically in the same miserable state. Miss, Miss Giao? A shout of surprise entered Kiao Mu's ears. Kiao Mu looked up and saw a tall, slender and smiling young lady walk over with large strides. The latter cupped her hands and asked, Do you remember me, Miss Kiao? Kiao Mu saw that her clothes were also wrinkled, but she still looked rather energetic. She said with a nod, You are Baixia, where are your companions? Ah, they're in the back. Bay eyes, jiffing, hurry and come over. Bay eyes hastily beckoned toward her younger brother and her fiancé, those two also quickly walked over. They looked more haggard than Bay Ixia, and the clothes on their bodies had gotten torn. They looked as if they had crawled out of some rat hole. Sis. Bay eyes eyed Bay Ixia in embarrassment. It's not like he didn't see Miss Kiao, but how could he greet an old acquaintance in this state? DRN brat, what do you mean by sis? Hurry and come greet Miss Kiao. Bay Eyes glared at Bay Eyes impatiently, greetings to Miss Kiao. Bay Eyes scratched his head, yet before he could flash a smile, a cold gaze coming from beside Miss Kiao abruptly froze his smile. Slash Fook, where did this demon come from? A mere look was enough to terrify him. Slash Lian. Kiao Mu turned to hold Mo Lian's hand before pointing at Bay Eyes and the other two. This is Bay Ixia, Bay Eyes and Jifeng from Sayuan Planet Spazy Kingdom. I met them when I just came to Shunshan Prefecture. Mo Lian nodded lightly, and the trio also hastily returned the greeting. Baixia said with a smile, Miss Kiao, have you found your companions? Kiao Mu shook her head, not yet. However, Crown Prince Mo had told her last time to not worry about Situ Yi and them, if she didn't encounter them this time in the six prefectures and three provinces as ranking competition, it might mean that they had directly ascended to the upper three provinces due to some fortuitous opportunity. The Crown Prince had also dispatched people to the Divine Province to investigate. They should probably be hearing news soon. How come you guys were behind that wall? Don't mention it. Ever since the mountain shook three days ago and we fell down into the earth, 
everybody got squeezed inside a long passageway. We finally made it to this point after a titanic effort. The people from Sunlight Academy have food and water. Everybody prepare for battle. Chapter 1932, do it. A piercing scream abruptly interrupted their chat. Kiao Mu, Molian, and the rest turned their heads to look. They saw a girl whose pink dress had gotten soiled by mud and filth with their back toward them tell the students beside her vehemently, this is not the time to have misgivings. We're about to lose our lives here. Since we can't come to an agreement with Sunlight Academy, we might as well snatch it for ourselves. Everybody couldn't help but become speechless. The scene before them felt rather classic. Not long ago, classmate Yuxin from Sunlight Academy had fought with Miss Giao because the latter didn't give them food and water. Of course, the result was extremely tragic. They didn't expect that they would be the victims this time and that the aggressors had become other people. Because Sunlight Academy's students were holding a lot of food and water. They became the targets of the two academies from any prefecture. Yuxin couldn't help being enraged. Just now, one of their students dropped a half-eaten apple when they were battling the zombies. Consequently, this attracted the greed of any prefectures Jieking Academy and Longjing Academy. The people from the two academies surrounded them without helping them fight the zombies. On the contrary, they took advantage of their battle with the zombies to rob them of their unfinished food and water. Shameless. Yuxin berated. Do you still want your pride? How can you just snatch other people's things like that? How do you have the cheek to do such a thing? Now, it was these foolish students from Sunlight Academy who were dissing the people from any prefecture. The girl with the soiled pink dress continued to egg on the people from any prefecture. Don't be afraid. Everybody, our numbers are greater than theirs. Everybody charge and snatch their food and water. Holy shit, you bunch of thieves. Mentor Liao from Yakuan Prefecture's Zongwang Academy looked awkwardly at the impassioned girl wearing the pink dress. He couldn't resist saying, Fourth Miss Guan, this isn't too good, right? The girl in the pink dress shouted angrily, Mentor Liao, if you don't want to join in, Go hide in a corner with your students. Anyone who dares to stop us will be treated as the enemy. Guan Yang was nearly about to go crazy. Ever since they entered this underground passageway and were unable to open their inner worlds, they had consumed not a drop of food or water. They had also fought against rats and zombies along the way. Their spiritual energy got expended rather quickly, and they could not get a new supply of pills. Hence, they became extremely tired and listless. Moreover, due to various reasons during these past three days, they had long gotten so hungry and thirsty that they were about to go crazy. When they saw a Sunlight Academy student drop half an apple, these starved people's eyes turn green with greed. Do it. Guan Yang swung down her fair hand, commanding everybody from Mani Prefecture to go forward. Yet a crisp and chilly voice suddenly entered her ears. It's you. Kiao Mu had already found this girl somewhat familiar the moment she opened her mouth. However, Guan Yang's disheveled appearance right now was really quite distracting. She looked rather different from what Kiao Mu remembered her to look like. That was why Kiao Mu did not utter a sound from the beginning only watching them frolic with disinterest. It was at this moment that she remembered where she had seen this woman with familiar eyes. This Annie Prefecture's fourth young lady was the person who wanted to snatch away her Xuanji core and had dispatched numerous people to kill her. Where is Fan Kaiyu? Kiam Yu asked Guan Yang frigidly. Chapter 1933, Seeking Their Own Death. She remembered that it was Fan Kaiyu who had brought this woman to Jiozhong base to make trouble for her. Speaking of which, these two might be on pretty good terms. What what Fan Kaiyu? Guan Yang's complexion instantly turned ugly. She had recalled that she had once tried to kill this deed Kiao Mu in the lower star domain. However, that had simply turned into a ridiculous fuss. She and Pundit Zhao had chased this girl to Jiozhong base to rob and kill her for her Xuanji core, yet, the result was that the people she had brought had all died by this DRN lass's hands without exception. Likewise, she barely escaped after using a teleportation talisman. Thinking about it now, it was an extremely precarious situation. Kiao Mu gazed at Guan Yang icily. As expected, 
you're someone who's used to snatching whatever you want from other people. Guan Yang's face flushed red as she glared viciously at Kiao Mu. She suddenly pointed at Kiao Mu and told the people around her from any prefecture. Everybody, this girl possesses the rare Xuanji core. As long as we work together to kill her, we can share the spoils of the Xuanji core. We'll immediately be able to recover our spiritual energy. Wh what? Fourth young Miss Guan, is that really true? Of course it's true. Guan Yang nodded resolutely. Guan Yang, are you just making up a story so that we'll attack her for you? Believe whatever you want. In any case, I am telling the absolute truth. Guan Yang rebutted, swish. A cluster of flames instantly darted toward Guan Yang. She dropped to the ground with a roll at the very last second. When she turned and saw how deep the scorched pit was, her complexion turned pale. When she looked up, she noticed a stern-looking man in black standing next to the DMN lass. That man was very handsome. It felt like his cold gaze was treating her like a corpse and she involuntarily felt cold all over. She had no leisure to be admiring the handsome man. Meanwhile, the people from Annie Prefecture were showing covetous cases after Guan Yang's instigation. Slash the Xuanji core exclamation mark slash slash that was an ancient legend passed down from the upper three provinces dot slash slash it was said that this Xuanji core contained senior Xuanji's entire lifetime of cultivation and many forces had also investigated its whereabouts in greed. Slash, slash yet it turned out that question mark slash slash a little girl has obtained the Xuanji core question mark slash they looked at Kiao Mu with eyes filled with greed Kiao Mu did not fear them and coldly swept over them with her gaze subsequently one blue attack talisman after another drifted up and started moving around her slowly Guan Yiying you will die with these fools here today. Kill them. At Kiao Mu's command, all the people beside her moved together. They charged at the people from Mani Prefecture and swung their blades. Because the people from Mani Prefecture's academies had been cooped up in a passageway for a long time battling zombies, they were not Dao Wuji and companies much at all. They were like chicks getting destroyed in no time. The remaining half were so overwhelmed with terror that they hastily fled. They did not care about anything else as they escaped toward the passageway where they had come from. Guan Yiying. One male student from Annie Prefecture's Jieking Academy roared with bloodshot eyes. It was only then that everyone realized that Guan Yiying had sneaked over to the entrance of the passageway at the start of the fight. Chapter 1934, Failed Escape. By now, she had already crossed over into the passageway and was just about to flee. Suddenly, a long, furry tail smacked Guan Yang loudly on the back before wrapping her up and bringing her back from the entrance to the passageway. She got thrown heavily to the ground. Ah! Guan Yang rapidly rolled several times on the ground to evade the fat little squirrel's huge furry tail. She looked at Kiao Mu in extreme panic. The reason she instigated everybody to attack together was to win more time for escaping. She wasn't stupid. She wasn't even able to defeat her back then in the lower star domain when she had pundit Zan them with her, let alone now. With those people standing beside the DMN lass, she could sense that they were not ordinary just by looking at them. She would be a fool if she picked such a time to fight Kiao Mu. Even if she wanted to kill Kiao Mu, it would be done stealthily. She would arrange for adequate people and mounts before looking for her again. Slash for example, how could these students from any prefecture around her counter this formidable last question mark slash? Unfortunately, it was all wishful thinking as Kiao Mu wasn't an idiot. She had locked on to Guan Yang with her spiritual consciousness from the very start. When she saw that Guan Yang was really planning to slink off, she quickly had the fast little squirrel attack her. Guan Yang had already suffered at Chirpy's hands when they were still in the lower star domain, so she was not going to fight against it now. A teleportation talisman appeared in her hand, and she was just about to leave when the hill-sized fat squirrel smiled at her queerly. She felt that something was going to go wrong, but before she could do anything, a heavy palm hit her back. As a result, she stumbled forward from the force and inertia. Chirp. 
the fat squirrel waved his arms and directly plopped onto fourth Miss Guan's shoulder before she could react. Guan Yang was unable to vent successfully. After several seconds, she felt as if something had run over her skeleton. It hurt so much that her body started shaking while she wailed. Slash her. Her body exclamation mark slash slash her body hurt so much that it didn't feel like it belonged to her anymore exclamation mark slash slash did all her bones and skeletons get broken this squirrel that had fattened up to become a small hill plopped down afterwards would it freaking crush all the bones in her body until they broke question mark slash guan yang wanted to push it but her limbs were so weak that she couldn't lift them up. The other students from Annie Prefecture's Jiaqing Academy were all so scared that their faces paled and their teeth chattered. Someone threw aside his weapon and knelt in front of the little despot. He begged for mercy while kowtowing, please spare my life, great sir, please spare my life. This humble one failed to recognize you heroes, please spare my life, crack. The little despot reached out and snapped that person's neck without batting an eyelid. Afterwards, he threw the corpse to the side and spoke icily, noisy. One. The entire Jiaqing Academy, including those mentors harboring evil designs, had all been cleaned out by Molian and company. Everybody turned around to see the little stoic squatting in front of the little fat squirrel. More precisely, she was squatting in front of Guan Yang who was getting squashed under the fat little squirrel's butt. Is this game of trying to kill me fun? Kiao Mu poked Guan Yang's forehead with an indifferent smile on her lips. How about we strike a deal? Tell me honestly, are you and Fan Kaiyu familiar with each other? Chapter 1935, so cocky. If your answer can satisfy me, I will consider letting you off. Guan Yang snorted. She was thinking of spitting on Kiao Mu, but the fat little squirrel whipped her mouth with its tail just as she was about to do that. You beach, don't think of getting any information from me. Guan Yang said threateningly, if my dad knows how you are treating me, he will definitely not let you off. Several rivulets of water danced between Kiao Mu's fingers before gradually freezing into thin, sharp, and extremely long icicles. Is that so? These dozen thin and sharp icicles stabbed deeply into Guan Yang's shoulder, promptly making her spasm. Ah, Guan Yang. Kiao Mu's icy voice entered Guan Yang's ears, and it chilled her entire body to the bone. What is your relationship with Fan Kaiyu? No relation, no relation at all. Guan Yang finally gave in and confessed. She lay on the ground as tears streamed down her cheeks. She kept shouting, I I told you, I already told you, so quickly make it leave. Her body didn't just hurt after getting squashed underneath a furry hill. She was unable to describe the sensation at all. Guan Yang felt that even if the fat squirrel was to move its butt, her entire body would already be crushed. I. I had only asked asked around for the whereabouts of the Xuanji Corps and re-requested that lad from the fan clan to lead the way. Kiao Mu furrowed her brows before slowly removing one icicle after another from Guan Yang's shoulder. Ah, ah. Guan Yang continued to release wretched screams. Removing the icicles hurt much more than stabbing the Ming. Guan Yang's entire body was shaking like a leaf as she implored Kiao Mu with unfocused A's, kill. Kill me. Go on and kill me, kill me ah. You feel like you're very pitiful now, right? Kiao Mu looked at her impassively without a ripple in her mind. Kiao Mu looked up slightly and motioned for the fat little squirrel to leave. Chirp. The fat little squirrel moved its butt and lifted its gargantuan body off of Guan Yaying, who had practically gotten crushed. Guan Yaying's gaze turned cold, and just as she struggled to roll to the side, she didn't expect a barbed vine to be flying straight at her. The vine wrapped her up with a swish before flinging her away, so she slammed into the palace wall to the side. Ah, ah, ah. Guan Yang's head was bleeding profusely as she rolled back and forth on the ground. Meanwhile, Qi Xuang Xuan and the rest who were currently battling against the zombies backed away tactfully. Slash it was so scary. This girl. Everybody also turned to look at Miss Kiao who was emitting a chill. They even darted to the side tactfully, at Jiozhong base, if I didn't have enough skill, the consequence of ending up in your hands might probably be ten thousand times more miserable than now. Kiao Mu looked at Guan Yang coldly with an austere look, 
She hated these cocky people from the middle six prefectures and upper three provinces the most. They kept acting as if they were all high and mighty, born superior to other people. As long as it was something they wanted, they would just snatch it away whether the other party gave it to them or not. In any case, those ants from the lower star domain could do nothing about them. Chapter 1936, The Coming of Light Kiao Muai Guan Yaying, who was lying on the ground, with a cold gaze and struck her with a vine. You can go die now. Ah. Guan Yaying's eyes flashed malevolently as she spat out a round bead with all her might. Watch out. Mo Lian darted forward and pulled his wifey into his arms. No sooner had he said this when that divine energy bead exploded thunderously in front of everyone. The entire tomb shook from this explosion, and the palace walls and columns all started to crack and collapse. This happened so quickly that before everybody could react, their line of sight darkened as bricks and dust fell down on them. They covered everybody with a boom, whack and thunk. It wasn't until some time afterwards that someone's smothered coughs could be heard from the rubble. Yao Xiao, Xuanxuan, Fatty, is everyone all right? Cough, 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 we're fine. Juan Mu King's voice sounded raspy, and he coughed to clear his throat of dust. Don't panic, everyone. First dig a tunnel for us to regroup. Mentor Y Xu instructed in a low voice, Careful of the zombies near you. Thud, 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 thud. Kiaomu kicked away the boulder in front of her and illuminated the area up ahead with her night luminous pearl. She immediately saw the little fatty and Duan Mu King. Duan Mu King hastily ran up and asked anxiously, Kiao Kiao, are you okay? He examined her from head to toe. Kiao Mu shook her head. They went into attack mode when they heard movements coming from the left side. Luckily, it wasn't a zombie that moved the boulder, but the little despot, Dao Wuji, and them. Everybody should be buried under the rubble nearby. We'll have to move away some of the rocks on top to regroup with everyone before we think of a way to dig ourselves out. Juan Mu King analyzed. Crown Prince Mo nodded. We shouldn't be far from the entrance. There are too many uncertainties if we use the transfer talisman matrix. On the off chance it transfers us back to the passageway where we came from. It'd be faster to dig out a path ourselves. The little fatty nodded. Okay, then let's get to work. Three hours later, Kiao Mu and the others successfully dug out the people from Sunlight Academy, Shuangfeng Academy, and Hongyui Academy. Kao Dan coughed several times in a row with a dirtied face before cupping his hands towards Zhu Danjin and company. Many thanks. Uck, cough, cough. What should we do now? I've determined the location of the exit. So now we need everybody to work together to dig out a path. Mata crossed his arms and cast the people from Sunlight Academy a sidelong look. You don't have a problem, right? Of course. Cough, cough, cough. No, no problem at all. Kaudan bobbed his head in reply. The mentors from the other academies also nodded their heads. At this time, getting out of here was naturally the most important task at hand. Everybody worked hard to dig a tunnel in the direction that Mata had scouted out. Three people dug together in front, and they would rotate out when they got tired. Additionally, everybody was extremely thankful and felt lucky that they had Miss Giao supplying them endlessly with food and water. Their beasts were naturally not suited to be in this kind of narrow tunnel due to their large bodies, but one of the Sunlight Academy students had a tunneling rat mystic beast. This helped them immensely, which was an unexpected surprise. After continuing to dig for four to five days, they finally neared the surface. They could even make out a ray of sunlight streaming in. Chapter 1937, We're Out. Everybody was ecstatic, so they quickened their digging pace. As the light was just before them, everybody had high fighting spirit at its master's urging. The tunneling rat spared no effort in pushing the rubble in front of it to the sides. Everybody moved rapidly, and they even started using their treasured spiritual weapons as digging tools. With a final thud, the last boulder blocking the way got unearthed. Zudanjin crouched down and was the first to pop out from the tunnel. He looked up at the sunlight streaming through the leaves and laughed heartily. We're out. We're out. He jumped up onto a branch with a swish. Following on his heels were Waigzu, the little fatty, Chi Xuanxuan, and the others. Everybody popped out from the opening one after another. They all took a deep breath and exchanged glances. My goodness, 
They finally made it out of that bleak hole after so many days. Zidanejin tried to see if he could open his inner world, and he couldn't help furrowing his brows. We should leave this Mount Tai as soon as possible. Everybody naturally nodded in agreement, and they all scolded the scoundrel that had planned these preliminaries in their minds. If Poland Prefecture's Godsend Academy didn't insist on such a novel way of carrying out the mass selection for the preliminaries, how would there be so much trouble? Some of their students had even lost their lives here. Goddess and Academy was simply shameless. Thinking about it now, they just wanted to gather everybody's strength to deal with the zombies on the mountain behind their academy as soon as possible. Roar, a raspy roar came from the side, and a face with rotting flesh abruptly appeared before the little fatty's eyes. Mamma mia! The little fatty lifted up his double headed hammer that was still covered in dirt and clobbered it down on the zombie which had pounced over at him at an angle. Everybody jumped in fright. They hastily pummeled that unlucky zombie with countless spiritual energy attacks as if their lives depended on it. It ended up getting pulverized to bits. Everybody examined the surroundings vigilantly, but did not discover any other zombies. It seemed like this zombie had just slipped through the net. Zudanjin let out a sigh of relief. It's not suitable to advance using flying spiritual beasts in this dense forest. Let's summon our spiritual beasts after we leave this area. Let's get a move on. We don't know whether there are any other dangers here. It won't be too late for us to rest after we get out of here. Another mentor added. Okay. Everybody nodded as a matter of course. They hastily chased after their mentors to get out of Mount Tai. Swish, swish. However, before they could walk far, two shadows suddenly landed in front of everybody. Zudanjin and company jolted in fright, and they hastily prepared for battle. After Zudanjin and company discovered that it was the two elders from earlier who were proctoring the exam. They eased up. Waigzu went up and cupped his hands. Did you happen to be waiting for us here? One of the black clothed elders nodded with a gratified smile. We were missing just your group. We have been waiting here for you for a long time. Will everyone now please follow me to the nearby Godsend Academy to rest and recharge? Waigzu let out a sigh of relief and gave his thanks. Thank you. After you. It's been hard on you all. The two elders nodded and turned around to lead everybody out. Chapter 1938, The Prideful Little Lady. The two elders were naturally extremely familiar with the environment around Mount Tai. Before long, they led everybody down the mountain using a small path that led straight to Godsend Academy's back door. When everybody finally entered Godsend Academy while following the two proctors, they heaved a sigh of relief. Godsend Academy was located in a beautiful environment. It was populated with trees that created shade and the air was filled with the scent of flowers and grasses, accompanied by the faint medicinal fragrance coming from the medicinal building far away. Everybody can check whether you can open your inner worlds with your mystic conscious now, the two elders reminded with a smile. Zudanjin and company all tested it out and subsequently nodded in delight. They said in unison, we can now. That's great. The elder nodded before explaining tirelessly, actually. There is a kind of tree that can block people's mystic conscious and spiritual conscious which grows within certain special areas inside Mount Tai. We call it a screening tree. Previously, Mount Tai's protective beast, the double-headed flood dragon, caused the entire mountain to shake due to its battle with another entity. This made the entire surface cave in. The majority of people were transferred out from inside the mountain, while a minority, including you all, got swept inside the mountain. The dean thus dispatched the academy's elders to stand guard at the exits so that they could immediately lead you out the moment they saw you. The other people came out after several days in groups, but we were only able to encounter your teams today. Speaking of which, the second round of the academy ranking competition will take place in three days. You all came out right on time. Everybody was finally enlightened and understood why they were unable to use their spiritual conscious after going underground. Most likely, one of the screening tree's roots was connected to that place deep inside the mountain, putting it in its area of influence. In that case, we have passed the preliminaries. 
a Sunlight Academy student asked excitedly. The elder promptly gave them an affirmative nod. But of course, you have already destroyed the entire zombie underground base. Your meritorious service is unparalleled, there is no question that all of you have passed the preliminaries. Everybody finally felt in high spirits. Originally, they had been muttering in their minds how they had only been focused on fighting and missed the chance to scavenge through the zombies' remains, so they had no evidence to prove the number of zombies that they had killed. Upon hearing this, Kiao Mu poured out a large heap of bones from her storage talisman. She deadpanned, you should have said so earlier. Slash you made her collect so much garbage for nothing exclamation mark slash. Slash it was simply tainting her storage talisman exclamation mark slash. Everyone, PFFT. It was unknown who started bursting out into laughter. The other people also couldn't resist getting infected by the laughter. After recovering their wits. They thought this little stoic did not seem as vicious and was rather immeasurably adorable. Slash it was simply too comical exclamation mark slash. Slash it turned out that this little stoic didn't forget to collect these zombies bones for them while she was fighting dot slash. Slash even though she didn't say it, she took everything into account for them dot slash. Slash she was worried that they would be unable to produce the bones as evidence after they spent so much energy to kill them and that their labor would amount to nothing. Slash. All the students cupped their hands toward her and said with a smile, thank you. Yet the little stoic turned her petite face aside and muttered expressionlessly, it's not like I picked them up for you. You're thinking too much. Chapter 1939, I'm going to find my Lian. Slash all right. The little lady was being prideful again. Dot slash. Everybody smiled helplessly as they followed the two proctors to the dorms assigned to each academy's students. Each academy was allotted a small courtyard. Even though they had to squeeze in, it wasn't an issue to stay there for two to three days. Besides Kiao Mu and Chi Xiu Ang Xuan who shared a room, the other rooms were divided up among the males as they pleased. Miss Kiao couldn't help finding Crown Prince Mo's aggrieved gaze amusing when they parted. After Chi Xiu Ang Xuan finished washing up in the inner room, she dragged a stool to where Kiao Mu was sitting and suggested with a serious expression, Kiao Kiao, how about I stay outside, and your Lian comes and stays here. Kiao Mu was preoccupied with looking over her spoils from Mount Tai and didn't even look up to reply, no need. He should have accommodations too. It would only be one or two days, as the second round was not going to be held in Godsend Academy. That's why they would have to set out for the competition grounds of the second round after resting for one or two nights. I just know Kiao Kiao is the best. You definitely won't choose bows over pals. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan giggled immediately re-energized. She saw that Kiao Mu paid no attention to her, engrossed in picking over the pile of things to store into another storage talisman. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan couldn't help but ask curiously, what are these forging materials and these zombie cores you picked out for? For my Lian, Kiao Mu answered collectedly. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan instantly felt like she had gotten shot in the chest with an arrow. She clutched her chest and cried out exaggeratedly, hey, 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 can you just stop already? Slash were you gonna die if you didn't make a public display of affection for a single day? Slash Kiao Mu looked up and blinked at her. He is a divine weapon engineer. Slash sheet, no way question mark slash truth to be told. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan really had never seen a divine weapon engineer, which was the stuff of legends. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan quickly scooted her stool closer to Kiao Mu. Then could you have your Lian improve upon this spiritual sword of mine when he's free? Kiao Mu glanced at her before giving a reluctant nod. We'll see after resting for two days. He's been rather worn out during this period of time. Chi Xiu Ang Xuan nodded with a giggle. Of course. Of course, Chi Xiu Ang Xuan, what use us zombie cores? They're useful to superhumans. Superhumans can absorb these cores to augment their abilities. Kiao Mu paused as she collected the cores. Slash along that same vein, she could also augment her superpower of psychokinesis with these dot slash. Therefore, she kept several small cores for her own absorption while the majority she put into an empty storage talisman with the forging materials. She hopped up and said, 
I'm going to find my Lian, Chi Xuanxuan, slash you have a husband, big deal exclamation mark slash. Kiaom you didn't forget to give Chi Xuanxuan another stab as she ran to the door. Xuanxuan, remember to tell me if you happen to fall for a guy. The little fellow spoke in the air of someone experienced. I will help you scrutinize. Chi Xuanxuan felt so infuriated as she silently watched the little fellow fly far away like a butterfly darting through a flower bed. Diaran girl. Chi Xuanxuan puffed out her cheeks as she grumpily watched her go. She mused in her mind, slash down fellow, it would be great if you were happy every day like this dot slash. The way she broke down when they discovered the corpses in the underground prison really made her heart ache. Chapter 1940, For My Lian, after exiting her room, Kiam Yu just so happened to run into Crown Prince Mo, for you. Kiam Yu stuffed the storage talisman into Mo Lian's hands and said expressionlessly, For My Lian. Mo Lian peeked inside the storage talisman when he saw that it was filled with zombie cores and various forging materials. He couldn't help being moved and hugged the little fellow. His little one was constantly thinking about him. She wasn't collecting those zombie cores for her own use at all. She had collected them all for him. Beside them stood Dawuji, who was shining brighter than a thousand lit candles one. He pursed his lips and said, I had a dozen or so wives back in the day, and they would also circle around me every day, giving me this and that to receive my favor. Little Despot who was savoring tea at a stone table beside him, sniggered at his words. Then how about now, Humphrey? Dawuji harumphed, don't worry, with my looks and appearance, it will definitely be a cinch to find another ten or so wives, ha ha. The little despot turned his nose up at him, for people like you, it's useless no matter how many wives you marry, when your wives see your true nature, really, they'll all run off someday, what did you say? Dawuji fumed. What about my true nature? How come my wives will all run off? As the two people bickered, Miss Kiao turned around and glared at Dawuji. Shut up, you chatterbox. So noisy. The little despot laughed out loud while lying Dawuji. You hear that? A chatterbox. Noisy. Hey, just stop quibbling, you two. Come, come, Dawuji, come drink a cup of tea and douse your anger. Fang Chen was sitting at the stone table and pushed a cup of tea toward Dao Wuji. Frankly speaking, the little despot isn't wrong. What's the use of marrying so many wives? Isn't it better to find the one wife for you and dedicate yourselves to each other? What do you people who never had a wife understand? Dao Wuji picked up the teacup in a huff and downed the contents. A wife is proof of a man's ability. Got it? Like him. Dao Wuji furtively pointed in Crown Prince Mo's direction. My boss is a man of striking appearance and should be an unrestrained romantic. Casual relationships wouldn't be a surprise. Sigh, yet now. What about right now? A faint voice entered Dao Wuji's ears. Dao Wuji did not know that he was seeking his own death and blabbered on with his back to the young couple. Right now, he's simply a pitiful henpecked husband. He really is an embarrassment to us males. Ah, ah, ow, ouch. Before he could finish talking, someone kicked him hard on the back, and he crashed down onto the stone table in front of Feng Chen with a bang. Miss Kiao cut to the chase and gave Dao Wuji a violent beating. The venerable Beech Blossom Immortal offered a feather duster. Use this, Kiao Kiao, don't hurt your hand. Crown Prince Mo shook his head in exasperation. He had it coming. The little despot coughed lightly and picked up the teapot and his teacup before darting to the side. He poured himself a cup of tea and sipped from it. As the saying goes, there is hope of weathering calamites from heaven. But there is no hope when man brings them upon himself. Ah, ow, stop hitting, hey, I'm gonna retaliate if you keep hitting me. You just dry. Crown Prince Mo threatened him with a frigid voice. Dawuji did not reply to this and fled all over the place while shielding his head with pitiful shouts. Chapter 1941, Fan Caillou's Identity. Ah, oh my, hey, sis sister-in-law, little sister-in-law. Stop, stop. I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Dao Wuji immediately cried uncle. Slash don't kid him. If he dared to retaliate, Crown Prince Mo and Venerable Immortal Feng would definitely gang up on him. Slash. He'd be crazy to dare to retaliate. All right, it's not early anymore. Stop messing around and return to your rooms to rest.
Mentor Wai Xu's roar came from the door across from them. Kiao Mu retracted her petite hands in a huff and harumphed. She waved her small hand at Crown Prince Mo. Then I'll be going back now. Mo Lian nodded and watched his wifey return to her room. He then turned his gaze toward Dao Wuji, whose face was beaten black and blue, and said with curved lips, Don't worry, when we return to the Divine Province, you'll have as many wives as you want. For some reason, Dao Wuji inexplicably shuddered looking at Crown Prince Mo's unfathomable expression. Slash how come he felt like this punk was secretly scheming against him? Question mark slash. Dao Wuji stuck out his hand. I I think. A C actually, having one is good enough. Hey 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 hey. Crown Prince Mo patted his shoulder with a glance before returning to his room. Seeing this, Fang Chen gave Dao Wuji a look of sympathy that said you're on your own before following Crown Prince Mo back to his room to rest. Dao Wuji hastily turned to the little despot. Li little despot. Do you feel that, Yum? Boss had a weird look in his eyes. He said that, he'll arrange wives for me once we return to the divine province. What is that supposed to mean? Little despot examined Dao Wuji as if the latter was a retard. Won't you know once you get to the divine province? Oh. Dao Wuji mused it over and agreed that little despot's words made sense. Worrying over it right now was no use. Not only did it not help, it felt more like he was worrying about imaginary troubles. That. Hey, little despot. Dao Wuji saw that the little despot had also ditched him for his room. He looked around at the empty courtyard before pitifully leaving while drooping his head. After resting the night, everybody felt more energized the next day. After toiling for so many days, Mentor Wags gave everybody the day off, letting them do as they pleased. Those who wanted to continue resting in the courtyard lay in their rooms, while those who wanted to go out joined up with others to go explore. As Qi Xiu Anxiun wasn't one to laze around, she immediately dragged Kiao Mu along when she heard that they had leisure time. She planned to take a casual stroll around this godsend academy. We destroyed the zombies entire underground base in Mount Tai this time. Say, will we get a reward? Kiao Mu was contemplating over something and didn't respond. It wasn't until Qi Xiu Anxiun yanked her arm that she returned to the present. She gave him and looked at Qi Xiu Anxiuan. Tut, I said so much yet your mind was actually wandering off the whole time. Qi Xiu Anxiuan eyed her exasperatedly. What were you thinking about? Kiao Mu was thinking about Fan Kaiyu. Slash what virtues and abilities did Fan Kaiyu possess to be able to build such a large zombie breeding ground underneath Mount Tai? Question mark slash. Slash could it be he was part of this Heavenly Fate organization? Question mark slash. If Fan Kaiyu was part of Heavenly Fate, then everything seemed to make sense. Heavenly Fate, this heretical cult had always taken human beings to be their research subjects. Chapter 1942, Chapter 388, Unexpectedly, putting it simply, what Heavenly Fate had been doing was researching the human body and creating superhumans. Instead of calling what the Night Corps birds had been transmitting poison, you might as well call it drugs to stimulate changes to the human body. It was survival of the fittest in natural selection. In the end, each subsequent transmission of the drug would breed the strongest person. Those who adapted would evolve more rapidly, while those who didn't could probably only turn into zombies as a foundation. From the looks of it, the experiments Fan Kaiyu conducted on a small scale had similar purpose to Heavenly Fate's deeds. They were both researching the human body. However, Fan Kaiyu was probably only doing research for his own benefit. He wanted to obtain information on how to become strong from other people's bodies. This included how to augment one's inner world and spiritual conscious, etc. That's why he cooped up in that underground prison the entire time to nurture puppet dolls that belonged to him. There was most likely no question about it that Fan Kaiyu belonged to Heavenly Fate, but Kiao Mu wasn't clear on whose jurisdiction Fan Kaiyu was under. It seemed that setting out for Clear Sky Gorge was a pressing issue, but the competition concerned the sapling's life, so she could not be complacent either. Kiao Kiao? Chi Xiu Anxiuan saw that Kiao Mu had lowered her head, but she didn't want to cut off the latter's train of thought. However, there was a group of people blocking their path at the moment, so Chi Xiu Anxiuan had no choice but to alert Kiao Mu by pulling on the latter's sleeve. 
Kiao Mu turned to look at Qi Xuanxuan. Are we heading back? Qi Xuanxuan shook her head. No, Kiao Kiao, look. Qi Xuanxuan tugged Kiao Mu's sleeve and pointed up ahead at the group of people blocking the wide path. The paths in Godsend Academy were quite spacious. It wasn't a problem for five to six people to walk abreast. However, ten or so people had spread out and blocked their way. What business do you have? Kiao Mu furrowed her brows. One cyan clothed girl stepped up and looked Kiao Mu up and down before asking, Ah, are you that grand talisman practitioner who can draw storage talismans? Kiao Mu creased her brows as she sized up that girl. She asked with a stoic face, So, your excellency, can you draw me a storage talisman? This girl suddenly knelt down in front of Kiao Mu and crossed her hands in front of her chest. She exclaimed agitatedly with yearning eyes, I am willing, willing to use spiritual weapons or medicinal materials and the like to exchange. Will your excellency please bestow me with a storage talisman? Kiao Mu was embarrassed. The little lady had thought that there was yet again people who lacked sense and came to make trouble. She was puzzled as to how she had made enemies with people in Godsend Academy. Will your excellency please bestow me with a storage talisman? The ten or so people all knelt down together and cupped their hands pleadingly. Chi Xuanxuan's mouth twitched non-stop, slash sheet, she had also thought that they had come to look for trouble, yet who knew that it was just a bunch of clowns exclamation mark slash. Your Excellency. Please agree, Your Excellency. Kiao Mu expressionlessly looked up at the sky and posed a look of contemplation. As storage talismans rival the power of creation, it is extremely difficult to draw. 2. We understand, we understand, we understand. The group of people nodded repeatedly and spoke excitedly. We are willing to wait in a queue. One month, three months or a year is all okay. Please do not refuse us, Your Excellency. Just tell us what you want, Your Excellency. Kiao Mu nodded, then wait a bit, I'll draft up a list of items for exchange. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Your Excellency. Chapter 1943, Great Master Kiao. Great Master, if you need any item or material, just say the word. We humble ones will definitely, ah, be meticulous, thorough and help Great Master properly take care of everything. MHM. The little stoic gave an enigmatic MHM as she nodded with her hands behind her back. The group of people frantically took out the tables, chairs, stools, benches, as well as stationery they had prepared prior for Kiao Mu to draft up a list of materials to exchange for storage talismans. They held the list like a treasure and formed a more concrete idea after looking it over. They planned to pool their resources to exchange one storage talisman first. The list will change every month, so it might not be these materials the next time. The little stoic stated, sign up with her and gather the materials you signed up for within a month. It will not be accepted otherwise. Chi Xuanxuan pointed at the gaping classmate Chi Xuanxuan before gliding away with a flick of her sleeve. The group of people instantly flooded around Chi Xuanxuan and blocked her from leaving. Classmate Chi Xuanxuan looked dazedly at the little stoic who had ran off and ditched her. She criticized with a mixed expression, slash freak. You sure you're not running off because you find it troublesome? Sure enough, a great master has the bearing of one. A female student from Godsend Academy praised in admiration, we have to pool together our money for at least one material. I heard that storage talismans crafted by a great master are extremely large. Too amazing. The group surrounded classmate Chi Xuanxuan, who wanted to cry, and prattled half the day away. At this moment, Kiao Mu had long slipped away back to their small courtyard. She encountered Mo Lian and Feng Chen who just so happened to leaving the former's room. Miss Kiao bounded forward happily. Let's go. Didn't you go out with Qi Xuanxuan? Feng Chen glanced behind her curiously. Where did you ditch Qi Xuanxuan? She's very busy. As a great master's assistant, she needs to take care of some miscellaneous tasks. Great master? The two men looked at her. Which great master? The little stoic patted her own chest. Great master Kiao, PFFT. Crown Prince Mo and the venerable Beach Blossom Immortal broke out in laughter. Knowing the little lady's disposition, the two people immediately understood that Chi Xuanxuan, this poor kid, had most likely gotten duped by Ms. Kiao. 
Crown Prince Mo hooked on to her petite fingers in amusement. Let's go. The trio exited the courtyard and walked toward the terrace by the water in Godsend Academy's flower garden. Slash look at this academy. Slash when Kiyam Yu thought back on their dilapidated Apex Academy, she couldn't resist crying tears of sympathy. Don't say it. The name Apex Academy was rather striking, yet the facilities, buildings, and reputation couldn't even compare to a third-rate academy from the six prefectures continent. At least the third-rate academy had a plaque or a gateway arch and the like. The students' dorms also wouldn't be like theirs, which was just a clump of dirt that had nothing. Kiaomu shook her head and saw three to four students hurrying over toward them. One of them shouted excitedly, Quick! Quick, go and check out the arena. It's said that the two senior sisters in the third year are duking it out the today publicly. Which two from the third year? One girl nearly bumped into Kiao Mu's shoulder in her excitement. Crown Prince Mo had a sharp eye and pulled his little wife into his arms to avoid it. Chapter 1944, Life and Death Contract That girl was startled and turned around to apologize. However, she was stunned by the sight of the trio. These three people's appearances were truly too, too, too outstanding. A simple glance showed Crown Prince Mo's casual, but regal black clothes, contrasting against the venerable Beach Blossom Immortal's devilish red robe. They were simply unrivaled and unparalleled. In front of them also stood a girl whose delicate features seemed to be chiseled from a block of icy jade. That female student smiled in embarrassment when she saw them looking over. Apologies, I almost bumped into you. Kiao Mu shook her head to show that she was fine. That female student smiled. But just as she was about to leave, she suddenly turned and said, You are, uh, students from other academies, right? If you're free you can come with us to the arena. There are two senior sisters competing there today, and it should be quite exciting. Kiao Mu nodded. That female student glanced at them again before leaving hurriedly. Kiao Mu pursed her petite mouth. It's not like I like watching the excitement. Fifteen minutes later, the trio stood in front of the arena, occupying favorable positions. Kiao Mu curved her eyes as she looked at the two females who were clashing swords on the stage. She clicked her tongue and said, what kind of deep enmity can they have as classmates for them to execute such sharp moves? The Miss Kiao, who did not like to watch the excitement, whipped out an orange and peeled it as she commented, Isn't this attack of hers too fierce? Fang Chen and Crown Prince Mo were both a bit helpless. It is a life and death battle after all. It's either you die or I die. What? Miss Kiao widened her eyes. The academy even allows life and death battles. Please excuse her ignorance. Their academy only had eight students, and they were all very friendly. She had never heard before that students could engage in life and death battles. MHM, look, there's a life and death contract over there. Fang Chen gestured with his chin. Kiao Mu redirected her gaze and discovered a piece of bright red paper pasted to the board at the edge of the arena. It was titled Life and Death Contract and it was sealed with the two parties' blood too. Miss Kiao paused in peeling her orange and looked woodenly at the two young ladies on the stage. She lamented with a shake of her head. It's quite a pity. Fang Chen took half of the orange from her hands and said while snacking on it, what is there to pity? In the end, it's all destiny. Since they were the ones who signed the life and death contract, then they must follow heavenly law's rules. Even if they don't want to, one of them must die. Miss Kiao blinked. That means only if one of them dies will there be a true victor? Smart. Crown Prince Mo praised with a nod as he took the other half of the orange. Miss Kiao looked down and found her hands empty. The orange she had peeled had ended up in other people's mouths. My master said that it's best to snack while watching competitions. That way you'll be in a better mood. Miss Giao suddenly remarked. She then took out a banana from her inner world. Is that her excellency Xiu An Huang? Crown Prince Mo inquired in slight surprise. MHM, you remember? Mo Lian couldn't resist asking softly. Remember what? Ah, no. Kiao Mu shook her head bitterly, it's just that I will occasionally recall that Master had said this before. You'll slowly remember. Crown Prince Mo caressed her head. At this moment, victory had been determined on the stage. Precisely speaking, one of the females had dropped to the ground dead, 
Chapter 1945, It's Impossible. The life and death contract hanging in front of the stage spontaneously combusted into ashes. Kiao Mu gazed at the young lady who died on the stage and shook her head. A familiar voice suddenly entered her ears. Hey, hey, this young senior sister, can you tell me what kind of deep enmity these two senior sisters had to fight a life and death battle in the arena? Sigh, brother little fatty you might laugh hearing about it. These two senior sisters liked the same senior brother at the same time, but that senior brother was wavering between the two of them. As a result, these two senior sisters made this arrangement to fight for that man. Wow, your academy even encourages students to become couples? Brother little fatty, don't slander us. Of course the academy doesn't encourage this. Come here, come here. You can't tell anyone else what I'm about to tell you. Kiaomu stretched her neck and glimpsed the little fatty being surrounded by three to four fashionably dressed young senior sisters. He had gone with them to the side to chat and probe them for information. She instantly could somewhat understand why Kui Hongs and that guy hated the little fatty so much. There was no doubt about it, even though the chatty little fatty was a bit pudgy, his round and plump face was rather cute, which was much adored by older females. 1. The little fatty had always been rather popular with the ladies. Kiaomu turned to say to Crown Prince Mo and Feng Chen. Let's head back. They had finished watching the excitement. It was crowded here, and there wasn't anything else fun happening. Not long after the three of them squeezed their way out of the crowd, another male and female started exchanging moves on the stage to compare notes. The atmosphere in the arena started getting stirred up again. Senior Sister Yagui, what are you looking at? Jiang Chi walked up to Yu Gui and asked in a low voice. When she came over, she saw Yu Gui standing outside the crowd and dumbly looking in one direction in some kind of stupor. Yu Gui was startled. She recovered her wits and said with a shake of her head, Ha, huh, it was probably my imagination. It's impossible. Let's go. What's impossible? What did you see exactly? Yu Gui larted bitterly. When I came over just now, my eyes was probably playing tricks on me, and I mistook someone's back silhouette to be little junior sisters. Little junior sister? Jiang Chi mumbled to herself and sighed. Little junior sister should be 15 this year, right? MHM, Yu Gui replied softly. Even though little junior sister is naturally gifted, she must walk the heaven ascension stairs to get to the six prefectures continent from the lower star domain. No matter how talented she is, it is impossible for her to come in three years' time. Yeah? Jiang Chi nodded. Senior sister, we have to go back to prepare too. The mentor just came to notify us that we'll be leaving tomorrow at seven in the morning. Okay. Yu Gui turned around and said, let's go. We need to make thorough preparations. This time, we must obtain the qualifications to cultivate on Blinchit Island. This meant that all of them needed to make it onto the academy competition's individual top 100 ranking. They carried a debt of blood and urgently needed to improve. Time waited for no one. Only by working hard non-stop would they not disappoint the sect's grace and training. When Kiao Mu, Mo Lian, and Feng Chen opened the door to their small courtyard, they saw that the five mentors had gathered at the stone table waiting for them. Qi Xiu Anxiuan looked at her pitifully and looked as if she had gone through the ringer. Chapter 1946, I am not a restaurant. Juan Mu, Ma Ah, and the others were also standing in front of the stone table. Besides the little fatty, who was possibly still chatting with the young senior sisters, the other people were all present. I received a notice that tomorrow, Godsend Academy's team will be heading to the next round's grounds first. The other academies will be heading over a bit later, at noon. Wags swept them a glance. So everyone, make preparations tonight and rest well. Everybody nodded. Zudanjin glanced at them and asked suspiciously, where's Fatty? How come I didn't see him the whole day? Everybody silently exchanged glances, with no one saying a word. All right. You've all let yourselves go for a day. Rest earlier and don't stir up trouble. Fill in Fatty when he returns. All of you go rest now. Everybody looked up at the clear sky. Strictly speaking, it was still just afternoon right now. Yet Mentor Wags said that they had let themselves go the entire day already and was shooing them to their rooms to rest. Do you want to eat a good meal tonight? 
Kiao Mu suddenly spoke up, Zudanjin was nearly about to drool thinking about the dishes the little fellow took out last time. He nodded continuously and shouted, yes, 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 I'm ordering a dish, beggar's chicken one. I wanted simmer fried pork ribs. I I want winter melon. Me, me, me. I want to eat prawns, prawns. Xuanxuan, this foodie wanted to drool thinking about fried prawns. The little stoic rolled her eyes expressionlessly and harumphed. She muttered I'm not a restaurant before pattering back to her room. We'll be resting earlier, so it won't be good for digestion if you eat too much. Slash you. Slash everybody wrung their hands as they watched her go. They really wanted to gang up on this little fellow. Slash how come you're the one who suggested adding dishes? Yet you decide to not do it, weren't you just playing a joke on them exclamation mark slash. Crown Prince Mo waved his hand in amusement and returned to his room. At dusk, everybody took out the white mantis from their pockets with deep sighs and planned to just make do with a bit of salted veggies for a meal. They didn't expect to hear the little stoic call out crisply. You guys aren't coming out to eat dinner. Everybody was in a mad rush to be the first out the door and they saw the abundant dishes on the stone table. Afterwards, they saw that abominable little stoic who was wearing casual blue-green clothes looking expressionlessly at them with Crown Prince Mo sitting next to her at the stone table. Xuang Xuan's fried prawns, Marta's simmer fried pork ribs, and senior brother Lu's winter melon soup. Mentor Zhu's beggar's chicken slash wow. Ordering dishes really worked exclamation mark slash. Everybody rushed forward and felt so ecstatic that they were about to fly. The little fatty arrived fashionably late. When he pushed open the courtyard doors, he saw everybody snatching up food around the stone table, their chopsticks moving in a flurry. He quickly shut the doors behind him and bolted forward with a wail. Oh my goodness. How come you didn't wait for me to start eating? Who knows how long you were gonna chat with the young senior sisters for? Ayya, hey, uh, shoo, 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 shoo. Make space for me. Stop pushing. There's enough for everybody. Kiyamu looked speechlessly at these bunch of ravenous hungry ghosts and raised her hand. Make some space. Afterwards, she took out a large pot of soup the size of a basin. It was filled with pork soup stewed with spiritual bamboo shoots. The dense scent of spiritual energy permeated the small courtyard. Oh my heavens. Move aside, I'm getting the first bowl. The little fatty yelled and snatched up the ladle to fill up a bowl to the brim. He showered the soup with praise as he sipped from the bowl in his hands. Chapter 1947, Even a Tiger Does Not Eat Its Own Cubs. Hey! Yeo Kiao, what kind of bamboo shoot is this? I feel spiritual energy coursing through my body after eating it. If I stuff myself until bursting today, who will go on a stroll with me later? Then why are you still eating? I'll digest the food after eating it. Yeo Kiao, you're like a genie and take out whatever we want. We only need to bring you along wherever we go. Right, right, we don't need to bring anything else. Kiao Mu gave the little fatty an apathetic look. In your dreams, everybody ate to their heart's content, and even the usually taciturn mentor Waigzu showed a faint, but rare smile. Annie Prefecture. The Prefecture Lord, Guan Zotang, looked down coldly at his bedridden fourth daughter with a callous frown. Prefecture Lord. A middle-aged man strode inside and cupped his hands in greeting. How come the fourth young lady returned so suddenly? The Guan family's fourth young lady had gone to Poland Prefecture's Mount Tai to represent Jiaqing Academy in the preliminaries. It shocked everybody when she returned abruptly with serious injuries. What a good for nothing. Guan Zotang snorted, she's not meant for the big stage. The middle-aged man, Chi Lianhai, silently examined the bedridden young lady. It was not possible to make out Guan Yiying's original appearance. The majority of her face looked like it had ruptured with the flesh turning outward. Her eyes had also turned into two eye sockets, with no eyeballs to be seen. It's no use to keep such trash. Guan Zotang ordered unfeelingly, dispose of her. Yes, prefecture lord. Chi Lianhai responded in a low voice. He couldn't avoid sighing with emotion on the inside. After struggling for her life, the fourth young lady made a last ditch effort to contact them to activate a special passageway for her to come back. Yet in the end, 
she couldn't escape the tragedy of being disposed of as trash. Guan Zhaodang had six daughters and three sons. He was also in his prime and had a whole entourage of wives and concubines. Would he lack sons and daughters? He naturally wouldn't support a piece of trash to disgust himself. In that case, she might as well have died outside. Chi Lianhai shook his head. After watching Guan Zhaodang leave with a frosty expression, he walked up and cupped his hands toward the fourth young lady, who was still somewhat conscious. Apologies, fourth young lady. Chi Lianhai reached out and gripped Guan Yang's neck. He ejected spiritual energy from his palm and maintained his grip on Guan Yang for several moments. Guan Yang's struggle lasted less than three seconds. Her flailing legs slowly slackened until she completely ceased breathing. Chi Lianhai straightened his collar and turned to walk out the door. He cupped his hands while reporting to Guan Zotang who was standing at the door with his back toward him. Prefectural Lord, it's been taken care of. Do you want this subordinate to dispatch people to Poland Prefecture to investigate the situation? Guan Zhaodang snorted. Even though Little Fourth is a useless good for nothing, she is still my daughter. This Prefecture Lord will naturally make whoever made her this way pay the price. One. Understood. Chi Lianhai walked out and immediately went to gather people. Daughter, daughter. A mournful shriek came from outside the door, and a pretty woman with small white flowers adorning her hair stumbled into the room. She grabbed Guan Zhaodang's sleeve. My lord, this wife heard that Yang just returned with heavy injuries. Can this wife? Guan Zhaodang pulled back his sleeve in irritation. Go see her for the last time and then select a date for cremation. 1. That woman instantly paled and flopped to the ground. Chapter 1948 poaching. The second round of the academy's ranking competition was set to be held at the Shenghua Battle Arena of Great Shenghua City, the city nearest to the waters around Blinsheet Island. In past years, the second and final rounds of the academy ranking competition were mostly held at Shenghua Battle Arena. For one, it was tradition. Secondly, since Great Shenghua was not under the six prefectures jurisdiction, the referees at Shenghua Battle Arena would be impartial. Three. It was in a prime location. After the competition ended, the victorious students would immediately be able to board a boat for Blinsheet Island. The participating students were all from teams that distinguished themselves after the first round of preliminaries. Everyone was naturally proud. By the time Zudanjin and Apex Academy's students hurried to Great Shenghua City, it was already nearly midday of the second day. Their group had to first deal with lodging. The inn they picked was naturally near the Shenghua Battle Arena. That way, it would be more convenient to go to and from their matches each day. There were a lot of inns around Shenghua Battle Arena. So when it came time for the ranking competition was when every inn racked their brains to attract guests. Kiao Mu and them found a rather large inn and reserved all the rooms on the entire third floor. That way. Everybody would be able to relax more comfortably. Amping in also provided food, but it was extremely pricey. After trying the dinner they offered, everyone unanimously decided that they weren't going to waste their spirit currency. It was better to eat Miss Giao's food. The day after, everybody dressed and gathered bright and early on the first floor of the inn in high spirits. The sound of steps continued from the stairs. A lot of teams had come down from the second floor and some students glanced curiously at Kiao Mu and them. They had already heard when they checked in that a filthy rich academy had reserved the entire third floor. So it was them, ha ha, DSK. Isn't this mentor Waigzu? I really didn't expect a lousy academy like Apex Academy would actually have the resolution to reserve the entire third floor. You must have borrowed money. A slightly piercing voice came from the bottom of the stairs. Mentor Waigzu, Zidanjin and the other mentors just so happened to walk down the stairs. Their expressions immediately darkened when they saw the young man who ridiculed them. Kiao Mu and company naturally did not know the man who was mocking them. She sized him up and saw that the man had regular facial features, but his eyes were filled with taunts when he looked at Mentor Waigzu. Zhao Li. Mentor Waigzu spoke in a deep voice. You have no right to concern yourself with Apex Academy's matters. Scram aside. On the other hand, Kiao Mu and the other students were a bit superioried. From their understanding, even though Mentor Waigzu was taciturn and sometimes even silver-tongued, he definitely did not treat people this rudely. 
It looked like this man called Zhao Li had a considerable conflict with mentor Wai Zhu. Zhao Li turned a deaf ear to Wai Zhu's scolding. He even shrugged his shoulders lackadaisically. Luckily I left your Apex Academy early, otherwise, yo, isn't this the number one prodigy of the Academy, Duan Mu King? Tut, you're still in the Academy. Ah, right. You guys have to accumulate 3000 credits in one year in order to graduate, otherwise, You'll have to keep studying without taking breaks. How could I forget this? Zhao Li laughed out loud as he walked up to Juan Mu King and put a hand on his shoulder. Juan Mu, have you considered switching over to another academy? Juan Mu King slapped his hand away. Chapter 1949 What you say doesn't count. I'm not familiar with you. Juan Mu King spoke indifferently. Ha ha ha. Zhao Li did not get angry. He carelessly crossed his arms and gave the people from Apex Academy a sidelong glance. Yo, seems like the number of students have increased considerably. Eh? Are these two junior sisters new to Apex Academy? You two are young, so don't get tricked by Apex Academy. Don't think that this academy is top notch in the six prefectures continent just because it is called Apex. In reality, this academy is in the very last place of all the academies. Boom. Because that person was nearly spitting in her and Chi Xuanxuan's faces while making his speech, Kiao Mu immediately threw a kick in distaste, directly knocking him several steps backward. Stay away from us. Kiao Mu wiped her petite face with her sleeve in a huff. You're filthy and stinky. You can't even control your saliva when you're an adult. Scram, 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 everyone. Zhao Li's face promptly flushed bright red in chagrin. Even though his looks weren't all that outstanding, his cultivation was very solid. All the female students at Katkin Academy fought over him. He had never gotten snubbed by a girl like this. Slash was this person still a girl? Did she have any eye of discernment? Exclamation mark slash. Kiao Mu was someone who even considered the handsome young Sir Ding to be stinky and loathed the two peerless young Sirs from the Kin family very much, let alone this man in front of her with ordinary features. In Miss Kiao's eyes, this baffling blabbermouth was jabbering away in front of her and Xuanxuan. He was even noisier than Dao Wuji. He was simply a dumb SS. Crown Prince Mo silently twitched his mouth. Everybody offered their sympathies to Zhao Li in their minds. Slash so pitiful exclamation mark slash. Weren't you just asking to get snubbed by looking for trouble with Gye Okiao? You, you. The back of Zhao Li's calf hurt from the stoic faced lady's kick but he couldn't bend down to massage it at the moment due to his pride. He could only stiffen his face. He glared at Kiao Mu and berated, you don't know what's good for you. This young sir was only giving a kind reminder, persuading you both to not take a roundabout route. You think this Apex Academy can really rise to the top of the six prefectures? Are you the one who decides who's at the top of the six prefectures? What you say doesn't count. You'll see after competition. So noisy and long-winded, not to mention it's all nonsense. Where did this big idiot come from? Scram. Kiao Mu hollered, Chi Xuanxuan and the little fatty both took up their weapons at the same time and looked like they were about to go clobber Zhao Li. This caused Zhao Li to back away in fright. He felt like he couldn't communicate with these crazy Apex Academy students at all. Slash how the fuck could the young students now just attack at the drop of a deet question mark slash. I, I couldn't care less about talking to you. You'll definitely suffer in the future. Zhao Li's face was red from anger and he flung his sleeves to leave in indignation. Just as he was about to step out the door, his left leg turned limp, and he knelt forward with a wham. His forehead knocked heavily against the threshold, which made a red mark on the spot. The teams that had gathered at the door and were planning to go out jumped in surprise at his movements. Afterwards, they started laughing uproariously. A female student from one of the other academies convulsed with laughter. She pointed at Zhao Li, who was kneeling on the ground with a bright red face, and said, Oh my, the little lady really is correct. Is this not a big idiot or what? Chapter 1950, Reason Senior Brother Zhao Galulai, the leader of his academy's team, hastily ordered people to help Zhao Li up. He hobbled out the door with their assistance. Before leaving, he turned back to glare at Kiao Mu and the others. He declared, does Apex Academy accept Katkin Academy's challenge for this competition? You don't have the qualifications. 
Kiao Mu swept him a frigid look. Who do you think you, as a minor spiritual cultivator, are to challenge me? Beat it. Everybody couldn't smile anymore. Slash the fact that the stoic faced little lady could say this meant that her actual strength was much higher than a level 1 spiritual cultivator. Slash. Since she dared to so arrogantly tell him, a level 1 spiritual cultivator, to scram, it most likely meant that. It was impossible for anyone who didn't have the ability to do such a thing. You people. Galuli simply burst with anger. She glared hatefully at the group from Apex Academy before helping Zhaoli out with their tails between their legs. A bunch of baffling people. Chi Xiu Anxiuan pursed her lips and turned to Zhu Danjin, whose expression was unreadable. Mentor, who are they exactly? Zhu Danjin sighed. We'll talk on the way. Since today was the first day of the second round, it wouldn't be too good to be late. After exiting and ping in, Zudanjin glanced at mentor Waigzu, who was in the back of the group, before asking Kiao Mu and the other students, classmate Kiao, at the beginning, you must have thought that mentor Waigzu was targeting you the whole time, right? Kiao Mu nodded without any hesitation. Slash that was correct. If not for her good temper, she would have given this whatever mentor Waigzu a nice beating a long time ago exclamation mark slash. Zudanjin was speechless at this honest child. Actually, your mentor Waigzu had once taken a very talented student. However, because this student came from a wealthy patrician family, he was very arrogant. Later on, because he despised our shabby academy, he betrayed our academy during an extremely important competition. From then on, your mentor Waigzu became demoralized, also turning taciturn. That's why we value students' character and not their talents when we select students now. Miss Kiao, you have too good a background. You were riding an ancient phoenix when you first ascended our academy peak. Zudanjin eyed her and continued. Everybody was fully aware that you definitely hailed from an ordinary family clan. Wait, let me interrupt. Kiao Mu couldn't resist cutting in. I don't have any family background. I'm only a child from a small clan in the lower star domain who went through a lot of hardship. All right, you can continue now, everyone. Slash how come they wanted so much to laugh? Question mark slash slash the were clearly on a very solemn topic right now exclamation mark slash mentors it twitched his mouth speechlessly. He naturally didn't want to bicker with this kid on whether she had a profound family background, so he continued. You picked a fight with classmate Hua Tao the first time you came to our academy. Upon the mention of this incident, Hua Tao couldn't help covering his face. Slash could they not bring up this embarrassing matter again? Question mark slash. That arrogance, and that, that imposing manner characteristic of a spoiled young lady from a famed clan, made your mentor Wai Xu associate you with that classmate who defected from the academy. Of course, you all know now this person is Zhao Li who had come to provoke us earlier. He is from the Shanshan Prefecture's Zhao clan. In Shanshan Prefecture, their Zhao clan can be considered a first-class patrician family. Chapter 1951, The Second Round Back then, he came to enroll because of young Sir Liu Yun, seeking to become his closed-door disciple. Wait, let me interrupt too. Chi Xiu and blurted out, are you talking about that young Sir Liu Yun who is famed throughout the six prefectures continent? I seem to only have read a bit about his legends in storybooks. I heard a bit from storytellers, the little fatty said while raising his hand. Zudanjin nodded, but he didn't see young Sir Liu Yun for a year and a half after that. Therefore, he, oh right, you guys still don't know. Right? Young Sir Liu Yun is actually your extremely elusive Dean who comes and goes like a shadow. Zudanjin explained this when he recalled that the group of kids might not know who young Sir Liu Yun really was. The group instantly revealed expressions of disbelief. What? You're saying that the number one expert of the six prefectures, young Sir Liu Yun, is our dean? The little fatty was incredulous. Slash so that classmate Zhao Li who had come looking for trouble just now had run off because he didn't see the dean after a year and a half question mark slash. Sigh because Zhao Li was actually rather talented, we mentors formulated a cultivation plan for him that would produce gradual results that supplemented his merits. Mentor Wai Xi had spent a lot of effort on Zhao Li's cultivation plan, so that Punk's sudden defection truly hurt your mentor Wai Xi deeply. Shut up, Zidanjin. 
Wagzu's chagrined voice came from the back. Zudanjin sped up his talking pace. In short, Mentor Y actually wasn't born with a stern expression, so do show understanding. Classmate Kiao, Mentor Wagzu only wants to temper your character and suppress your ego. Frankly speaking, it is also in consideration of your future cultivation journey. Don't think that he is purposely targeting you, Zidanjin. Fine, 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 I won't say any more, I'm not saying anything. Zidanjin immediately shut his mouth. He walked to the side with a smile and started his daily chatter. Students, we'll be relying on you in the second round to win honor for our academy. Everybody looked at him silently before simultaneously turning their heads away. Mentor Zhu was helpless at this. When he saw Daoji and company's gazes, he laughed awkwardly. The dean is correct. This batch of students are full of spirit. It only required a 15-minute walk to get from Anping into Shenghua Battle Arena. By the time they got to the battle arena, the people in charge of the competition were sitting at the door. The three of them were experienced at organizing competitions. All these years, they would basically host competitions of all sizes that involved the six prefectures academies in this battle arena. That's why these people in charge of the battle arena were also rather familiar with the mentors from the various academies. Ah, Mentor Zhu and Mentor Y from Apex Academy have come. One person strode up and cupped his hands toward everybody with a smile. Quickly coming. We have already arranged your seats. Thank you. Zudanjin naturally cupped his hands toward him in return. Elder Hong is the head judge in charge of the competition this time. Other than that, the other things you need to keep note of are written in the rules, so please look at that. The person in charge handed Mentor Zhu a red piece of paper with the rules and regulations. After that, he beckoned for a boy servant to lead their group inside. Zudanjin nodded in thanks. Chapter 1952, Gyeokiao, you go up. After entering the circular battle arena, a noisy clamor filled their ears. That boy servant led them to the seating area and bowed respectfully to Zudanjin. Mentor Zu, your party can sit here. Additionally, the first lot will be drawn in one hour. You can send one student up to the stage to draw the lot. Since you are clear on the competition rules, this humble one will not repeat them. Oh, oh, okay. This humble one will dismiss himself. If you need anything such as fruit and dessert, you can head to the purchase area over there for something quick. The boy servant pointed at the edge of the circular seating area. Everybody couldn't help but be exasperated at what they saw. It turned out that the big shots wanted to do business during the battle arena this year. The seating area was set up with a purchase area. Upon a glance, there were melons, snacks, and fruits. The food there was rather abundant. It was just that the price, um, because you had to use materials for this exchange, not many people were going to buy. Everybody sat down. Mentor Zhu skimmed through that sheet of paper listing the rules and told everybody after a bit, these rules are about the same as last year's. The second round is a match between academies. In short, you have to send a student to the stage every day to draw lots. Academies with the same lot number will compete in a match. Afterwards, once there are less than 300 academy teams remaining, the competition will enter its final stage. There will be new rules again once students send to the final stage. With so many academies, I reckon that we will need 10 or so days for the second round to finish. It was also taken care of in 7 days in past years. Zudanjin finished his sentence and turned to look at Kiao Mu. Classmate Kiao, you go up and draw a lot. Kiao Mu eyed Mentor Zhu with an indescribable expression. Reason. The reason is very simple. Mentor Zhu's face creased up from smiling like a flower. He laughed. Everybody knows it. It's just three characters. You're lucky, everyone. Slash wouldn't Mentor Wags make up four characters? Question mark slash. Mentor Zhu looked at Kiao Mu with a smile. Classmate Kiao, what do you think? Nothing much. Kiao Mu spoke nonchalantly, truthfully speaking, my luck has always been erratic. I might possibly draw the strongest team as our opponent. Which academy has the strongest team? That would be the top three of last year's competition, of course. Godsend Academy, Jieking Academy, and Sunlight Academy. Aren't they very strong? Chi Xiu Anxuan was surprised. They weren't too clear on Godsend Academy's strength, 
but Kiyoki Ao had practically eliminated Jie King Academy when they were in the underground base. Jie King Academy doesn't only have Guan Yang's team. Mentor Zhu wagged his finger. Jie King Academy was the runner-up of last time's ranking competition. Their captain, Li Nanshan, possesses great individual strength. Last time I saw him, he had already broken through the level 10 Grand Spiritual Cultivator Barrier. Li Nanshan ranks third on the individual ranking which shows how strong he is. If you small fry run into Li Nanshan's team on the stage, listen to me and quickly surrender, Zudanjin said while pursing his lips. Mentor, what kind of unlucky things are you saying? Mata shouted unexpectedly, which nearly made Zudanjin jump, slash Fook. This brat had shouted straight at his ear. Slash. Mentor, we will definitely do our best to win honor for our academy. Chapter 1953 a gang fight? Zudanjin was gratified as he looked at his students. Slash the dean was right. They are indeed a group of spirited young apostrophe uns exclamation mark slash. Okay then students. Your mentors meteoric rise and the academies standing in the six prefectures continent all depends on you. Zudanjin said with a smile before turning to Kiao Mu. Classmate Kiao, we came to an agreement. Right. It's almost your turn to draw lots. Kiao Kiao, help up draw a lot. Everybody ardently grabbed her petite hands. Kiao Mu looked at them expressionlessly. She thought her classmates would say something inspiring. However, the little fatty shouted, the weakest team, PFFT. Cheeks you and burst out laughing and pushed the little fatty's hands away. She scolded jokingly, shoo, shoo. Chu, mentor, then what you're saying is that after we finish drawing lots, the two academies are going to have a gang fight? Kiao Mu blinked. Everybody inexplicably discovered that the little fellow's eyes were sparkling. Her expression got particularly amusing at the mention of gang fights. Beside them, mentor who waved his hand and explained with a smile, of course it won't be as simple as a group fight. Oh of course. It is possible if both academies agree to it. Normally, the two academies compete in a one on one battle. Of course, it can also be a one against many battle. We understand. Everybody nodded simultaneously and shifted their gaze to Juan Mu King. Then they just had to let Juan Mu go on later. Juan Mu King felt that the little fatty and the others were giving him questionable gazes and couldn't help but shudder. What are you guys looking at? Everybody shook their heads with good-natured smiles. Meanwhile, the battle arena's boy servant led several more teams in their direction. They nodded in acknowledgement as they passed by. The academies sitting in their area were normally those without much reputation. On the other hand, large academies like Sunlight Academy, Moonlight Academy, and GA King Academy sat in the front rows. There were 40 to 50 academies between their tiny corner and the first rows. Kiao Mu took out a bag of melon seeds and pastries. Yet before she could eat any of it, the people around her had already snatched it all. Miss Kiao looked down at her empty bag and turned to see Crown Prince Mo's smiling gaze. She put away the empty bag in a huff and took out an apple to munch on. After waiting for almost an hour, the entire circular seating area was basically full. A spirited elder getting on in years strode up to the battle stage in the center. He announced to the audience, All right, will the 677 academies that passed the preliminaries each send up a student representative to draw lots? The elder did not speak loudly, but each of his words penetrated the people's eardrums, so they heard him very clearly. Classmate Kiao, we're counting on you. Mata and the others shouted excitedly. When Kiao Mu stood up, she heard explosive roars from the front. Certain victory for Jie King Academy's classmate so and so. A perfect lot for Sunlight Academy's such and such. And the like. These shouts shook the heaven and earth. The little fatty suggested enthusiastically. Kiao Kiao, how about we also cheer for you? Right, 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 we'll chant Apex Academy. Shut up. Kiao Mu glared at them while sweating bullets. Her petite face flushed pink. Slash her face was burning from the embarrassment. Dot slash slash chant my SS. It would look so stupid exclamation mark slash. Chapter 1954. Trust to luck. Eh? Kiao Kiao's face is red. Before Mata could finish commenting, 
He got so frightened by the daggers Crown Prince Mo was shooting from his eyes that he swallowed the rest of what he had to say. Slash how preposterous. Only he could see his wife's red face exclamation mark slash. The venerable Peach Blossom Immortal was very down to earth as he cracked melon seeds next to Crown Prince Mo. He said, sigh. There should be a nice drama to watch this time. Kiao Mu trotted to the battle stage and bounded up the stairs with the rest of the crowd. With Crown Prince Mo and company's eyesight, they were naturally able to see the little lady standing at the edge of the battle stage. She was bored to death as she watched the other people squeeze inside with all their might, as if they would be able to draw lots earlier if they succeeded. This large battle stage was several hundred feet wide, so it wasn't crowded even with several hundred people congregating there. However, the fact that everybody was fervidly squeezing toward the middle made the people standing outside the crowd extremely eye-catching. All right, all right. Line up to draw lots one by one. The number of academies participating in the second round greatly exceeded the organizers' expectations. It would probably take 15 minutes for so many people to finish drawing lots one by one. Okay, line up properly and draw lots one by one. Do not hesitate or stop walking. If this old man discovers that you used your spiritual conscience to look at the contents of the lots, this will be viewed as cheating and be subject to disqualification. Everyone wanted to protest but the old man's warning caused the noisy clamor to go down. They quickly formed a line and walked toward the table with the lots. It was actually rather quick for everybody to draw lots. If anybody purposely halted along the way, they would be sure to receive the elder's warning gaze. Only after the people who finished drawing lots lined up apprehensively on the other side did stragglers like Kiao Mu walk forward. One young man said to Kiao Mu with a nod. Miss can go first. Kiao Mu shook her petite hand, gesturing for him to go first. Only after waiting for everybody to leave did she then absent-mindedly line up at the very end. Slash ha. Didn't Mentor Zu say that her luck was good. Dot slash. Well, she wasn't going to go along with what he wanted. Since she would be the last one, they would put trust to luck and let the heavens arrange whichever team as their opponent. Seeing her passive attitude, Mentor Zu decided that he wouldn't let her draw lots again tomorrow. As everybody finished drawing lots one by one, that young man also drew his lot. He turned to nod to her before walking to the side. Kiao Mu only then pursed her lips and walked up, pleased with herself. She stuck her petite hand in and fumbled about for a long time. Cough. It wasn't until she heard the elder's light cough that she looked up and stared at that grandpa. Where's the lot? The elder twitched his mouth and said in amusement, Little lady, you don't need to draw one. This old man said earlier that there are 677 academies competing this round, which naturally means one academy will get a buy. Congratulations, little lady, your academy gets a free pass to the next match. Everyone. Kiao Mu, the elder, slash why did this little lady have such an indescribable expression question mark slash. Classmate you, what's wrong? In the seating area, Godsend Academy's Xuxenran scrutinized Yugui, who was sitting beside her. She had been feeling that this classmate had a strange relationship with Jiang Qi in them. Chapter 1955 Luck has come. Xuxin renied Yugui and the other few people with suspicion. She still felt that there was something off about Yugui, Jiang Qi, Luling, and them. If you said that they had nothing to do with each other, the familiar gazes they inadvertently revealed made Xuxin believe that it was impossible for them not to know each other, but it you said that they were familiar, Yugui, Jiang Qi, and them spoke less than five sentences total in one day. That's why if they did know each other, they were too able to restrain themselves. Xuxenran sized up Yugui once again and interrogated persistently, What's wrong, classmate you? Your complexion looks a bit awful. Is your body fine? Do you feel uncomfortable anywhere? Yugui forcefully suppressed her ecstasy. She didn't need to turn her head to know what her junior sisters sitting behind her were feeling. Their eyes were shining as they struggled to peel their gazes from the stage, inch by inch. They suppressed their desire to rush back to the sect and tell everyone that their little junior sister has returned. Yugui gave Xuxinran an indifferent look and said coldly, Oh, 
I'm quite all right. Thank you classmate Xa for worrying. Xaxenron's expression sank. Slash DM in it, it was this lukewarm attitude again. Dot slash she got snubbed despite showing good intentions. She was a daughter of the Shin clan, so her birthright dictated that she was superior to other people. If she didn't see that Yugui and them were of decent talent, she would have loathed to rope them into her clan by any means necessary. Slash these cowards from the lower star domain were too shameless exclamation mark slash. She was willing to hold out an olive branch to them, yet these fellows didn't know what was good for them. Even though she didn't expect them to be carrying that olive branch everywhere like dogs, they were going against her now and hiding everything from her, their captain. Slash utterly preposterous exclamation mark slash. Xuxenrun swept Yugui and company a cold glance before secretly contemplating. Slash only when people get caught up in desperate straits do they realize an important a stroke of luck is dot slash. Yugui's group were destined to be dogs that she, Xuxenrun, could order about as she liked. Just they wait. A cold glint flitted across Xuxenrun's eyes. Meanwhile, on the battle stage, Elder Hong. The head judge in charge of drawing lots, looked up in surprise at this little lady who was wearing a complicated expression. Slash could it be that she wasn't happy or excited question mark slash slash this was getting a buy in the first match of the second round exclamation mark slash. At least, this would allow their entire team to save one to two days of combat power. On the other hand, the other academies might get dog tired today and tomorrow. The second match of the competition would continue but they slash wasn't this good question mark slash slash however the little lady's expression clearly showed that something was off dot slash little lady which academy do you belong to let this old man register this for you hong kai coughed lightly apex academy mentor zu jumped up and shouted at the top of his lungs from far away the elder Zudanjin delightfully waved his paw toward the little one in the center of the battle stage. He nodded in gratification, as expected of our classmate Kiao who overflows with luck. Crown Prince Mo and the venerable Beach Blossom immortal beside them couldn't resist laughing. From their understanding of the little fellow, this child had probably wanted to secretly dupe Mentor Zu, yet. The result turned out contrary to her wishes. Miss Kiao expressionlessly watched the elder finish her registration. He nodded at her and said, once again, congratulations on helping your academy pull a buy for the first match. Chapter 1956, difficult to withstand. Applause. Everybody, congratulations to this class made from Apex Academy with extremely good luck. Kiao Mu had mixed feelings under that stoic little face of hers. Everybody else below was clapping with all their might. It was possible to hear mentors as doltish shouts of good. Mixed in with the applause. All the people on the battle stage had indescribably expressions as they looked at this stoic faced little lady. Slash how come it was like this question mark slash slash if they had known that the last person would automatically get a buy. What the fuck had they been squeezing past each together for exclamation mark slash. In the end, their struggles couldn't even compare to the little lady leisurely standing at the back of the line. Classmate gay outside slash sure enough. It was all fate, without leaving humans any choice. Slash. She couldn't block her luck from coming at all. Next, will everybody find the person with the same number as you? Please line up in pairs. Everybody promptly sighed, and they continued to match numbers with each other. Kiao Mu also drooped her head and walked dejectedly off the battle stage. The remaining stuff really had nothing to do with her at all. The people in the seating area watched on curiously as this stoic-faced little lady walked down. Yugui's gaze was on the little lass the entire time. When she saw Kiao Mu skip past the stairs beside her, her hand that she had cupped around her knee clenched into a fist. Subsequently, her breathing became uneven. Slash they couldn't get agitated exclamation mark slash slash but how could she not be agitated question mark slash classmate you, are you fine? Xuxenrun couldn't help being surprised when she heard Yugui's breathing turn labored. Yugui lowered her head silently. She secretly decided that she would go seek out a little junior sister after leaving the Shenghua battle arena. When the little lady returned to Apex Academy's seating area, she got surrounded by a group of people. Everyone wanted to caress her head, 
but that was too many people. Yet who knew that Crown Prince Mo would abruptly snatch up Miss Kiao? Slash they couldn't touch exclamation mark slash slash how could they all touch his wife's head question mark slash sigh. Kiao Mu sighed and sat down reticently next to Crown Prince Mo. She pulled out a carrot and munched on it with a crunch. She felt a bit dejected. Slash look at Mentor Zhu's wide smiley face that made his face look like a chrysanthemum exclamation mark slash. Slash looking at him made her annoyed exclamation mark slash. Kiao Kiao. Zhu Danjin praised with a grin. Thanks for the trouble. Kiao Mu silently cast him a glance before dryly responding. I occasionally get more lucky. Slash don't worry, all her luck will be used up tomorrow exclamation mark slash. How is it occasionally? Mentor Zhu chortled, he trying to sound modest, right? Let me tell you, Kiao Kiao. Zhu Danjin squeezed next to Kiao Mu. Of course, there was still Crown Prince Mo between them. When Mentor Zhu saw the Crown Prince's chilling gaze, he coughed lightly and backed away with a smile. Our competition this time is decided by the lots you drew. I see that everybody definitely has no objections. No objections. No objections. Everybody shook their heads. If talking about luck, no one else would dare replace their Kiao Kiao as number one. Kiao Mu laughed sarcastically while maintaining her stoicness. Other than her voice which sounded like she was laughing. Her exquisite brows didn't even flinch. Everybody found the little lady's expression to be rather hilarious. Let's meet back with them later. Kiao Mu kept a straight face as she yanked at Mo Lian, who was next to her. Mo Lian immediately understood and stood up. Chapter 1957, Obstruction Since they didn't need to fight, why should she still waste her time here? She was naturally going to do whatever she needed to do. The young couple drifted away after flicking their sleeves. Feng Chen, the little despot, Dao Wuji, and the other third wheels naturally couldn't care less about staying here. Hence, they also left with the couple. Mentor Zi laughed awkwardly and scratched his nose. Ah. Uh, Everybody watch how other people fight in competitions. You'll be able to gather more experience by doing so. As the saying goes, you have to know yourself and the enemy in order to come out unscathed. Mentor Zhu speechlessly looked at the students who had turned around to discuss. All right, children, as long as you're happy. On the other side, Xixinrum turned her head with a frown. There was a huge mass of blackheads behind them. So she simply couldn't find what Yu Gui was looking at, but she was fully aware that Yu Gui's thoughts had wandered from the competition starting from earlier. Xixinren said coldly, Our academy is about to go up. Yu Gui, Jiang Qi, you people best concentrate. Don't get eliminated in the first match. A crisp laugh came from behind Xixinren. The young lady who spoke was in her early twenties. Her round face was full of smiles. She purposely tilted her head to act naive, as if she was only making a joke with no malice at all. Zhuang Meng, don't worry. We will definitely take responsibility for our own matches, Yu Gui responded. She then turned her head, not looking at Xixinren and them anymore. Zhuang Meng shrugged. Fine. Fine, I was only worrying about you guys. After all, even though we belong to different teams, our total points will be tallied together. Since Yu Gui didn't respond to her, Zhuang Meng didn't say anything more. In reality, Xixinren and Zhuang Meng were indeed worrying too much. Yu Gui and company's strength basically determined that they would be crushing the competition in the first few rounds of the semi finals. Soon, Yu Gui led Jiang Qi and them from the arena stage. They did not return to their seats and simultaneously headed out of the battle arena. Where are you going? Xixinren and Zhuang Meng's voices suddenly appeared behind everyone. They scrutinized the group. Since we finished our matches, we planned to take a walk outside, Luling responded quietly. MHM, it's rather stuffy in here. These two senior sisters, please pay more attention to your imminent matches. Xixinren smiled. I find that you all are very strange. You people couldn't be spies from another academy. No? Yu Gui's expression turned cold. What does Godsend Academy have that we would covet? Oh, is there not any? Godsend Academy's spiritual techniques are at Earth rank at the least. Who would covet those spiritual techniques? The little cannonball Fang Zhu sneered, you people only have that bit of discernment. Fang Zhu, pay attention to your attitude. Xixinren berated. What a joke, 
These bumpkins who came from the lower star domain thought that they had a broader scope than the natives of the six prefectures continent after living here for several years. A. Uh, everyone are schoolmates from the same academy. There is no need to fight. Shut up. You still act cute when you're so old already. You think that you really are cute just because the character Meng in your name means cute? Finding a release, the little cannonball made a direct attack. So disgusting. Your coquettish tone just makes me so squeamish every time. Sorry that I'm a woman and can't fall for your charms. You. These incisive words thoroughly beat down Zhuang Meng, and she was so enraged that her entire body shook. Chapter 1958, A Routine What's the ruckus? A middle-aged mentor from God Send Academy walked over with a stern expression. Mentor, they're leaving without permission. Yugui responded coldly, we have already concluded our matches. Does that make it okay? That mentor lectured without room for objection. You think that you can be arrogant after successfully winning the first match? We did not say that. Yugui looked straight at this middle-aged mentor with a frown. This mentor had always been standing on the side of the eldest young lady of the Shin clan. Compared to the Shin clan, Yugui and them had no background. If not for the fact that they were rather talented, how would they have the chance to be standing here representing their academy in this competition? Arrogant and complacent. You have no sense of team unity. The middle-aged mentor reprimanded sternly in a sanctimonious manner, even if you have already concluded your matches, can't you stay and watch Xenron's team compete? Your teammates are Xenron and them. I don't know what you are thinking all day to be so eccentric. You think about things you shouldn't, while you don't think about the things you should. Sit right back down. Pay attention to team unity in the future. Do not leave on your own again. The little cannonball Fangzi was about to explode from anger. Just as she was about to speak, Chen Hanzi stopped her by grasping her hand. Understood. Yugui nodded apathetically and cast a glance at Xuxinren and them who looked pleased with themselves. She led Liling. Fang Zhu and them back to their seats. That middle-aged mentor also followed them back in a huff. He glanced at Yu Gui and them from the corner of his eye. He couldn't help but fume in anger when he noticed their indifferent expressions. These students really couldn't be disciplined. Two days later, Apex Academy's spirited entrance into the arena attracted gazes from the other academies. Everybody whispered. Apex Academy really has fantastic luck. That's right. Look at their complexion. They didn't compete these two days. While on the other hand, we're still so tired after a night's rest. Just as Kiao Mu sat down, she heard Mentor Zhu's laugh which reminded her of the laughing Buddha. Hey hey hey, classmate Kiao, I'll have to trouble you to go up to draw lots again. Kiao Mu eyed Mentor Zhu before slowly getting up and trudging to the battle stage. After ascending the battle stage. She discovered that everybody was freaking holding up the corners, leaving the space in the center empty. Yesterday, those students who she observed standing at the edges with her were standing in the center. They gave her a helpless look. Yo, so these people learned their lessons. Kiao Mu's eyes flickered, and she walked up to the first spot as a matter of course. Since so many people wanted to fight over that free pass, she'd give it to them. Just as Kiao Mu took her place. She heard the elder's furious shout coming from next to her. What are you all doing? All of you line up properly. Line up. What are you all hiding in the corners for? Those who don't line up within three minutes will be disqualified. There are 339 academies competing in matches today. Everybody line up properly to draw lots. Don't deal idly in the back. Same rules. Anyone who uses spiritual conscious to cheat will be disqualified. Everybody looked at each other. They all wanted the other people to line up first so that they could fight for the last spot. Don't kid. Who didn't want to get a buy for a free pass to the next round if they all knew the routine? Miss, do you want me to draw lots first? Chapter 1959 Holy shit. Kiyamu waved her hand. The man from yesterday was yielding to her again out of courtesy, but she didn't need that. It didn't matter to her whether she was first. Kiyamu walked up and drew a bamboo stick. Afterwards, she puttered away to stand on the side. Humphrey, whoever wanted to line up last to get a bike could do as they liked. In any case, 
Aoki Aoki Ao didn't want to come up to draw lots again tomorrow. Everybody finished drawing lots. The elder gave a nod before looking at the stupefied student who was the last person in line. This blockhead was probably confused as to why he still had to draw a lot when he had already fought for the last spot in line. Shouldn't it be a free pass? Is everybody also puzzled as to why the last person also has a bamboo stick? A bad premonition crossed everybody's minds. Ha ha. Shenghua Battle Arena really is expert at playing these mind games. Like yesterday, find the person with the same number and stand in pairs. The elder stroked his beard and chuckled, don't look, number zero. Come out and stand beside this old man. Everybody looked at each other in dismay. Only then did they realize that this time's free pass was number zero. Everybody quickly found the person with their matching number. Some were delighted while others were worried. Those who saw that their opponents were weak and naturally beamed, while those who saw that their opponents were more than just a tad big stronger immediately drooped their hands dejectedly. Miss Kiao gripped her bamboo stick and gave it a weird stare. Afterwards, she shuffled over slowly to the elder with the speed of a turtle. The elder was watching everybody while stroking his beard. When he sensed someone come over, he turned around and said, Lucky little fellow, you drew a free pass, right? Ah, uh, how is it you again? Kiao Mu looked weirdly at the elder with an indescribable expression. The several hundred student representatives from the other academies who were on stage all whipped their heads toward her. They all stared daggers at Kiao Mu with a swish. One time was luck, but the second time was due to the ancestor's blessing, right? How come this little lady could draw so much aggro? Mentor, I suggest that we cannot allow this miss to draw lots the next time, right? Have their academy switch representatives. Below the stage. Mentor Zu's mad laughter could be heard again. Old mister, you should start recording. As before ha ha ha, Apex Academy. The elder looked speechlessly at the group of incensed representatives. He coughed lightly and beckoned to Kiao Mu. Little lady, come follow me to record your academy. Don't worry. There won't be a free pass tomorrow. The elder hastily placated everyone's moods. Fook. Don't let this girl come draw lots with us together, right? Right, we request a switch. Switch representatives. Kiao Mu looked at everyone innocently before turning around and hopping off the battle stage. She made a beeline for her seat, because too many teams were participating in the first round of the semi-finals, it took two full days of matches. However, as teams got eliminated, the strength of opposing teams in the subsequent matches would also become more pronounced. The matches in the following days would not be too easy. The second round of the semi-finals would probably take at least two days of matches too. In other words, Apex Academy had hit the jackpot to be loafing for four days straight. Chapter 1960, The Long Unseen, Shenghua Battle Arena. In the front rows where the key academies were seated, Zhuang Meng pursed her lips and tugged on a corner of Xinran's clothes. Xinran turned around impatiently to look at her and she saw Zhuang Meng gesture forward with her pursed lips. Xinran followed her gaze and saw Yu Gui, Jiang Qi, and the others sitting together. Even though they didn't say anything, it was evident that they were in a rather good mood. They had an indistinct smile on their lips. Especially Yu Gui, this girl, who normally had a stern expression all day. Her eyes also had a valiant air about them, which made her look somewhat unapproachable at a glance. However, Yu Gui was a bit different from usual today. Humphrey Xinran rolled her eyes and slowly turned her head back. She inquired of a servant who stuck close behind her. Have you finished preparations? Yes, my lady. Everything has been prepared according to your instructions. Xinran nodded and revealed a sneer. She wanted to see what kind of bestial whales a group of supercilious people would make in desperate straits. At this time, Godsend Academy's middle-aged mentor slowly walked toward them with two other mentors. Everybody come get your spiritual returning solution for the day. One of the mentors said with furrowed brows, three bottles for Xuxinran, two for Zhuang Meng, and one for everyone else. Yu Gui and company took their portions nonchalantly and returned to their seats. Not a single ripple could be seen in their expressions. Don't ask why Xinran could get three bottles and Zhuang Meng too. This kind of inequality was omnipresent. Ever since entering this godsend academy, there was no lack of this kind of action. If they were to nitpick over everything, 
they would soon infuriate themselves to death. In this world, there was no longer a place like the holy water sect that treated everybody equally. There was no such distinction as inner and outer sect disciples. Both the three peak masters personal disciples and normal disciples received basically the same cultivation resources. A paradise like the holy water sect. They would definitely use their entire lifetime's effort to get it back. Classmate Yugui, do you want to go up together? Zhuang Meng tilted her head, acting innocent. Yu Gui ignored her, which made Zhuang Meng's smile freeze on her face. Fang Zhe let out a harumph before standing up with Yu Gui, and the six of them walked up to the stage. Senior sister, little junior sister hasn't left. During the first round, little junior sister had left with the crown prince of the Mo Kingdom after drawing lots, but little junior sister was still sitting here for the second round. I saw. Yugui was extremely anxious too. These two days, the three mentors strictly forbid them from leaving the inn and strolling on the streets. Xixinran and Zhuang Meng had also been drifting in front of them all day like phantoms, preventing them from finding a chance to speak to little junior sister. When they ascended the stage later to compete, little junior sister would definitely see them. Would little junior sister misunderstand? Senior sister, don't think too much. First deal with what's in front of us before anything else, Jiang Qi advised in a low voice. MHM. Yu Gui nodded, and she took a deep breath before stepping onto the stage with her five martial sisters. Their opponents, who were already standing on stage, matched them in number. They were students from Shunshan Prefecture's Moonlight Academy. Please instruct us, these senior sisters. The other six people saluted them courteously. Yu Gui's group of six naturally returned the salute. Subsequently, both parties drew their blades and triggered their spiritual energy. Chapter 1961, Senior Sisters. Hey, little fatty, Mart R. Look, those, those two people. Aren't they the two who had been in Che Ruman's team? Chi Xiu Anxuan suddenly exclaimed and pointed at the stage. It's them. Martan nodded. Kui Hong Win also said, Yo, I didn't expect people who took the entrance exam with us to run off to Moonlight Academy. They really are savvy. I remember those people's names are Peng Wang and Zubo Zong, right? I think so. Kiao Kiao, do you still remember that Che Ruman? Chi Xiu Anxuan asked curiously, Ever since Dan Fawa kidnapped Che Ruman, I don't think I've seen her again. Che Ruman had long died with her ashes scattered off to who knows where. Just as Kiao Mu was musing this and wanting to answer Chi Xiu Anxuan, she suddenly paused when her eyesight landed on the stage. She sat the nonplussed before suddenly jumping up from her seat and rubbing her eyes. Her motions were so big that it attracted everybody's attention. Miss Kiao rubbed her large eyes vigorously as she stared straight at the stage. Those nimble figures on the stage flew up and formed a sword matrix with their six swords. The spiritual glow that burst forth swept toward the opposing team. Kiao Mu was shaken to the core. Impossible. She shook her head while mumbling to herself. Just as she was about to rub her eyes again, Crown Prince Mo had already stood up to grasp her limp hands. He squinted at the stage and said softly, Kiao Kiao, it's your senior sister Yagui and the others. Kiao Mu abruptly turned to stare at him disbelievingly. After a while did she turn back to stare at the stage. She shook her head, impossible, big liar. She had personally buried their remains. Wasn't there no survivors out of Holy Water Sect's 800 disciples? Everybody said that the Holy Water Sect had gotten exterminated. Everybody looked at the lonely her with sympathy. Master died. Second aunt master and third aunt master also died. Didn't all her senior sisters die? Molian hugged her shoulders and placated her softly. We'll know once we ask them. Look, if your six senior sisters are all here, wouldn't that mean there might be more than just the six of them left in the holy water sect? Miss Kiao's eyes got watery as she turned to look at him. She shook her head vigorously and whined. They already saw me when I went up to draw lots for the first round. If they are my senior sisters, why didn't they come look for me? Liar. They must not be my senior sisters. Chi Xiu Anxuan and them didn't know the inside story, but they could piece what they heard together. They looked meaningfully at the two teams battling on stage. Molian's heart ached when he saw her upset. He nodded and said, fine, 
Fine. They aren't your senior sisters. We'll ignore them. Liar. Kiao Mu immediately rebuked angrily. Her tears threatened to spill. She clearly looks exactly the same as senior sister Yagui. Crown Prince Mo was both amused and exasperated. His darling was more unreasonable than anyone else when she didn't want to be rational. Kiao Kiao. He spoke softly into her ear as he wiped her sweaty palms. Let's go ask them afterwards. Okay. Maybe they wanted to find us but couldn't because we left early the last round. There's the sect's messenger talisman. Chapter 1962. Reunion. Crown Prince Mo mirthfully pulled the little fellow down into her seat and asked with a nod. Then why don't you take it out for a look? Kiao Mu was momentarily dumbfounded. Her sect's messenger talisman? Kiao Mu scratched her head and silently pushed open the doors to her inner world with her spiritual conscious. She rummaged through her inner world and finally found her sect's messenger talisman tucked away in a corner. Senior sister sent me a message. The little fellow's eyes lit up as she held up the sect's messenger talisman. The messenger talisman read, Kiao Kiao. Respond us up when you see this message. You agree, right? She was the one who tossed the sect's messenger talisman into a corner of her inner world without looking at it again ever since she buried her aunt master and senior sister's remains. Kiao Kiao. Chi Xiu Anxuan stuck her head over and asked while looking at Kiao Mu, you found your companions? Kiao Mu nodded at her. On the side, the venerable beech blossom immortal piped up with a grin, Aya. Hey, uh, doesn't meeting old friends in a foreign land call for a feast of good wine until you get drunk? This foodie. Everybody scolded together in their minds, but they also looked at Kiao Mu with bright eyes upon the mention of food. Kiao Mu subconsciously pursed her lips as she caressed the sect's messenger talisman. Her gaze was on the stage again. Both sides were already in the thick of battle. Penguin released a water spirit loop. Trapping the little cannonball Fangzu in a water prison. Fangzu's cultivation was on par with Pengguang's, around level 14 initial success. After battling for so long, her mystic energy stamina was a bit lacking. For a moment, she was powerless to break free from the water prison. However, senior sister Yagui and them were able to easily cope with their remaining five opponents. The battle would soon conclude with her senior sister's victory. However, the little cannonball Fangzu was a hot-tempered one. Seeing that her current mystic energy wasn't enough for her to break free from the water prison, she took the spiritual returning solution that the mentor distributed just now from her inner world and downed it. If spiritual returning solution could recover one-tenth of a spiritual cultivator's spiritual energy, it would be able to recover one-fifth of a mystic cultivator's mystic energy. At that time, she would certainly be able to break free of these bind. Ings, U-G-H. What was this? Pain. Fangzu abruptly clutched her stomach as cold sweat streamed down her face. The moment that bottle of spiritual returning solution entered her stomach, it felt like a fire ignited and started raging through her insides. Bang. Fangzu tumbled to the ground at once. Yugui and the others couldn't help but shout junior sister in distress when they saw this. How could they still be in the mood to battle? They hastily rushed over to check on Fangzu's condition. Penguin, stop. When Moonlight Academy's captain saw that his team members wanted to take advantage of the situation and attack Yugui and the others, he promptly shouted for them to halt. Penguin stopped his attack disgruntedly and went to stand behind his captain. Junior sister, what's wrong? Junior sister? San senior sister, senior sister. Fangzu was giving off steam from her entire body as she clutched her stomach. Yugui panicked when she touched Fangzu's forehead. Her body was terrifyingly hot, as if she had fallen into a volcano. The battle arena has a doctor. Quick, bring junior sister over for him to check. Mingxia quickly squatted down to carry Fangzu on her back. The six people ditched the people from Moonlight Academy and charged down the stage without looking back. The moment they rushed down the stage, they saw a slender figure appear before them like lightning. The instant Yugui and the others raised their heads, their eyes all reddened. Chapter 1963, Disdain. Quickly set her down on her back over there. Kiao Mu pointed at the side of the passageway it was not the time to reminisce with them right now. They naturally couldn't block the stairs to the stage, which might obstruct other people from ascending the stage to battle. After they set Fangzu down, 
Kiao Mu immediately activated her spiritual eyes. After carefully taking Fang Zhu's pulse, Kiao Mu used her spiritual eyes to examine her body thoroughly. She saw that the mystic energy in Fang Zhu's mystic meridians had reduced by three fourths, with only a small portion remaining. Additionally, this remaining mystic energy was abnormally enveloped in a black fluid at this time, a kind of heat poison. No only would it make its victim feel like that their insides were incinerating, a heavy dose would ravage a person's normal mystic meridians. Once a person's mystic meridians got wrecked and there was no opportunity to repair or reconstruct them, that person's path as a mystic cultivator would come to an end. Yu Gui and the rest crowded around the little fellow, but were afraid to say anything lest it interrupt her treatment. Just as Kiao Mu took out her needle pouch, a middle-aged man charged over in a rage with a contorted expression. He roared with a surging fury, Yu Gui, how are you leading a team? You were clearly able to win the match just now, yet you guys arbitrarily ran off the stage before the match ended. Do you even have the Academy's honor in mind? Minxia grabbed an empty spiritual solution bottle and flung it in that mentor's face. Crash. That bottle exploded into pieces at the mentor's feet. What kind of mentor are you? To actually feed your students poison. Are you happy now that you have a life on your hands? The fact that such a drama was unfolding in the seating area naturally attracted the attention of other academies. Everybody stopped paying attention to the intense matches and looked at the altercation between gods and academies students and mentor with great interest. A mentor added poison to a student's medicinal solution? How shocking was such news? The middle-aged mentor's face was naturally flushed red at this time. He had nearly lost all face and reprimanded Ming Xiu angrily. What nonsense are you spouting? Don't take your anger out on your mentor in chagrin because you lost the match. You know better than anybody else whether we are taking out our anger on you or not. Chen Hanzi rebutted coldly. Everybody take out the medicinal solution the mentors distributed earlier. Besides Fang Zhu, who gulped it all down, the other people had not touched the medicinal solution. After hearing what Chen Hanzi said, the others took out the medicinal solution from their pockets and set it down beside Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu swept them a glance and picked up one of them. She unplugged it and wafted the scent for a sniff. Afterwards, she deadpanned, a trashy bottle of spiritual returning solution. It can only recover one-tenth of a person's spiritual returning solution each time, an incomparably inferior outcome. It has also been added with a moderate dose of flaming scarlet poison. It won't wreck the body's spiritual meridians, but it will cause the person who consumed unbearable pain, as if they have plunged in an abyss of suffering. Everyone. How come they felt that the little lady's monotone sounded like mockery once it entered their ears? Were they just imagining it? And a trashy bottle of spiritual returning solution. Was there such an evaluation of a medicinal solution? It was extremely difficult for pill alchemists to concoct this kind of spiritual returning solution. You might not be able to purchase this kind of spiritual returning solution from the market even if you had money. Most of the time, it was pill alchemists cultivated by the various great patrician families who concocted them according to precious recipes. They felt extremely peculiar seeing the little lady disdain this bottle of spiritual returning solution so much. Chapter 1964, Clumsy, it felt like she was saying, the so-called number one academy of Poland prefecture, Godsend Academy, was only able to produce such a trashy medicinal solution. So embarrassing. Godsend Academy's middle-aged mentor's face promptly turned as black, as if painted with soot. The little lady's words could absolutely drive a person crazy from anger. Her evaluation of the spiritual returning solution as trashy simply made the three mentors of Godsend Academy feel like they had lost all face. You, you, how can you say such things? Even though the little lass looked young, she was able to coherently analyze the medicinal solution. The three mentors felt guilty for no reason. DMN, DMN it. How could there be such a young pill alchemist? She was definitely bluffing. The poisoning method is unbelievably clumsy. The little lady added this evaluation. The little fatty and the others who were watching the drama on the outside couldn't help but chuckle when they heard this. My heavens, watching their Kiyokiyo expressionlessly scold others with her sharp tongue really was a visual enjoyment. Ha ha ha.
the three mentors from God Send Academy nearly felt their lungs exploded from anger by now. One of them berated angrily, Little girl, you cannot accuse others indiscriminately for no reason. How can you prove that there is no error in your judgment? This poison is not something you can randomly pin on other people. Can I lie to you when I have practiced medicine for decades? The little fellow blurted this out. Afterwards, she felt like something was off. Yugui, Chen Hanzi, and the other four felt their eyelids jerk. They maintained a straight face and said nothing, but they felt like breaking down. Little junior sister, even if you count the time you were in the womb, you would only have practiced medicine for 16 years at the most. Decades was bluffing too much for a BS. Kiao Mu expressionlessly continued to examine Fang Zhu's body with her spiritual eyes. She didn't neglect to insert her needles as she conversed with Godsend Academy's mentors. In this short time, the poison in Fang Zhu's body had been mostly dispelled. Physician Luo has come. Quickly make way, make way. Everybody opened up a path for a tottering old grandpa to walk over. Physicians naturally greatly differed from pill alchemists. Just talking about the pill alchemist profession, it was not something any physician could dabble in. This old doctor was precisely versed in detoxifying poisons, so it was normal to bring him over. Kiao Mu had just gotten to the critical point of her acupuncture procedure, so the old doctor didn't go up to bother her. He merely stood to the side and nodded while commenting, This young physician's skill in acupuncture is exquisite. Whom did you happen to learn from? Kiao Mu put away her needles and looked up to glance at the old physician. She deadpanned, my teacher naturally is a reclusive master whom I cannot divulge the name of everyone. They really wanted to spank this freaking child. Normal people would just say, my teacher prohibits me from divulging their name, upon which the other party would instantly understand that your teacher was a master, and they would find it ill at ease to press on. Who would directly say, my teacher is a master, so not humble. The old physician smiled helplessly and didn't get angry. He walked up and examined Fang Zhu, who was lying on the ground with her eyes shut. He nodded and said, she is fine now. Afterwards, he inspected the medicinal bottles on the ground and proved that Kiao Mu's judgment was correct. It is not difficult to detoxify this flaming scarlet poison, but it causes great harm to a one's body in a short amount of time. The old physician explained, it causes excruciating pain. However, the little doctor's acupuncture skill is out of the ordinary. She has performed superb treatment. Chapter 1965, Instant Revelation This young lady will soon wake up? The old doctor concluded with a chuckle. After giving her thanks, Yugui turned to look at the three mentors who had foul-looking expressions. She said coldly, Mentor Jang, did you all hear that? Say how this situation should get resolved. The middle-aged mentor gave Yugui a guilty look. You. What are you saying? Could we mentors harm our own students? The facts are clear. I don't know what there is to refute. Yugui interrupted his quibbling while giving him a good stare. Mentor Jang turned to glare at a young mentor in chagrin, Mentor Sun, explain to them. The spiritual returning solution had been in your safekeeping. How could it have poison? Mentor Sun said indifferently. How should I know? The academy had provided this medicinal solution. Swish. Platt. A dictum talisman flew to Mentor Sun and split apart. The talisman energy penetrated Mentor Sun's body. It made him freeze, after which he spilled the beans on everything. It was eldest young lady Xu who instructed me to do so. It was Xuxenran. She gave me 10,000 mystic currency and a black rank spiritual technique. I, I was under her orders. To put flaming scarlet poison in the medicinal bottles intended for Yugui and them. The truth actually got revealed instantly. Everyone was flabbergasted. Xuxenran's face had contorted from anger. She bolted up from her seat and pointed at Mentor Sun while screeching. Don't you slander me unfoundedly. When did I make you do such a thing? Oh my my, Mentor Sun. Mentor Jang is correct in saying that you cannot accuse others indiscriminately for no reason. Zhuang Meng covered her mouth while chuckling. Xuxinran was filled with anger as she turned to glare at Zhuang Meng. Don't make more trouble. After Mentor Sun finished rattling off his piece, he froze up like a jammed mechanism. He looked left and right in a daze, 
his brain short-circuiting. W.H. What did he just say? Mentor Sun couldn't help but be apprehensive at Xixinran's furious glare. Xixinran, what else do you have to say? Yugui and the others glowered at her while summoning their spiritual swords from their conscious pool. They pointed them at Xixinran. What do you guys want to do? Mentor Jiang lectured them lividly, you are all from the same academy, yet you are pointing swords at each other due to a simple misunderstanding. Are you not afraid of getting expelled from the academy? 1. Xixinran scoffed at them and pointed at Kiao Mu. It was that little witch who used some kind of underhanded method to make Mentor Sun act oddly. It is simply impossible for you to prove that I did this just from Mentor Sun's one-sided testimony. You had already made the academy lose from your mistake in the earlier match. Right now. You are even pointing swords at your companion. You all really think that your talent is so great that the academy can pardon your misdeeds. The little lady suddenly shouted in fury, she's calling me a little witch. 1. Peony, Crown Prince Mo ordered dryly. The peony immortal immediately darted forward. She giggled with a bewitching smile and then gave Xixinran's face two sound slaps without room for objection. Afterwards, the peony immortal said coquettishly with an expression that said she couldn't bear it, eh, uh, why make things difficult for your own kind? Chapter 1966, Group Attack After inspecting the red handprints on both sides of Xixinran's face, everybody's gaze is whipped back to the little lady. In this kind of serious and tense atmosphere, they actually had the inexplicable urge to laugh. How come the little lady only noticed the part where she got called a witch? Wasn't she focusing on too peculiar of a point? Xixinran had never suffered such an insult, and every hair on her body shook from wrath. Dion knew. She screamed. The servant who had been trailing behind her immediately strode forward and aggressively grabbed for Kiao Mu. You're looking to die. Crown Prince Mo's gaze turned frigid. 1. Yugui and them blocked Dian Yu's advance with their already drawn swords. They sent him staggering backwards with a kick. When Dian Yu was about to charge forward again, the peony immortal pointed her finger at him. A thunder spirit struck Dian Yu's head with a clap, which knocked him to the ground from the shock. Oh my my, I already said that you shouldn't do anything. Is there anything we can't talk out? The peony immortal smoothed the hair at her temples and remarked with a shake of her head. There really is no sense of accomplishment bullying you kids. Xixinran trembled from fury, and she pointed at Yu Gui and the others as she turned to Mentor Jiang to declare, Mentor, these people have exceedingly supercilious attitudes. They first slandered me for instigating Mentor Sun to poison them. They are now going against their own classmate for the sake of an outsider. They should be expelled immediately. Mentor Jiang sternly glared at Yu Gui with a frown. Apologize to young lady Xu. You all really don't intend to continue at the academy, do you? There is no meaning in staying at a lousy academy with a degenerate mentors like you. Zudanjin mocked from the sidelines, which immediately stirred up profuse approval from the other academies. No one was blind. The truth was laid bare for everyone to see. This young lady Xu was able to escape punishment after instigating Mentor Xun to poison the other students. This Mentor Jiang was also safeguarding her with his all. This really was repulsive. You people. Xixinran felt like the entire world was going against her. She stomped her feet furiously. Mentor, kick them out. Mentor Jiang nodded sullenly. Yu Gui, no need to trouble you. We request to leave on our own. Yu Gui spoke indifferently as she raised her hand to stop what Mentor Jiang was going to say. Mentor Jiang instantly felt like he was punching cotton. His face turned green from anger. Out of the blue, hit him. The little lady flung a rotten egg at Mentor Jiang's face. Chi Xu Anxuan and the other members of the peanut gallery were immediately injected with chicken blood. They charged up and beat Mentor Jiang in the face. The three mentors yelped as they got ganged up on. Some students who despised their actions even came up from the seating area to give them two punches. It wasn't until the people in charge of the battle arena hurried over and stopped the chaos by separating both sides. It was then that they made out the three mentors from Godsend Academy who had terribly bruised and swollen faces. Mentor Jiang pointed at Kiao Mu with a shaking finger and was so livid that he couldn't talk. If not for the fact that he couldn't recklessly retaliate using spiritual energy in the seating area, would he have gotten beaten up so badly? 
Kiao Mu merely pretended not to have seen him. She passed off those scum to Chi Xuang Xuan and them to deal with, while she ran off to where senior sister Yagui was. Fang Zhe saw her at once when she opened her eyes. Chapter 1967, Reunion Gathering The little cannonball was startled, but then her face bloomed into a rare gentle smile. She opened her arms slowly. Little junior sister, you won't give your senior sister a hug? Kiao Mu leapt into her arms for a tight hug. Her tears nearly gushed out. She thought that her tears had long run dry the day that the holy water sect got exterminated. It turned out that they hadn't. Liar. The little lady mumbled. I thought you guys had all died. God knows her anguish that day she transferred everybody's remains to the peach orchard slope. She thought that everyone in the sect had sacrificed their lives. It wasn't until today that she discovered that that wasn't the case. She was both elated and worried after getting hit with such lucky news. She was apprehensive that she was dreaming. Big liar, Miss Kiao grumbled. They actually abandoned Kiao Kiao by herself in the lower star domain while the rest of them all ran to the middle six prefectures. It's a long story. We'll tell you thoroughly later. Yugui patted the little fellow's head tenderly. You've had it hard these past years, little junior sister. It's really too great to see you. Chen Hanzi and the other three also teared up and choked with sobs. Yugui nodded with reddened eyes. Noticing that they were targeted by prying eyes, she said quietly, Let's leave this place first before talking. The little fellow looked up and nodded her fuzzy head. They helped Fang Zhu up and headed for the entrance while holding Kiao Mu's petite hands. Xixinran yelled from the seating area, Yu Gui, Lu Ling, Chen Hanzi, you guys will regret your decisions today. On the six prefectures continent, lone cultivators who did not belong to an academy or a clan would face many problems. This was especially the case for them who were young and pretty girls. 1. They really weren't going to turn back without hitting their limits. They would one day know that without her clan's protection, they would be stumped by obstacles in the entire Poland prefecture. Xixinran gazed coldly at the figures who left without turning their heads back. She clenched her fists with a cloudy expression, there will be a day you people come begging me. Who was that woman with a distorted face? Miss Kiao inquired in curiosity. A baffling woman. Chen Hanzi explained, she thinks that her identity as the eldest young lady of Poland prefectures Xu clan places her a level above others. She wanted us to enter her clan as her servants. She got distorted on her own after we ignored her. Minxia said irritably, you don't need to bother with her. She thinks of herself as infallible. Little junior sister, when did you come to the six prefectures continent? Yugui gripped the child's hand and quickly pulled her along. I've come for a long time already. The little lady raised her head to look at them. Classmate Kiao. Kiao Mu turned around and saw that her companions were waving their hands at her while smiling. Remember to come back earlier. MHM, MHM, it's a happy occasion to encounter an old acquaintance in a Fujian land. The little fatty chuckled, I feel like His Excellency the Venerable Immortal is correct. This is a cause for celebration. Kiao Mu cracked a grin and waved her petite hand at Crown Prince Mo. She then turned around to leave with her senior sisters. Mata rubbed his eyes. I don't know if it was my imagination, but I seem to have seen Kiao Kiao smile. Ha ha, I feel like my eyesight also went funny for a moment. Isn't that right? The little fatty shook his head. Kiao Kiao had just smiled at them, right? 1. Chapter 1968, Hugs. Precisely speaking, Kiao Kiao tugged the corners of her lips to reveal an expression that made her look like she wanted to cry but was struggling not to. It was a novel feeling. Cheeks you you and couldn't resist asking, since Kiao Kiao calls them senior sisters. That means that she encountered people from her sect. She had thought that Kiao Kiao had met up with those people she was waiting for at the entrance to the Shunshan prefecture. It turned out that wasn't the case. MHM, MHM. I didn't expect the little stoic to actually have so many pretty senior sisters. Dawuji chuckled as he rubbed his chin. Ha. Huh. The little despot gave him a cold glare. Looks like a certain someone is about to be finished. Dawuji rebutted in exasperation, how am I finished? Think about it. The little despot said softly, Kiao Kiao views her senior sisters very highly. If she finds out that you intend to lay hands on them, 
What would she do to you? When Dao Wuji thought of the little fellow's vicious methods and also saw his boss send over a threatening look, he quickly shut up without daring to say anything else. He was a tactful person, so he was still going to choose his life over women. Meanwhile, Kiao Mu followed her senior sisters back to their inn. Just as they closed the door, everybody couldn't resist running over to look at Kiao Mu. They also patted her head in passing. Little junior sister, have you been well these years on Saikong Planet? You must have suffered a lot. Look, she's thinned down so much. Kiao Mu couldn't even cut into their flurry of questions. On the side, Yugui couldn't help but laugh. With Crown Prince Mo with little junior sister, I imagine that he wouldn't let her suffer from grievances. Kiao Mu nodded, expressing that she didn't suffer from much grievances. While sitting at the table, Fang Zi looked up at Kiao Mu and said with a smile, Don't all of you talk at once. First fill little junior sister in on the important parts. There will be plenty of time in the future to tell her about the little things. Yugui nodded at this suggestion. Exactly. Senior sister, let's bring little junior sister back. Mingxia said, if second dance master knew that little junior sister met up with us, she would be absolutely thrilled. Kiao Mu's eyes lit up. Second? Second aunt master? Yugui nodded. MHM, master is fine. Master and aunt Yi are temporarily staying at a residence in Poland prefecture with our martial sisters. Little junior sister, you still have to continue with the competition. It won't take much time, either. Once you finish competing, we'll. Senior sister. Fang Zi disagreed. Why should we still bother with that whatever competition? Returning to the sect and seeing Master is what's important. If Master knows that little junior sister has come, she would be ecstatic. Kiao Mu nodded. Yugui could not help but glare at Fang Zi with, with a smile. She grasped Kiao Mu's petite hands and explained. Ignore your senior sister. She's just quick-tempered. You can't just ditch your academy in the middle as one of their representatives. Besides, you can go cultivate in Blinchy Thailand's spiritual domain if you are victorious. Don't let this rare opportunity slip by. Kiao Mu nodded again after some contemplation. The sapling's recovery hinged on whether she could go to the spiritual domain, so she indeed could not just give up easily. Our residence in Poland Prefecture is not going to run away, so we will definitely make a trip between the end of the competition and the trip to Blinchy Thailand. Okay. Everybody smiled at each other. Even though it had been years since they saw each other, they felt that the relationship between them was still that tight knit. Some words did not need to be said. It was all comprehended through each other's gazes. Chapter 1969 Enemies are bound to meet. Little junior sister. Master is so worried about you. Yugui grasped Kiao Mu's petite hand and said softly. When we all transferred safely to this foreign land in Poland prefecture, Master was especially regretful that we weren't able to bring you along. Master has frequently lamented how if she had known that there was a special talisman matrix in the ancestral hall, she would have had you come back with us. Yugui hugged the little fellow and patted her back. She said softly, you don't know how much Master blames herself. That foolish master of hers really did change a lot over these past years. Senior sister, I thought you all had died. Kiao Mu mumbled. She thought that she was the only one left in the holy water sect. It wasn't until she encountered Doya that she realized she wasn't alone. Now, this surprise right now was too great. Even though Kiao Kiao still looked expressionless, her heart was dancing in joy. The little fellow had already learned from her senior sisters that the Holy Water Sect had transferred 200 people away, including second dance master Yang Xirong. They were now living well and diligently cultivating in Poland Prefecture. She was in a very jubilant mood. This was a precious feeling of regaining what one had lost. She had originally thought that she needed to shoulder the responsibility of avenging and reviving the sect all alone by herself, but right now, it was not too late. The Holy Water sect still had people, and a lot at that. Everybody was still here. The feeling that she was finally not alone in this struggle made her thrilled. The seven people chatted in the room the whole time until night fell. Kiao Mu grasped Yugui's hands and persuaded, Senior sister, check out from this inn and stay at ours. I have a rich mentor who reserved the entire third floor so there are still many empty rooms left. Yugui chuckled. Wouldn't we be imposing on your mentors? You won't. 
Kiao Mu shook her head with an expression that said if Mentor Zhu dared to disdain her senior sisters, she'd beat him up. Chen Hanzi rubbed her head and declared with a smile, Okay, we'll go with Kiao Kiao. We still have to watch Kiao Kiao compete tomorrow. That's right. Kiao Mu immediately became happier. That Elder Hong had also said that there would be no free pass tomorrow. This meant that Kiao Kiao could have a proper fight tomorrow. Kiao Kiao got excited thinking about how she could beat other people up. They checked out from the inn and followed Kiao Mu to the inn that Apex Academy had reserved. However, just as they walked out from the inn, they saw the three mentors from Godsend Academy with bruised and swollen faces returning with their group of small fry. The two parties just so happened to meet. The three mentors whose faces were hopelessly swollen immediately turned sullen as they stared viciously at Kiao Mu's party. They berated, you guys still dare to come back. Goddess and Academy's students immediately got injected with chicken blood and encircled Kiao Mu's party. The students stared at them watchfully. Zhuang Meng covered her mouth and giggled, Classmate Yu Gui, this really is a coincidence. Yu Gui and them only had seven people now. That scary woman called Peony and their other helpers weren't here either. How could they escape their Godsend Academy's grasp now? Xuxinran also declared contemptuously. What are you guys all still standing there for? Quickly take them down. How dare that beach called peony slap her twice. Right now, she was going to return the favor to this wench. Chapter 1970, They're Mutating. Without those formidable helpers, she'd like to see what this little beach was going to do. Xuxinran waved her palm forward, and two servants pounced ruthlessly out from behind her toward Kiao Mu. Yet before they could get close, Kiao Mu had slowly pulled out a bead from her pocket and threw it down on the ground. A spiritual energy bead. Everybody quickly dodge. The three mentors who had bruised and swollen faces shouted out at the same time. They skittered backwards abruptly like frightened birds. Boom. This thunderous explosion alarmed many residents in the area. Everybody all swarmed out from their houses. The three mentors from Godsend Academy cursed as they waved the dust away from their eyes. Cough. Cough, 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 cough. All the students from Godsend Academy were covered in dust, and they gagged from choking on the dust. This, this didn't seem like a spiritual energy bead. It was an absolute that they would get injured if a spiritual energy bead hit them at such close quarters. Besides, there was no pit in the ground from an explosion. Evidently, this was a fake spiritual energy bead that was used especially to scare people. Cough, cough, cough. Xuxinran waved away the dust before her eyes and screeched, Fools, you let them escape. Everybody else did not dare voice their resentment. This Xuxinran acted so high and mighty all day, scolding this person and that person for being a fool. Was she herself not a fool? Was it their fault that the little lady from Apex Academy escaped? You didn't catch her either. One of the Godsend Academy students scratched his wrist as he protested. Who knew that little lady from Apex Academy would be this crafty? If that little beach was not crafty, how would she have gotten a bye two times in a row? Xuxinran shouted angrily, a group of brainless fellows. What are you still standing around for? You think that you haven't gotten humiliated enough? Get inside. She stepped into the inn first. She reflexively scratched her back to relieve a terrible itch. Xin, Xinran. Help me take a look. How come this part of my neck feels itchy? Zhuang Meng said in a low voice as she gave Xuxinran a furtive tug. Xuxinran immediately turned alert. You're also itchy? She also felt that part of her back to be especially itchy. Could there be a problem with the smoke from that bead the DMN girl threw at them? At this time, they suddenly heard an onlooker burst out laughing. Huh? You guys look hair is growing on their faces. Xuxinran quickly turned around to look. Those three mentors from Godsend Academy were growing clumps of green hair on their originally swollen faces. It was incredibly bizarre and eye-catching. Ah! The students staggered back in shock. They screamed uncontrollably while watching the three mentors' faces. Mentor, your, your faces. Mentor Jang, who had been scratching his face the whole time, turned around to look, he nearly fainted from shock at Mentor Sun's close-up hairy face. Mentor Sun's normal looking face was now covered with a layer of green, fuzzy fur. His eyes were peering ominously at him beneath the long fur. He was as hideous as you could imagine. Men Mentor Sun. 
Mentor Jiang yelped. A discordant voice came from the crowd. This isn't the zombie mutation that happens to living people, right? What? Quickly report to the city lord. Mentor Jiang quickly ran up and shouted to the crowd, Don't speak nonsense, we're not mutating. No such thing. Chapter 1971. Just their luck. Ah. The spectating civilian saw him stride forward with a face full of green fur. It was quite a horrifying sight. No one dared to continue watching the fun and scattered like birds and beasts. For a moment, the street had emptied of people. Only the group of mentors and students from Godsend Academy remained. They couldn't help but look at each other with bitter smiles. Itchy, so DM itchy. You guys quickly help me look at my neck, the back of my neck. All right. Everybody first return to your rooms. Mentor Jang scolded. He was about to step into the inn while sporting his face of green fur. However, the innkeeper rushed outside with a group of workers and blocked them outside. You all, don't you come in. Monsters, monsters, quickly report to the city lord. They've mutated. Mutated into zombies. I'm gonna beat you up you brainless fella. Mentor Jang and Mentor Sun raised their fists to give that innkeeper a good beating. Are you fucking stupid? They still had perfect cognitive abilities, which proved that they were still alive. How were they mutated zombies? How? Mutated zombies my SS. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Just my rotten luck. The innkeeper screeched. I won't charge you for the food fare. Quickly scram. I'm telling you all. Sir City Lord's guard troops will be coming soon. If you still don't move it, you bunch of monsters can wait to get locked up in prison. Who's a monster? Who are you calling a monster? Xixenrin shook all over in anger. She wanted to lunge at him, but Zhuang Meng grabbed her hand. Xenrin, Xenrin, quickly help me take a look. Look, 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 look my SS. Xixenrin flung away Zhuang Meng's arm and pointed at her face that was covered in green fur shouting, why aren't you looking at other people, at my face, get rid of your wishful thinking, everybody's the same right now, ah, Zhuang Meng screamed in disbelief as she held her green furry face with her hands, how come it's like this, what's going on, are you a pig, you still don't understand what happened, Xixenran pushed Zhuang Meng's forehead using her finger and shouted, this must be due to the poison that little beach released earlier, what kind of poison is so formidable that it can disfigure us with long fur? Zhuang Meng was completely unwilling to come to terms. It's a lie. You're lying. I want to return to my room and look at the mirror. I want to go away. You. Several workers used long sticks to block Zhuang Meng's way in distaste. The innkeeper hid behind the workers, and he merely probed out part of his head and shrieked in ridicule. Scram, scram. Scram, get the hell out of here, don't think of afflicting the other guests in my humble inn, quickly make yourselves scarce, you, Xixenrun and company were simply about to explode from anger, during their quarrel, a large group of guard troops the city lord's estate dispatched had come as expected, they cordoned off the entire road and guarded all entrances and exits before swarming toward the inn, we came to Great Shengwa City to represent Godsend Academy in a competition, Godsend Academy of Poland Prefecture. Mentor Jiang announced, we are not monsters, nor have we mutated into zombies. We only fell for an evildoer's tricks and got poisoned, that is why. You think I'm stupid? The commander of the guard troops interrupted Mentor Jiang with a raise of his hand. You think I don't know what getting poisoned looks like? I'd like to ask, what kind of poisoned person ends up like you? Chapter 1972 utterly nauseating, completely covered in green fur and having bloodshot eyes, these are clearly signs of zombie mutation, what, make sure you're all wearing personal protective equipment, careful not to get bitten by these living zombies, the commander called out, he then ordered, encircle them, and take them all down, we haven't mutated into zombies, we haven't, we have clear thought processes, we aren't, ridiculous, which fella that has mutated into a zombie will admit that they're about to mutate. The commander scoffed, he waved his hand, and all the city guards charged forward with their spears to encircle them. They rounded up all the people from Godsend Academy in one fell swoop. You bunch of dumpses, which living zombie can argue with you like we are? I already said that this is because we got poisoned. Before Mentor Jiang could finish talking, he got punched in the face. 
making his mouth twitch from the pain. You're the bunch of dumpses. Other people who get poisoned have black complexions and purple lips. Which poison person has fur growing all over their body? Your poison looks like this, pfft. Fang Zhu, who was peeking at them from a corner, couldn't hold in her laughter. Lu Ling was also snickering beside her while covering her mouth. Yu Gui tugged at them to remind them to be quiet. Ah, let go, let go of me. Xenron's piercing screams caused everybody to look at her. They saw a green furry person struggling in the grips of two guards wearing personal protective equipment. Her furry face was so contorted that it was impossible to make out her original features. You people. What are you people trying to do? Let go of me. Let go. I am the young lady of Poland Prefecture's Gzu clan. How dare you treat me like this? My father, family head Gzu, will not let you off. Ah, ah. She flailed her furry arms so fiercely that her clothes tore open in the back. When Xuxenran heard the sound of cotton tearing, she clearly froze for a moment before letting out an earth-shattering scream. Ah, you people, how dare you treat me like this? Ah, A-H-H-H. It was like the last plaintive cry of a young virgin who was about to get ravaged. However, the group of guards all just looked at her with contempt. After her world-shaking scream passed and everything returned to silence, the commander gave Xuxinran an irritated slap. What are you screaming for? You think you're some goddess? Anyone who sees how you're covered in green fur would be utterly nauseous. Xuxinran froze up. This was the first time a man scorned her like this, and a group of lowly guards at that. Fang Zhu wanted to add fuel to the fire, but Chen Hanzi stopped her from speaking. Let's go. We've already watched them make a fool of themselves. If the people from Godsend Academy discovered that they were hiding and watching them make a fuss, things would blow up into a bigger mess. Kiaomu nodded. Let's go. Instead of continuing to wrestle with these fools from Godsend Academy, they might as well return to the interest. Speaking of which, the sky had completely darkened by this time. Kiaomu rubbed her flat little belly. She wondered if the group of foodies were still waiting for her to go back. Junior sister, how did they turn into that inhuman appearance? Junior sister asked curiously. Is it the poisonous smoke that wafted from that exploding bead? Chapter 1973, No Eyes for Anybody Else. Kiaomu nodded, and then shook her head. It's not poison, only a kind of drug that expedites hair growth. I am a good person. The little fellow patted her chest. We need to properly distinguish between whom we should show gratitude to and whom we should feel resentment for. Xuxenran is the person who poisoned senior sister. We just need to poison her back. The other people are merely small fry, so we can just give them a small lesson in passing. Yugui twitched her mouth silently, in other words, Xuxenran indeed still hit the jackpot. I couldn't tell at all. Fang Zhu rubbed her petite hands gleefully. To me, it looked like Xuxinran's symptoms were pretty much the same as everybody else's. It'll show in around another hour. Little junior sister, what kind of poison did you use on Xuxinran? Everybody was curious, as Xuxinran had used flaming scarlet poison on senior sister previously. I just improved upon the poison and used it back on her. Got it. She had given her tit for tat. After nodding in comprehension, they followed their little junior sister back to Anping Inn. We're staying on the third floor. Kiaomu led everybody up the stairs. When they reached the second floor, they just so happened to bump into two men who were walking side by side. The two men involuntarily sized up the seven young ladies. Upon glancing at them, Kiaomu discovered that the man on the left was the person who kept yielding to her courteously when they were drawing lots on the stage. She thus gave him an expressionless nod as a greeting. That man smiled and nodded back to her. He then stepped aside to let the seven of them pass. Afterwards, they heard the other man say behind them, Senior Brother Lee, are those ladies the ones who had a fallout with Godsend Academy and got expelled? MHM, don't probe further, little junior sister. You even know Lee Nanshan. What Lee Nanshan? Don't know him. Miss Kiao responded reflexively. Yu Gui and the others looked at each other in dismay, and Fang Zhu couldn't resist giggling. But you just... Miss Kiao naturally was unable to register her senior sister's words. Right now, her eyes were only on young Sermo, 
who was standing in the candlelight at the door to her room. His uplifted phoenix eyes were looking at her with a smile. So handsome, such a handsome man was Kiao Kiao's. Miss Kiao ran over to him happily, and the crown prince promptly grasped her soft and warm hands. Oh my, my little lady, I had told you to come back earlier. Look at the time right now. The door opened from the inside, and a horde of people poured out. Kiao Kiao. I only ate two pastries in the afternoon and have been waiting for you till now. When are we eating? Sure enough, this group of foodies were waiting for her. Kiao Mew couldn't help but find it funny. She pushed up the corners of her mouth with two fingers. Am I smiling? Everyone. No. Then are you guys ordering dishes today? Wow, we really can order dishes today. Me, me, me. I'm ordering. I want to eat chilled crystal ham. Me, me, me. I'm ordering ahad prawns. I especially want to eat smoked duck today. It'd be even better if there was a jug of peach blossom wine. Ha. Huh. Kiao Mew walked past the group into the room while holding Crown Prince Mo's hand. I was just saying, yet you guys took it seriously again. You, the little lady expressionlessly picked and chose through her food box with an occasional question. Want lamb soup? Yes, 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 yes. Chapter 1974, Wimping Out, their dinner ended late into the evening. After savoring good wine and food, their party ended near midnight. Kiao Mu was also a bit tipsy after drinking a few extra cups of fruit wine. It wasn't until everybody left the room that Crown Prince Mo carried Kiao Mu, who was half sprawling on the table, to the bathtub. Kiao Mu opened her eyes. The candlelight made her cheeks look even rosier. Am I smiling? The little fellow pushed up her cheeks and insisted on asking the crown prince. Crown Prince Mo found her tipsy state charmingly naive, and couldn't help but be amused. He turned her petite head forward and gave her a smack on the cheek. He shook his head and said, you aren't. The little fellow promptly puffed out her cheeks and grabbed his collar. I want to smile for you guys. Mo Lian was both a bit happy and a bit grieved. This little fellow had gotten used to showing others an expressionless face because of the emotions she had suppressed over the years. That's why it wasn't that easy for her to smile even if she wanted to. You can smile. He picked her up and slowly started undoing her outer garment before placing her into the bathtub. Kiao Kiao reunited with your senior sisters whom you thought you had lost, so you should naturally smile today. Kiao Mu nodded vigorously and declared crisply, I am happy. Mo Lian cupped her petite face with his hands and pressed against her smooth forehead with his own. He murmured softly, Kiao Kiao, treat yourself better in the future. Okay, shouldn't young children like her be extremely willful and capricious, which child inhibited their emotions like she did? Besides, so what if she acted brazen and unbridled with her current identity? That was something she could do. Kiao Mu hugged Mo Lian's neck and lay against his shoulder. She was inexplicably unable to stop her tears from streaming down. Lian, second aunt master didn't die. Second aunt master didn't die. I thought they were all dead. But they aren't. I am feeling so happy. I don't know how to tell you. Mo Lian caressed the back of her head and comforted softly with a nod. I know, I know what you mean. My Kiao Kiao actually has never been alone. Kiao Mew pulled back and looked at him with her wide, misty eyes. She suddenly smacked him on the cheek. How come you know everything? Crown Prince Mo was momentarily stunned. He blinked his eyes and declared, Do you remember the first time we met? You were still a mute back then but I could comprehend your every expression. That should have been due to fate. You're the mute. She bit down on his ear. Mo Lian's body froze, and he coughed lightly after extricating her. He then squinted his phoenix eyes. Kiao Kiao, how about hubby helping you bathe? He originally thought that the little fellow would clobber his head again, and then she would kick him out in embarrassment. Yet who knew? Kiao Mu nodded emphatically and raised her arms up as if saying go ahead. Our dear crown prince froze from head to toe. Even his expression froze on his handsome face. What? What was going on? How come it didn't play out as per the normal routine? He only wanted to tease his wifey a bit. He didn't expect, though, that he would instead be the one freezing up from his wife's teasing. I I'm gonna see if there's still any hot water. Crown Prince Mo shot up and practically bolted out the door. Oh my heavens he didn't want to do it with his wifey in this rundowning. 1. Chapter 1975, 
no guts to enact your impure designs, Kiao Mu was still holding her arms up as she looked at the fleeing crown prince. She griped, what an insensitive guy. This darling was being merciful and letting you attend to her personally. Forget the fact that you're not grasping this opportunity, you're actually running away, dummy. Kiao Mu flopped into the bathtub and sprawled on the edge. She stared at the shut room door and harumphed. Couldn't you just heat up the water with your fire spirit? What hot water were you looking for, hubby? The water's too cold. Do you want to freeze this darling to death? Crown Prince Mo's head finally cleared up after he ran out the door and took a breath of fresh air, when a certain someone suddenly heard Kiao Kiao calling him inside the room. He braced himself and quickly pushed open the door to the room again. After shutting the door, he circled around behind the screen and beaked. The little fellow's entire body was underwater, only revealing her petite head out the edge of the tub. Her long, raven black hair floated on the surface of the water, meandering flexibly like seaweed. Kiao Kiao, where's your hot water? The little fellow looked at him with contempt. Molian. Who would freaking remember getting hot water? Heat it up. Kiao Mu sprawled on the tub while supporting her chin. She looked at him with bright eyes, her rosy cheeks adorned with several glistening water droplets. Molian hastily walked forward and generated a cluster of red flames in his palm. Kiao Mu promptly sensed the water in the bathtub steadily rising in temperature and hummed in satisfaction. Hubby, aren't you going to help me bathe? A certain person who was sprawled on the tub linked at the man. Molian felt his heart about to jump out. How could this little fellow be so lovable? Crown Prince Mo pinched her watery face and gritted. Darling, don't play with fire, got it? I'm not playing with fire. Miss Kiao cupped a handful of water and sprayed Molian's face with water droplets. This is clearly water. Crown Prince Mo kept gritting his teeth and moved to hug her. If you keep provoking me you'll have to pay for the consequences. Yet the little fellow was very accommodating and stretched out her petite arms with an expression that was asking for a hug. Her cute little face was beaded with one small water droplet after another. The little fellow had a dazed look in the hazy candlelight, and it made the crown prince fall into a trance. He reflexively reached out to grasp her slippery hand. The sensation instantly sent a shudder through his body and his mind cleared up somewhat. He hastily tossed away his wifey's hand and covered her head with a silk handkerchief. The usually resolute crown prince tripped over his words for the first time. You you, bathe yourself. Hubby is returning to my room to rest. Don't play with water and quickly go to sleep after bathing. See see you tomorrow, darling. Skid. Bam. The door slammed shut. Kiao Mu drifted her hand over the surface of the water as she propped up her chin. She grouched in a huff. How about the guts to carry out your impure thoughts? Kiao Mu quickly finished her bath and climbed out from the tub. After wiping herself dry and putting on clean clothes, she opened the window and peeked at the neighboring room. Her mind was full of ideas. Knock, knock. Knock. Crown Prince Mo had just finished washing up and was sitting at the table to drink water when he heard knocking on his room door. It wouldn't be his wifey, right? When Molian got up and opened the door, a faint fragrance assailed his nostrils. The little fellow took advantage of this opportunity to pounce into his arms, and Crown Prince Mo's embrace was promptly filled with a soft fragrance and warmth. Chapter 1976 The Tragic Crown Prince. Kiao Kiao you're drunk. The crown prince finally understood why the little fellow was acting so unusually today. I'm not drunk. The little one waved her petite hand with a prideful expression. How could I get drunk? I only drank three cups of fruit wine. Correct, you got drunk after drinking three cups of fruit wine. Don't deny it. The crown prince hastily carried the little fellow inside as he kicked the door shut. Hubby. Miss Gia was breathing warm air by his ear the whole time with a dazed look. How are you so useless? You wimped out just now. I didn't wimp out. As a man, how could Crown Prince Mo admit to his wife that he wimped out? Then how come you aren't looking at me? The little fellow cupped his handsome face and rubbed her petite face against the side of his face. She breathed. Hubby. Look, I'll be sixteen after the new year. I'm sixteen, I'm sixteen. Her demonic chant resounded through his ears. She grouched, back then in the village, 
that Ahua was already a mother of two at sixteen years old. Our dear Molian's mood went from extreme restraint to a gradual anticipation to right now. The desire to throw away all cares with abandon. It wouldn't do, his wifey was already giving him such an invitation. How could he disappoint his wifey? Wifey, hubby knows what you mean. Even though the timing and the location to consummate their union was not quite right. Since the opportunity arose, and his wifey was so passionately inviting him again and again and again, wouldn't he be someone who was unable to tell good from bad and be squandering a precious treasure? Darling, wait here for me. Crown Prince Mo euphorically set his wifey down on the bed and gave her a smooch. He then turned around and took out a pair of red candles from his inner world. The Crown Prince, who had been carrying a pair of red candles on him, quickly lit them ablaze. Since they were going to consummate their union, they couldn't be too unceremonious right? No matter how simple it was, they absolutely couldn't do without the wedding candles. By the time this crown prince finished busying himself and ran back to the bed, he saw that the little fellow was hugging a pillow while sprawled out on her back on his bed. She had long knocked out the crown prince. Were you freaking messing with him? Crown Prince Mo twitched his mouth as he sat down on the edge of the bed. He lightly poked a certain person's soft cheek with his slender finger. The little fellow was sleeping sweetly under the candlelight. Her brows were relaxed, and her lips were even curved slightly upward. Seeing that she was sleeping so tranquilly, Crown Prince Mo also smiled. He touched her exquisite brows and then lay down beside her. He propped up his chin with his hand and gazed at her for a long time before murmuring, What should I do with you? Kiam Yu woke up dazed the next day. She heard birds chirping outside the window. She reflexively opened her petite mouth to yawn. After moving, she creased her brows puzzledly. Strange, why didn't it feel like she was lying on a bed? Morning, Kiao Kiao. A handsome face popped up close and personal. Wah! Kiaomu nearly rolled off his body. Molian stretched out his arms and promptly scooped her back up. He winked at her and said, You're gonna run off without saying anything after pinning me down the whole night? How was there such a convenient thing in this world? Chapter 1977 Squaring Accounts Miss Kiaomu's pretty face inexplicably flushed bright red. No, it's you. Why are you here? Kiaomu wanted to get up, but because someone had secured his arms around her waist, it ended with no success. You don't remember? Molian furrowed his brows and pinched her petite face. You, after getting drunk yesterday, you kept telling hubby to help you bathe. After bathing, you even kept hugging hubby, wanting to sleep together. Non-nonsense. The little fellow immediately stammered and clobbered his head. Big liar. How could I be so immodest? Don't think of denying it. You started acting crazy after getting drunk. Yet you're denying it. After waking up, Molian gazed at her pitifully and pointed at her, who was still lying on top of him. You see, evidence. You pinned hubby down the entire night, making me nearly unable to breathe. Kiaomu hastily clambered to get up. Ho oh, how are you? Are you uncomfortable anywhere? Could it be that she really had such wild behavior after getting drunk? Impossible, right? Even though her moral character wasn't that great, she still had a bottom line. Her drunk behavior shouldn't have been that bad. My head hurts, and my limbs are numb. I can't breathe at all, Molian said gloomily with his eyes shut. Th then what should I do? Kiaomu clutched his wrist. I'll take your pulse and and then do acupuncture to clear your meridians. No need for that much trouble. Molian turned over. Miss Kiao felt the world spinning. When she looked up again, she saw that Crown Prince Mo was now pinning her down. We just need to switch positions. Molian propped up his chin and whispered near her ear. You, you, what are you doing? The little fellow instantly felt her confidence falter. For some reason, Th this position made her apprehensive. She felt like this crown prince with a gentle and warm exterior might very possibly transform into a wild wolf of the step in the next second. Feeling guilty, darling? Wh what am I guilty about? Kiaomu stiffened her spine and asserted, I I'm not the slightest bit guilty. What are you guilty about? If you were to know what kind of extremely tragic thing you did to me last night, you wouldn't be saying that. I I. I, I don't remember anything. The little fellow put on the face of a rogue. I, I didn't do anything. Ha. Huh. 
he kneaded her cheek with his finger. Do you remember what you said to me last night? You said, Xiao Hua from your village was already the mother of two at your age. Kiao Mu instantly felt as if she had been struck by a thunderbolt. She grabbed the blanket from the side and covered her face with it. Holy shit, how could she say something so shameless? Cuckoo, her brain had gone cuckoo yesterday. Molian twitched his mouth and pretended to grab the blanket covering her face. What are you covering yourself for? I haven't finished talking. This isn't the only brazen thing you did to me yesterday. I don't remember. The little fellow's muffled voice came from inside the blanket. It's fine. I remember it all. I'll fill you in on everything. K. Whoosh. The little fellow hastily lifted the blanket from her face and firmly sealed up the crown prince's mouth with her paws. You're not allowed to talk. Crown Prince Mo pulled down her paws and gently bit the petite fingers she had brought to his lips. How are you going to repay me? Chapter 1978, you can't just flee after teasing him. I I, I see that you feel Ki quite delighted on the inside. Dom Doon think of Tia tricking me. She felt her entire face boil after finishing her statement. Crown Prince Mo chuckled as he held her fingers, kissing them one by one. Afterwards, he said with a nod, Sure, I am quite delighted seeing you, but that doesn't mean you can run away every single time after teasing this Crown Prince, right? I I'm not running. Miss Kiao refused to admit it and argued. W.H. When did I run? He was still pinning her down right now. Crown Prince Mo bent over slightly and chuckled beside her ear. You would have long run away if I wasn't holding you down. Do you believe that? Gulp. The little fellow swallowed her saliva and hastily covered his dazzling phoenix eyes with her hands. You you are not allowed to look. It, it makes my heart flustered. How could I not look at you? Crown Prince Mo earnestly pulled down her petite hands. I didn't know in the past what purpose I's had. I finally know that it's to look at you. If you tell me not to look at you, then what purpose do I's have? The little fellow slipped herself inside the blanket and barked in a muffled voice while covering her burning face. You, you're tea teasing me. What was going on with this guy today? Dot. He was whispering sweet nothings bright and early in the morning making her flustered, her heart was thumping restlessly, wifey. Crown Prince Mo curved his lips and dug her petite face out from the blanket. He gazed at her with a smile and tucked a strand of hair behind her ear. You'll be sixteen after the new year. Kiam you really wanted to dig a hole and bury herself in it. For a while, she had indeed been thinking, Kiao Kiao would be sixteen after the new year. Sixteen meant that she was a big girl. Her body had been nourished pretty well too. Compared to her previous life, she was much too healthy. Besides, she had indeed been associating this with Kieta Village's Xiaohua, who was already the mother of two at sixteen years old. However, she had only been merely thinking about it. How would she know that she would start rambling after getting drunk and say everything all at once? Oh, it was so, so infuriating. Wifey. It's a promise. Once you turn sixteen, we'll con. Bonk. Miss Giao hammered the crown prince's head with her fist. She pulled out an immobilization talisman and slapped it on the crown prince's forehead. The crown prince. T Today we ha have to go draw lots and compete. Who hurry and get up. Kiao Mu pushed him hard and latched onto his limbs like an octopus. She rolled over before slipping off the bed onto the floor. You want to run again? Molian sat up and grabbed the little fellow's wrist. You have to fix this bad habit of fleeing after teasing him. Kiamu coughed. I I'm not running. You you. What are you so eager for? Th that. Yum. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. After saying this, she swiftly dressed herself and ran outside without turning her head. The crown prince. What should he do when his wife totally denied everything she said last night? The crown prince was in deep contemplation as he put on his outer garment and secured it with his belt. He paused when he was straightening the tassel on the jade pendant hanging from his waist, and his eyes lit up. Chapter 1979 Hubby understands. What his wifey most likely meant was that when the time came, the bridge they would cross would naturally be erected. Even if the bridge wasn't erected by that time, he would just have it get built. Crown Prince Mo intuitively felt that what he thought made a lot of sense. After getting dressed, he walked out the door with smiling eyes. He waved his paw at his wife who was doing morning exercises. Wifey, 
Hubby understands what you mean, swoosh. His wife immediately ran back to her room and shut the door without looking at him. She's embarrassed again. The crown prince mused despondently, perhaps, he should prepare several bottles of fruit wine. Everybody gathered in the first floor lobby after an hour. After eating the breakfast the inn provided, they planned to set out for the Shenghua Battle Arena. Today is our Apex Academy's first battle. Everybody make sure to do your best. Bring out all your vigor and spirit. Got it, students. Today is the battle that wins honor for our Apex Academy. After giving his impassioned speech, Mentorza turned around and became exasperated. Everybody had lagged around ten feet behind him, completely acting as if they did not know him. Instead, Zudanjin's impassioned speech attracted normal civilians pointing and chuckling. Dot. There was no mentor who was more tragic than him in this world, Zudanjin thought. Cough, cough, stew. Before Zhu Danjin could touch Kiao Kiao's shoulder, she had already dodged his hand. After classmate Kiao slunk away, Chi Xiu Xuan, the little fatty, and the others were not to be outdone. They also slipped past Mentor Zhu with a swish. Mentor Zhu indignantly pointed fingers at the students who had run far away. This group of brats. This group of brats all ran faster than rabbits whenever he got down to business with them. Everybody quickly arrived at the Shenghua Battle Arena and greeted the managers in charge as per usual before walking inside. However, those two managers were observing Yugui and them with extremely queer expressions. Mentor Zhu paused and tilted his head to look at them. Ah, uh, is it that Elder Hong has instructions? Oh, no. That manager quickly shook his head and said with a smile, I was only thinking that these young ladies are quite lucky. Not too soon after they left Godsend Academy, the remaining people all got into trouble. At this moment, they are afflicted by a strange disease that makes green fur grow all over their bodies. The guards from our city lord's estate have taken them all into custody. Mentor Zhu was stunned, and then he gave a nod. After they left the entrance and made their way into the interior of the battle arena, Zudanjin then eyed Kiao Mu surreptitiously. He coughed lightly and asked, Were you the one who did it? Kiao Mu deadpanned. Do I look like someone who could do such a senseless thing, too? How would you not? You definitely seem like you would. I've not done such a thing. Darling Kiao shook her head in all seriousness and declared with a harumph, If it was me, I would naturally have them all die. That is indeed the case. Everybody nodded. When they reached their seats, they saw from afar that there were people waiting for them. Seeing that the people they were waiting for had arrived. Katkin Academy's Captain Galuli quickly strode over and crossed his arms. I finally waited for you people to arrive. Why are you waiting for us? The little fatty laughed enigmatically. Ah, we very close. Chapter 1980, throwing down the gauntlet. Galuli's face darkened as she shouted angrily, Go away. Have your captain come talk. Everybody parted to the sides. Juan Mu King naturally served as Apex Academy's captain in this competition. Juan Mu King was furrowing his brows as he walked out from the crowd. He looked indifferently at the woman in front of him. What is it? You are Apex Academy's captain? Galuli sized up Juan Mu King before declaring with a nod. That's good then. This is our Katkin Academy's challenge. Swish. A thin piece of paper flew toward Duan Mu King's hand. Duan Mu King caught it between two fingers. Subsequently, he gave a shake, and that thin piece of paper immediately slid open. The two words battle challenge appeared in everyone's sight. Katkin Academy had thrown down the gauntlet, challenging Apex Academy in a one-on-one -on -one battle. If Apex Academy didn't want other people to look down on them, then they must accept. They had to accept no matter what. Dot. Juan Mu King looked at Galuli coldly before giving a nod. Apex Academy will accept your challenge. The spectators were promptly in an uproar. Fook. This was getting freaking lit. What kind of background did this Apex Academy have for even Katkin Academy to be targeting them? Katkin Academy's existence in Shunshan Prefecture was only second to the four great academies. Their strength was not to be underestimated. In contrast, this Apex Academy was unknown to the public. They had never heard of it before. Did the outcome of this contest even need to be said? It would certainly be Katkin Academy's total victory. Right? Everybody was making guesses, barely unable to hide their exhilarated expressions. This was too exciting, right? Galuli, 
Juan Mu King uttered this name aloofly, he put away the battle challenge and looked at the other party with a profound but fleeting expression. You will pay the price for acting rashly today. After saying this, he turned around and left. Galulai clenched her fists and wanted to rebut, but the group from Apex Academy turned around listlessly and walked back to their seats with Zudanjin and the other mentors. Galulai was furious so she turned around to storm off with belled fists. As the order of the matches were determined at random, Galulai did not know when their match against Apex Academy would be arranged. Nevertheless, she was not afraid. It didn't matter even if they were placed in the first match. She had already made ample preparations to fight against them. Right now, it was time for the student representatives to ascend the stage to draw lots. Watching Kiyami once again ascend the stage, even a fool would know that this little fellow that drew a bye two times in a row was probably someone with a lot of luck. However, because there was no free pass this time, Apex Academy's future looked bleak. Everybody watched Kiyamu to enjoy the show. Kiyamu had long finished drawing lots and was waiting on the side. Seeing that everybody was staring at her, the little fellow gripped her bamboo stick and glared back at them one by one. What are you looking at? All right the same mold. People with the same numbers, pair up. Number 3. Kiyamu looked at her bamboo stick and searched the crowd for a team representative with the number 3. Who is number 3? Number 3. What? You drew number 3. The other party suddenly let out a grief-stricken wail. Kiyamu turned around and saw the captain of River Horse Academy, Shagwa, look at her dumbly while holding a bamboo stick. Tears were practically forming in his eyes. Chapter 1981 releasing mystic beasts. Their luck couldn't be this bad, right? Shagwa dazedly held that number three stick. He checked it again closely, but still discovered that the number three stick was still that number three stick. It didn't change a bit. Shagwa really wanted to ball on the spot. What in the world was going on? Why was heaven playing this kind of trick on him? He didn't want to get matched up against Miss Kiao's team one bit. What kind of sin did he commit for him to draw such a savage little lady? Everybody couldn't help but be curious when they saw that Shagwa looked like he was about to faint. They gave him a look over. An acquaintance couldn't help teasing. Shagwa, what's wrong? What kind of strange face are you making? Your team is quite lucky. After all, this Apex Academy wasn't some famed academy, nor did it rank as a strong academy. It was naturally a piece of cake for River Horse Academy to defeat this kind of nameless academy and advance with no problem. Dot. Yet who knew, River Horse Academy's Captain Shagwa gazed aggrievedly at the peanut gallery and snapped. You guys know sheet. This group of ignorant bystanders was simply eager to fan the flames. He was already anxious to death. Okay, he didn't expect their academy to get eliminated in just the third round of the semi-finals during this time's competition. It was truly too early. In contrast, Kiyamu sized up River Horse Academy's Captain Shagwa curiously before skipping down the stage. Just as she returned to the seating area, the head referee Elder Hong walked onto the stage with a smile. He announced, everyone, the third round of the semi-finals of the much-anticipated academy ranking competition is about to commence. Before we start, a team has chosen to publicly challenge another in a battle. The entire arena was in an uproar. A lot of people in the audience who were unaware of the situation shouted exuberantly. As Elder Hong finished speaking, Galula led Zhao Li and the other people in her team slowly up the stage, receiving everybody's scrutinizing gazes. As this battle's challenger, Katkin Academy will be carrying out a fair battle with Apex Academy. Elder Hong performed an inviting gesture with his hand. Will Apex Academy's students come up on stage? While accompanied by fervent applause, Juan Mu King nonchalantly led the other seven students of Apex Academy up on stage. The competition is about to begin. Elder Hong flipped over the hourglass beside him and informed with a smile, the competition will be limited to one hour. Katkin Academy's Zhao Li moved first, hurling his fist at Kiao Mu with their currents. Yet Kiao Mu did not even look at him to dodge. At the same time, Duan Mu King and Qi Zhu Anxian surrounded him and each flung a surge of spiritual energy at Zhao Li's face. Both parties had executed deadly attacks. If Duan Mu and Zhu Anxian were to hit their marks, 
the unlucky Zhaoli would lose half his life if not die. Zhaoli roared furiously and immediately summoned his mystic beast with a stomp. That mystic beast seemed a bit like an ox, but it didn't have horns on its speed. It did have an extremely brutal appearance and promptly attempted to bite Qi Xuanxuan's forearm. However, Qi Xuanxuan stayed calm and unfazed. She released her golden fur lion with a wave of her hand. The golden fur lion was very brutal and bit Zhaoli's leg at once, tearing off a chunk of flesh on the spot. It hurt so much that Zhaoli dropped to the ground and rolled back and forth while yelling in pain. Galiuli was livid, and she abruptly swung her sword at Qi Xuanxuan. How dare you use such a murderous attack? Chapter 1982, This is a one-hit KO. Are you joking? You already issued a challenge, so of course we have to take it seriously. Who would give slack for no reason? What do you mean murderous attack? Qi Xuanxuan peered at Galiuli and shook her head while saying, It was your team member who first released his mystic beast. Since you wanted to be a battle between beasts, fine. Is it not reasonable for the mystic beasts to duke it out between themselves? You're trying to argue your way out of it. Before Galiuli could finish talking, she felt a palm strike targeting her cheek. Galiuli was furious and rolled on the ground to dodge that palm strike. When she looked up, she saw the little lady gaze at her frostily with an unfeeling expression. Galiuli was filled with frustration, so she struck a meandering surge of wood spirit energy into the ground. Brambles shot out from the ground toward Kiao Mu's direction, threatening to wrap her up. Shriek. The cry of an ancient phoenix from above descended on the stage. With a whoosh, a spray of flames lit the area in the center of the stage on fire. Galiuli and Zhaoli's two minor mystic beasts were trapped by the flames, and they frantically covered their heads while cowering, afraid to even glance at the ancient bloodfire phoenix. Dot. Don't be ridiculous, that was an ancient sacred beast, all right. As two minor mystic beasts, they wouldn't even make a snack for a sacred beast. Wah! Master couldn't be more awesome to have actually offended an ancient sacred beast. At this very moment, Galiuli was also probably dumbfounded. She was crouching motionlessly on the ground. Kiao Mu struck the surface of the stage with a surge of wood spirit. Subsequently, illusory man-eating flowers formed from wood spirit rapidly opened their jaws lined with serrated teeth and sped after Galiuli and Zhaoli. Roar! A ferocious beast jumped out from behind Zhaoli and swallowed several illusory man-eating flowers in one gulp. It flung Galiuli and Zhaoli onto its back and sprung upwards while carrying them. Boom! The bloodfire phoenix instantly took human form and descended from the sky straight onto that ferocious beast's back. This kick caused the unlucky fellow to crash heavily to the ground. The phoenix's human form was extremely exquisite and handsome. He looked like a 12 to 13 year old youth and was wearing a scarlet robe. He had red lips, pearly teeth, and sword brows and was peering around with bright eyes. He landed beside his little master with a swish. Master. Do you want me to gulp down all these small fry? These little playthings wouldn't even make a good snack. Kiao Mu looked at him silently and did not utter a word, but she was roasting him in her mind. Deaths probably wouldn't be much of a problem during competition, but if they were to gulp down the other party's entire team like you, that would definitely be a huge problem. Master, then I'll swallow that man. The bloodfire phoenix pointed at the pale-faced Zali. The latter simply wanted to stuff himself inside a crack in the ground when he saw the bloodfire phoenix pointing at him. He was so terrified that his teeth were chattering. The bloodfire phoenix couldn't resist snorting at his terrified state. He suddenly transformed into his true phoenix form with a turn of his head and shrieked at Zali. This promptly scared Zali into scrambling backwards while covering his head and screaming. His shameful behavior greatly amazed the audience. Ah, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Continue reading on 0N Mib 0XN 0VEL. Com. Chapter 1983. Reluctantly admitting defeat. Zhaoli rolled on the ground and shrunk behind the other people from Katkin Academy while screeching. Liu Lai, Liu Lai. Liu Lai hastily rushed over to block for him, and shouted at Kiao Mu. Can this still be considered a fair competition when you're using your sacred beast to bully others? Miss Giao slowly gazed at her and declared with a nod, wealth is also part of a person's ability. There was not a whit of untruth to this statement. Besides darkening her face, 
There was nothing Galulai could rebut Kiao Mu with, although the little lady was arrogant, nothing she said was wrong. This competition did not prohibit mystic beasts from entering battle. It then follows that since they were able to enter battle, the strength of a mystic beast would certainly be the key factor to its master's victory or defeat. She could only blame herself for having less favorable conditions. If it all depended on their own abilities, she might not necessarily lose. Bloodfire, I'm counting on you. The Bloodfire Phoenix let out a proud shriek and flapped its wings before diving swiftly towards Oli. Dot. Upon seeing that the Bloodfire Phoenix was about to badly injure Zhao Li with a spray of flames, Galulai flung her cape at the flames with a shout. Everybody witnessed the Fire Phoenix's flames burn that flying black cape into a crisp in a flash. The Blood Fire Phoenix immediately got enraged and shrieked at Galulai. It then circled around in the sky before diving down, spewing a streak of fire straight at Galulai and Zhao Li. With a whoosh, Galulai and Zhao Li were trapped in a circle of flames. They stood back to back with extremely stiff expressions. The Blood Fire Phoenix spread its wings in midair and glided for a semicircle preparing for an attack to blast both people to death at once. Continue reading on Mib0XN0VL.com. Katkin Academy's mentor was finally unable to watch on, so he jumped up from the seating area with a scream, everyone stop. Our Katkin Academy admits defeat. All the Katkin Academy students' faces were green. They were practically unable to take a deep breath under the pressure of the ancient Fire Phoenix. They truly didn't expect that there would be such a monstrous student in Apex Academy who would even summon a sacred beast for the competition. This was completely a whole nother level of battle, all right. Cheeks you and couldn't help but find it funny. She shook her head and remarked, how audacious of you to randomly issue challenges to people whose abilities you are totally ignorant of. Pardon her for failing to do the same. The Bloodfire Phoenix was chasing after the majority of the 12 Katkin Academy students. As for the remaining people, Juan Muking and them were able to take care of them. They didn't even need to summon their mystic beasts and just had to go up and beat them with their fists. Only the screaming wails of Katkin Academy's students could be heard from the stage. Everybody sitting in the seating area was simply unable to look straight at them. Was this the legendary asking to get beat up on stage? When Katkin Academy's mentor saw that the students from Apex Academy did not stop their attacks, he couldn't resist glaring at Zidanjin, Waigzu, and the other mentors. Quickly tell your students to stop. It's only a competition. Are you sure you even want people to die? Zidanjin rolled his eyes at him. Stop with your ambling. What's the use of admitting defeat outside the stage? Your students themselves haven't even admitted defeat yet. Liu Lai, don't push yourself. Hurry and admit defeat. Galulai felt a hint of repressed anger in her heart. Just because her family circumstances weren't as prominent as the other party, she had to suffer this kind of humiliation. She was born as a commoner, so her family background would never measure up to the mid and large scale patrician families. That girl who casually summoned an ancient bloodfire phoenix was definitely the daughter of some great patrician family. Chapter 1984 eating one's own bitter fruit, there was practically no doubt about this matter, only those prominent great patrician families in the upper three provinces could possibly possess a sacred beast to hold down the fort, the little lady most certainly hailed from a family background several hundred times better than Zoli's, otherwise, she wouldn't have the wealth needed to casually summon a sacred beast. Galulai was rapidly assessing in her mind as she withstood the scorching flames. Exactly which great patrician family from the upper three provinces commanded an ancient bloodfire phoenix, she was unable to make heads or tails of it. By this time, Zhaoli's legs had gotten hit by the bloodfire phoenix's flames. He rolled back and forth on the ground while moaning in pain. St. Stop. Galulai screeched. We, Katkin Academy admits defeat. Galulai heaved a long sigh, with the relief of safely surviving this incident. When she thought of how she luckily didn't issue some life and death challenge back then, her heart couldn't help but pound madly. Thankfully, everything was still not too late. Dot. If she had issued a life and death challenge, the results would be too horrible to conceive. Kiao Mu didn't plan to make things difficult for them either. When she heard Galulai shout to stop the battle, she beckoned to the Bloodfire Phoenix. The ancient Fire Phoenix gave a shriek before diving down happily next to his little master. By the time he got to Kiao Mu, 
the colossal pressure characteristic of a fire phoenix had completely vanished. There was merely a small, scarlet bird that chirped while landing on Kiao Mu's arm. He flapped his wings before hopping onto Kiao Mu's shoulder. Everybody from Katkin Academy was flabbergasted. It was difficult to relate this adorable creature to the gigantic creature that had just been shooting fireballs at their heels, tormenting them beyond belief. The little fellow stroked the phoenix's feathers before looking up at Galulai. She swept her an indifferent glance before turning to Duan Muking and the others. Let's go. Since the other party had admitted defeat, there was naturally nothing else to say. This was originally a ludicrous battle with great disparity in strength between both sides. Kiao Mu hadn't planned on really targeting these people with fatal attacks. It was just a quarrel to begin with. Since the other party had issued a battle challenge, they naturally had to accept or else they would be seen as cowards. Since the matter had now concluded, Kiao Mu was unwilling to linger on the stage any longer. They turned around and were planning to jump off the stage. Suddenly, they heard a shout from the seating area. Mentors yelled furiously, How dare you brat! The mentors from Apex Academy were already flying toward the stage. Kiao Mu glanced out of the corner of her eye and saw Zhao Li letting out a venomous snake from his sleeve. It stopped abruptly in midair before targeting her back with its fangs. Kiao Mu sneered. She shook her left wrist, and the white snake lit, which had circled around her wrist as a bangle, shot out with a swish. Wrath burned in its round and watery eyes. Its tiny snake head abruptly transformed into a huge apparition before swallowing that hurtling venomous snake head on. Ah! Galuli and company screamed. The white snake's titanic head had already come before the horrified Zhaoli. He simply had no time to evade. The serpent had already bit onto Zhaoli's upper body and his two legs floundered outside for a moment before the two halves of his body separated for good. One. Ah! Piercing screams came from the stage. Everybody's sight was dyed with blood. They were all thoroughly terrorized by the bloody scene before their eyes. Chapter 1985. Only himself to blame. Ah! Galula screamed shrilly, her eyes were riveted in disbelief at Zhaoli's remaining lower body that got tossed onto the stage like trash, brutal, barbaric, and bloody. Her eyesight was dyed in blood, and her entire body trembled reflexively. Murder. You killed Zhaoli. Ah, it's murder. Zhaoli's dead, you killed him. A good many students from Katkin Academy were freaked out of their minds. It was mainly that the scene in front of them was too horrifying. A serpent had swallowed half of his body while he was still alive. How awfully unlucky was this Zhao Li to end up without an intact corpse? Would the Zhao clan take this lying down? Galulai and company's teeth were chattering in fear. Zh Zhao Li's dad, the family head of the Zhao clan, one won't let you off? Galulai trembled all over afraid to look straight at the remaining half of Zhao Li's corpse. Dot. The colossal serpent had surveyed the area before shrinking back with a swish to wrap around Kiao Mu's left wrist motionlessly. Galulai and company traced their gazes to Kiao Mu's wrist. Just looking at this white jade bangle the little lady was wearing around her wrist, who would have known that it was actually a ferocious beast? It was too horrifying. Continue underscore reading on my 0 xn 0 vl com. This shook everybody to the core. The 10,000 spectators in the vast seating area were also absolutely quiet. Kiao Mu swept Galulai an icy gaze. Zidanjin, Waigzu, and the other mentors had reached Kiao Mu by this time. When Katkin Academy's mentor got to the stage, he glowered at Zidanjin and them, reprimanding, you, how dare your Apex Academy flagrantly kill our student on stage. You have to take full responsibility for this matter. What responsibility? Zudanjin rebuked grimly, he fatally surprise attacked another person in the back, but he got killed instead because of his inferior ability. He simply deserved it. 1. You. Katkin Academy's mentor turned sullen, and tried to vindicate. How? How can this be considered a surprise attack? It was clearly. Clearly Zhao Li, he, go on, keep going, can't spin a tail anymore huh? Mentor Zhu sneered, everybody saw this surprise attack happen with their own eyes. Let me see how you're going to justify yourself, stop wasting your breath on them. Mentor who waved him off and told Kiao Mu and the others, go down and rest first. Since the mentors were there to settle things, 
She naturally didn't need to waste any more energy. Kiao Mu nodded as a matter of course and walked down the stage with the rest of her team. Katkin Academy's mentor was unwilling to just let them walk off like that. Just as he shouted, stand right there for me, mentors blocked his way. Hey, I say, are you looking to fight? No wonder your Katkin Academy students are so underhanded. It turns out that they got influenced by mentors like you. WH who are you saying is underhanded? Like I said, Zhao Li didn't do a surprise attack. He was only, only young and aggressive, unwilling to acknowledge defeat. Scram. Mentors afflict his sleeves angrily. He only has himself to blame for getting killed in response to his surprise attack. There is no responsibility to assume at all. You, you people, you. Katkin Academy's mentor wanted to keep arguing, but the head referee Hong Kai had walked over and cupped his hands. Will this Katkin Academy mentor please resolve your personal grudge with Apex Academy off the stage? Chapter 1986 Poor mental toughness. We still have to continue the matches. Hong Kai gave Katkin Academy's mentor an apathetic glance before extending his hand toward the edge of the stage. His meaning was clear. This mentor should get off the stage and not obstruct students from competing in the next match. Katkin Academy's mentor flung his sleeves angrily and ordered his students to carry the remaining half of Zhao Li's corpse. Those two students who were carrying the corpse kept turning their heads to the side, afraid to look at Zhao Li's gruesome remains. They couldn't stop their hands from shaking and felt like they would probably have nightmares from this. Useless things. Katkin Academy's mentor berated, keep steady. They had to hand this remaining half of a corpse to the Zhao clan no matter what. As for those old scores with Apex Academy, he was unable to do anything about them as a mere mentor. The people from the Zhao clan could deal with them on their own. Katkin Academy's mentor had a ruthless look. The Zhao clan was not some minor family clan that could be easily dismissed. Since that Apex Academy student had killed Zhao Li and offended the Zhao clan, there was most likely no way to end things peacefully. Kiao Mu had already returned to her seat by this time. She took out a small jar of peanuts from her inner world and snacked on them with her companions. Dot. They chatted as they ate, completely heedless of how stimulating that scene of a bloody half a corpse from earlier could be. They were still eating jubilantly. When the little fatty looked up, he saw that Galulai had turned around to run out of the seating area. She had grabbed onto a column and was retching. What's up with her? She had probably gotten nauseated by the corpse just now. Chi Xiu Xiu and had no mental burden at all and grabbed a handful of peanuts to snack on. She shook her petite hand with a disapproving expression and commented, her mental toughness is too poor, if she can't even handle that child's play, what should she do when she encounters zombies that are rotting all over? Continue underscore reading on my 0 xn 0 vl com. Martin nodded. That's right. In other words, it's useless if a person only has strong capabilities. They also have to have strong mental toughness. Otherwise, if they feel faint after getting exposed to some blood like she did, how would they be able to fight? The other party will strangle them dead in a flash. Kiao Mu expressionlessly looked down at her hands that were now emptied of the jar the venerable beech blossom immortal had taken away. Mo Lian couldn't resist wanting to laugh. He turned to the little fellow and pinched her cheek. You don't need to pay any mind to those people of no concern. Your academy's mentors look pretty idle, so just let them handle it. Kiao Mu gulped down the last two peanuts in her hands and looked up silently at Zudanjin and the other mentors who were storming back. That mentor from Katkin Academy is too ludicrous. Zudanjin ranted, the facts are already obvious, yet he's still quibbling persistently. I don't want to say anything to him anymore. Everyone nodded. Mentor, what did that guy say afterwards? He said bullshit. Mentor Zu shook his hand and plopped down next to them. That guy was still going on and on. So your mentor Waigzu went up and gave him two punches. That finally shut him up. Everyone, mentor Zu smacked his armrest and lectured them with heartfelt words. Was mentor Waigzu correct in solving things this way? Obviously not. When we can reason with others, don't casually get physical with them, right? Chapter 1987, instantly face slapped. Don't learn from mentor Waigzu, he is too hot-tempered. Zudanjin sighed as he waved his hand in disapproval. However, 
he saw Qi Xu Anxuan and the others worshipping Wai Xu with sparkling eyes. Zidanjin couldn't resist twitching his mouth. What expressions are those? I feel that mentor Wai Xu did amazing this time. The little fatty brandished his chubby paw and asserted, when that guy was rambling on, I couldn't help wanting to beat him up. Right, right, right. Especially when he was sycophantically trying to justify Zhao Li's innocence. I really couldn't control myself from wanting to beat him up, Qi Xu Anxuan chimed in while nodding her head. Mentor Zhu, you guys shouldn't be doing this. We should still talk reason where it requires it, right? It's only when reason doesn't work that we resort to alternate methods. Mentor Zhu earnestly tried to persuade everyone. He also turned to look at Miss Kiao, who had been silently keeping to herself and snacking on dried fruits. Look, Kiao Kiao is demonstrating the truly correct attitude in resolving issues, yeah? Mentors appointed at Kiao Mu and nodded approvingly. Sometimes when the other person sees you remaining reticent, right, he'll stop bickering. We have to understand one point. Violence, is truly the most inferior way of solving problems, right? Juan Mu King and the others silently looked at the little stoic. Did Mentor Zhu neglect something? Wasn't it Kiao Kiao who let out the white snakelet without a second word to bite Zhao Li dead? Dot. Kiao Kiao definitely wouldn't bicker with other people, yeah? Why would she bicker? Wasn't her way of solving problems directly slap the other person dead, and then the world would regain its peace and quiet? You're telling Kiao Kiao to go talk reason with someone else? Ha 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 ha. Everybody wanted to laugh out loud. Continue underscore reading on my 0 xn 0 vlcom Wouldn't that be a fantasy? Could Kiao Kiao bicker with you? If she had the time to bicker with you. She would instead smack you dead so that you'll forever be unable to make a fuss again, alright? You don't understand Kiao Kiao's way of doing things. This time, even Crown Prince Mo swept Zudanjin in extremely disapproving look. The venerable Peach Blossom Immortal sitting beside him, who had also snatched Kiao Kiao's peanut jar, really wanted to laugh, but he held back and coughed lightly. The little stoic turned a deaf ear to everybody's remarks and nibbled her dried fruits unperturbed. Boom! A sudden tremor came from the seating area away from them. It made the two teams currently on stage jump in fright. Everybody stood up, and even the currently competing teams paused their battle and peered over at the source of the sound. They saw that a huge pit had opened up under that Katkin Academy mentor. How could the mentor have expected his seat to suddenly cave in out of the blue? How big of a pit was this? The mentor's entire body had dropped into the pit. He was totally stupefied. Not only was the Katkin Academy mentor confounded, even those managers in charge of maintaining order in the Shenghua Battle Arena were bewildered. Their Shenghua Battle Arena had hosted so many competitions, basically having to conduct competitions of various sizes every year. They had never heard of someone dropping into a pit, all right? What was this Katkin Academy mentor's tonnage to push the pitiful ground past its breaking point and make him cave in? PFFT. The venerable Beach Blossom Immortal burst out in laughter and started laughing his head off. Everybody glanced teasingly at the embarrassed mentor Zhu. Chapter 1988. My face kinda hurts. Does your face hurt? Mentor Zhu, ha 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 ha. The little fatty and the others guffaws formed an entirely different kind of orchestra that played the BGM for Mentor Zhu's embarrassment and his nonplussed expression. Cough. Zudanjin coughed lightly and turned to see even Mentor Wai Xu's stern face unable to hide a smile. He had just praised Kiao Kiao for her correct attitude in resolving issues when the unlucky Katkin Academy mentor was struck by disaster. Even though Miss Kiao was keeping quiet and just gnawing on dried fruit, Zudanjin dared to bet with his life that this girl absolutely had something to do with the deep pit appearing under the Katkin Academy mentor's butt. Needless to say, Zudanjin indeed did feel that his face was freaking hurting. Xiao Kiao, what exactly did you do? Zudanjin coughed again and looked exasperatedly at this worrisome student of his. He had just been trying to elevate her image, yet who knew? Miss Kiao glanced at Mentor Zhu out of the corner of her eye before expressionlessly turning her face away, continuing to nibble on her dried fruits. However, Qi Xu Anxuan and company couldn't stop cracking up. It was like this had tickled their funny bone, and they rocked with laughter. Dot. 
let time rewind back to 15 minutes ago, mentor who waved his hand and told them, go down and rest first, Kia Mu flicked her finger just as she turned around, and an explosion talisman veiled by an invisibility talisman stuck securely to the quibbling Katkin Academy mentors but, what happened afterwards basically happened as a matter of course, as long as Kia Mu willed it, she could let that explosion talisman detonate whenever she wanted. She had just glimpsed that Katkin Academy mentor pause his long-winded quibbling and drink from the teacup a student handed him. Miss Kiao thus decisively detonated the explosion talisman on his butt. This Katkin Academy mentor had not only ended up falling shamefully, as his butt was most likely the worst hit area. It was a question whether it had cracked open. What do you guys think I did? The little stoic swept a glance at Mentor Zhu and the others. She calmly lifted up a cup of spiritual tea, but before she could raise it to her lips, Feng Chen snatched it from next to her. Good tea. I can tell that it's unordinary just from smelling it. The little stoic glanced up at him and could only take out another cup. She took a sip before questioning nonchalantly, do I look like someone who would do something that silly? You do. Everybody gave her an affirmative without doubt. Although they didn't know what she had done, they were very certain that she was the culprit. By this time, the Katkin Academy mentor had already climbed out of the pit. His face had flushed bright red, and he pointed at those managers of the Shengwu Battle Arena who had come over while interrogating agitatedly, You people, your Shengwu Battle Arena often hosts competitions and the floor has to bear the force of people's repeated spiritual attacks. You don't know how to schedule regular maintenance. Even though the managers were twitching their mouths, they still soothingly placated the Katkin Academy mentor and ordered people to bring him away to apply medicine and rest. Everybody's eyebrows couldn't help jerking when they noticed the Katkin Academy's awkward walking posture. This unlucky Katkin Academy wouldn't have gotten hurt somewhere he shouldn't have. Wasn't it just getting blasted in the butt by an explosion talisman? Was it to the extent to make his walking posture this awful? Kiao Mu lampooned in her mind, chapter 1989, forfeiting the match, cough. Kiao Kiao, I I didn't see you do anything. Mentor Zhu was still curious. He really didn't catch when Kiao Mu had done anything suspicious. It was evident that Kiao Mu had already done something to the Katkin Academy mentor prior to that. From the Katkin Academy's wimpy look, Miss Kiao's attack had packed a pretty powerful punch. So silly. A certain person refused to admit it and argued, I couldn't care less about doing anything to him. What talisman did you use? It packs a lot of power, the venerable Beach Blossom Immortal asked. Everybody then understood that Miss Kiao had used a talisman just now. Strange, they didn't see her do anything. So when did the talisman stick onto him? Kiao Mu coughed and then silently popped another dried fruit into her mouth. Mo Lian couldn't resist muffling his laughter, and he caressed the little fellow's head. Naughty. Everybody nodded in agreement. They were especially in accord with the crown prince's evaluation. Dot. This child was indeed naughty. Look at what she did to the Katkin Academy mentor. He had been shamed in public in utter disgrace. The funniest thing was that Mentor Zhu had originally been praising this child with all his might, saying that silence was golden. Yet he got faces lapped in less than three seconds. This wouldn't traumatize Mentor Zhu for the rest of his life, right? See if he was going to randomly praise Kiyoki Ao in the future. Ha 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 ha. Everybody couldn't resist wanting to dissolve into laughter when they thought of this. Kiao Mu turned her petite face and shook her sleeve. She rescued Mentor Zhu from his embarrassment by pulling out an explosion talisman and slapping it into his hand. Th this is an explosion talisman. Miss Kiao glanced at Zidanjin. Do I need to demonstrate for you? Oh, no need. Just the name was enough to tell that this talisman wasn't a pleasant one. It was better used against enemies. Mentor Zhu put it away, and his mood promptly brightened. Keep laughing, laugh your heads off. Even though he got face slapped instantly, which of you received the same treatment as he did? Xiao Kiao even gave him a talisman. Cheeks you anks you and giggled while covering her mouth. Mentor, our Kiao Kiao actually would probably never bicker with other people whenever she can use her hands. So please don't make that kind of joke in the future. Mentor Zhu chuckled in embarrassment before pointing to the stage and shouting all of a sudden. Hey, 
Hey, you guys should get ready now, you're about to go up on stage again. This should be considered your first true match. Work hard for the honor of the academy. With mentors whose impassioned and fervent shout, the mentors and students of the nearby academies turned around to look at them. Mentor who cleared his throat and covered his face while turning his head aside. He scooted his stool toward Mentor Wigzu and muttered. How come I don't want to know this person at all? Mentor Wigza cast his eyes elsewhere without much of an expression. All right, Mentor. Here, let me treat you to a bun. The little fatty stuffed a veggie bun into Mentor Zu's mouth at once. He also bit onto one before walking up to the stage with Duan Muking and the others. This match was Apex Academy vs River Horse Academy. There was one thing Mentor Zu was right about. After getting two buys in the previous rounds, this was their first true battle in the academy ranking competition. They were very excited. Students from River Horse Academy, you must not let us down. We've been waiting to battle against you guys. The eight students of Apex Academy lined up in a row on the stage. Besides the stoic face and Captain Duan Mu, practically everybody else was looking toward the other side of the stage with kindly smiles, just waiting for the students from River Horse Academy. They were still smiling two minutes later. Chapter 1990, Luck. Five minutes later, Chi Xiu Ang Xuan and them were unable to smile anymore. The head referee Hong Kai walked to the center of the stage with large strides. He first looked at Chi Xiu Ang Xuan and them whose smiles had stiffened somewhat, and then at the seating area. He repeated his announcement, Will the students of River Horse Academy please enter the stage? The sound of shuffling came from the seating area and everybody looked at each other. They were all looking for traces of the students from River Horse Academy. Hey, what's going on? Where's River Horse Academy's Captain Shagwa? What time is it already? Why haven't they appeared yet? What the hell is River Horse Academy up to? Do they think the Academy ranking competition is a trifling matter? That's right. What's the matter? Could it be that Shagwa and them feel that they won't win against Apex Academy, so they're forfeiting the match? If that's the case, they really shouldn't be. Even if they can't win, they still should have a go at it. If they just forfeit the match like this without saying anything, then they really are too cowardly. Dot. That's right, that's right. People's discussions went on non-stop, and the expressions of Chi Xiu Ang Xuan and the other students from Apex Academy started turning foul. From their understanding of Shagwa, even if he wasn't going to compete, he wouldn't vanish like this. He would come up on stage at least and forthrightly admit defeat. Only then would the match conclude perfectly. No? Continue reading on my 0 xn 0 vel com. Everybody subconsciously turned to look at the expressionless stoic face. Wait a bit. Light the incense. At Hong Kai's order, someone lit a mid-length incense at the center of the stage. If the students of River Horse Academy do not come on stage in 15 minutes, this will be considered a forfeit. According to the rules, Apex Academy will then automatically enter the fourth round of the semi-finals. The audience burst into an uproar. Everybody really had no idea whether those guys from Apex Academy had saved the world in their previous life to have such DM and good luck. Holy shit. A senior from Shunshan Prefecture's Celestial Light Academy couldn't resist cursing, could they not have such a over the top luck? Are those two female members of Apex Academy's team the people whom we rode the terrestrial whale with when we just arrived in Shunshan Prefecture? An ordinary looking female member of Celestial Light Academy's substitute team questioned with furrowed brows. That's right. Liu Hao nodded and told that woman in a low voice, Princess. We just have to wait and see. Their luck is too good. A pretty woman sitting next to the princess couldn't resist pouting. River Horse Academy is actually forfeiting the match. We never had such good luck. In reality, they only stood out more from the rest of the new students who had similarly just come to Shanshan Prefecture. That's why they got the chance to come observe the ranking competition. The chance of them truly going up to battle was basically zero. Shut up, stop jabbering next to me, the princess reprimanded. Big brother Xu. The woman pursed her lips as she looked aggrievedly at a square-jawed man beside her. The man couldn't help but reproach, Liu Tanshan, 
How many times have I told you already? Don't put on your princess airs here. Don't make a fuss with you. Uh. Chen Hani U smiled triumphantly. She swept a look of dominance at the livid Liu Tanshan before looking away in distaste. Seeing that the incense on the stage was about to go out, the spectators in the seating area couldn't help but sigh. Chapter 1991 Accident no one could beat Apex Academy's luck. Could this be progressing toward a third round by? This luck made people too envious. Needless to say, Apex Academy's luck attracted even those big academies' attention, especially when one of the students from Apex Academy summoned a sacred beast during the prior match. Ah, that's not right. That little lady seemed to have two particularly terrifying beasts. The white snake that suddenly appeared also emanated a heavy pressure. Even though they were temporarily unable to make out the beast's level, they sensed that the pressure it gave them was not any less than what they felt from the Bloodfire Phoenix. It was probably going to be a tall order to defeat Apex Academy since there was someone like that in the team. When everybody came to this conclusion, they could not help but be dejected. Even if the people from River Horse Academy came, they would probably also be swept off the stage in minutes. All right, time is up. Take down the incense. Right now, I announce that due to River Horse Academy's untimely forfeit of the match, Apex Academy will hence successfully advance to the dot. Wait. Someone interrupted Honk I. Everybody turned to look, and they couldn't help but turn boisterous. They saw Shagwa leading over the group of students from River Horse Academy. They kept their gazes lowered as they walked over with large strides. Something happened on our way here that delayed our arrival. Shagwa explained nonchalantly. He glanced at the gradually dimming incense out of the corner of his eye. Luckily, we could make it at the last second. The atmosphere in the seating area was instantly set ablaze. Everybody was smacking their chairs and cheering. River Horse Academy's courage for not fearing the competition was simply commendable. Everybody clapped their hands and cheered. For a moment, the atmosphere in the arena reached a boiling point. Good. Everybody clapped with all their might, expectantly awaiting their entertaining battle. Of course, most of the academies were more interested in observing Apex Academy's battle strategy so as to counter them effectively when they were matched in the future. Shagwa led the River Horse Academy team up onto stage. Every one of them was hanging their heads, refusing to look at Kiao Mu and company. Chi Xiu and Xiuan knitted her brows. Because they had worked together to the end when they were trapped in the underground base, they had mostly let bygones be bygones with the people from River Horse Academy and Sunlight Academy. Their impression of Shagwa's group had also improved quite a lot. Yet upon meeting them again on stage now, Shagwa's group didn't even give a greeting. The fact that Shagwa's group didn't even look at them made it feel like they were looking down on them. This pissed off the little fatty and the others. Okay. The head referee Honkai announced with a hearty laugh, even though River Horse Academy was late, they got here just as the extended time limit ran out. I'll cut out the long-winded talk. Your teams can start battling now. After Honkai turned and left, Shagwa suddenly gestured to this team with a look, and ten members simultaneously attacked. Their mystic energy and spiritual energy wove into a net that rushed toward Kiao Mu and company. After going through so many team battles, Kiao Mu's group had ample experience in team formations. The eight of them swiftly took their positions. The little fatty formed an earth spiritual barrier and charged forward as the vanguard, while Qi Xiu Xiuan and Duan Mu King darted forth close behind. Chapter 1992, Manipulated, Duan Mu King activated his wood spirit, prompting wood brambles to drill out from the ground and entwine Shaguan Company's legs. On the other hand, Qi Xiu Xiuan flung down several thunderbolts. However, as she had yet to break through to the spiritual realm, she could not wield spiritual energy as she wished. Nevertheless, under guidance from the Academy's Thunder Spirit specialty mentor, Chi Xiu Xiuan had already learned how to make use of her limited spiritual energy to exhibit the greatest power while maintaining an optimum duration. Behind the two were Mata and Huatao, who wielded the Water Spirit, and Jiang Sha Oxin who wielded the fire spirit. They each gave it their all while clashing with their opponent's spiritual energy. Lastly, classmate Luyu activated an earth spiritual barrier to assist the little fatty in shielding everybody inside it. Meanwhile, 
Kiao Mu didn't seem to be responsible for anything. She just tagged along everybody else and flicked over several fire spirit talismans or water spirit talismans wherever she pointed her fingers. This eight-person team formed an impregnable fortress. Their opponents were simply unable to break their formation. The mentors from Apex Academy couldn't stop nodding repeatedly in admiration. The team formation that these young kids had refined was pretty good. It combined attack and defense and was excellent at executing both. They were able to easily withstand the attacks of ten people with their eight without any signs of fatigue. Kiao Mu was even able to weave between the team members to back up whomever needed it. This eight-person formation simply couldn't be any better. Everybody's position was basically on point and they complemented each other's strengths and weaknesses very well. This eight-person formation of theirs could simply toy with any opponents that numbered twenty or less. Mentor Zhu smiled contentedly at the fact that the academy's students had grown so much. He nodded repeatedly and commented, Not bad, not bad. It was simply a brilliant decision to throw them into the underground battle arena tournament. If they hadn't been teaming up every day to battle, how would they have cultivated such rapport? Mentor Wags swept Zudanj in a nonchalant look. The decision to boot them into the Kiang Luo underground battle arena was mine. You had even objected back then, Zudanjin. Boom. The two teams' attacks collided fiercely. The leader, Shagwa, abruptly looked up. His eyes were bloodshot, and an extremely powerful force exploded from his body. It promptly formed a small-scale windstorm that raged toward Kiao Mu. Shagwa's abnormal state immediately rang alarm bells for Duan Mu King and company. When they suddenly saw him target Kiao Mu, they immediately shifted into a double-sided triangular formation that placed Miss Kiao in the center. Duan Mu King's lips were pressed into a frown as he blocked the gust of wind that Shagwa shot over. Everybody countered by attacking Shagwa with several fireballs and ice spikes. Cheeks Yu Anxiun hollered furiously, Shagwa, what are you thinking of doing? You, could this punk be thinking of turning against them completely? It had to be known that they had been holding back since the start of the match. None of them had summoned their mystic beasts, after all. If they really did summon their beasts, then there simply wouldn't be any need for this match to continue. Yet the Shagwa turned a deaf ear to their shouts. A crimson light flashed through his eyes, and he suddenly howled at the sky. The Nine River Horse Academy team members behind him all opened their eyes wide. Crimson lights also flitted across their eyes, and they grabbed their mystic weapons and pounced madly toward Kiao Mu, whom the others from Apex Academy had shielded in the center. It was with a vengeance that seemed as if they would not let it rest. Bewilderment surfaced in everybody's eyes. Could Shagwa's group be under someone's manipulation? Chapter 1993, Strike Like a Thunderbolt Kiao Mu didn't panic at this situation. She flung out several hundred defensive talismans, which revolved around her and forged an extremely powerful defensive talisman matrix. She had already darted out from behind her teammates and she brought down a dozen or so immobilization talismans with a flick of her fingers. After the talisman energy took effect, the immobilization talismans were only able to barely immobilize four out of River Horse Academy's ten people. The remaining six had gone berserk, and they attacked in unison with a burst of spiritual energy. It instantly surged toward Kiao Mu with a force that threatened to topple mountains and overturn seas. Mentor Zu was about to jump out but Mo Lian stopped him. Crown Prince Mo gazed coldly at the battle on the stage. He reassured calmly, believe in Kiao Kiao. She will be fine. The spiritual energy that River Horse Academy's remaining six people generated crashed into the defensive talisman matrix. The collision produced a blinding light. After the light subsided, Kiao Mu's figure immediately flashed behind Shagwa. Shagwa abruptly turned around and his bloodshot eyes flickered. Unfortunately for him, Kiao Mu struck him down onto the stage with a knife hand strike before he could react. Meanwhile, Duan Mu King used wood spiritual energy to bind two River Horse Academy team members. Besides the three remaining people who were still desperately resisting, Kiao Mu's immobilization talismans had already frozen the others in place. Cheeks Yu Anxiun, the little fatty, and the others naturally had an easier time fighting them. The battle soon came to an end, with Kiao Mu's group restraining all the River Horse Academy students. However, 
Even though the River Horse Academy students were shackled by spiritual energy, they were still squirming non-stop, attempting to break their binds and counter-attack. Kiao Mu walked up and knocked them all out with knife hand strikes without any hesitation. Afterwards, she turned around and said expressionlessly, bring them off the stage. If the people in the arena were still unable to see that something was off about Shagwan them, then they would be fools. What happened? Everybody whispered in bewilderment. What are you people doing? A mentor from Celestial Light Academy questioned as he stood up from the first row, pointing at Kiao Mu's group. Kiao Mu did not pay the slightest bit of attention to him. She had everyone drag the ten students of River Horse Academy down the stage to an empty area. Suddenly, Shagwa opened his eyes and bolted up. He pounced frenziedly at the little fatty, who was restraining his arms. He was about to bite the little fatty's shoulder. Yet Kiao Mu's punch fiercely hit Shagwa's left cheek. This also promptly knocked out several of his teeth and he spewed out a mouthful of blood. She then stabbed one needle after another into the back of Shagwa's neck. Kiao Mu's movements were vicious and precise. Shagwa only felt faint for less than a second before hanging his head down again unconsciously. You! What are you doing? The Celestial Light Academy mentor couldn't resist reprimanding her when he saw her extremely frigid and wildly arrogant behavior. Kiao Mu turned around and swept him an incomparably frosty look. The Celestial Light Academy mentor got intimidated by this gaze, and he uncontrollably stepped backwards. Carry them over there. Kiao Mu was in a very bad mood at the moment. She stated this coldly while pointing at an empty area. The little fatty and the others of course had no objections. They directly carried the ten people over and lined them up on the ground. Kiao Mu moved her fingers and a stream of sacred water shot out from her fingertips. She swiped her left hand through the air, scattering a handful of medicinal powder that wafted into everybody's noses. Chapter 1994, A Pill Alchemist's Consummate Skill You! What medicinal powder did you use? The Celestial Light Academy mentor yelled in a fluster. He hastily covered his nose with his sleeve to avoid breathing in any medicinal powder. Wow, it smells so good. What medicinal powder is this? My whole body feels refreshed after smelling it. I feel like the mystic energy in my body is circulating faster. Yeah, I feel like it's even better than using mystic returning medicinal solution. The students standing behind Kiao Mu all sniffed as hard as they could, clambering to take in the remnant medicinal powder fragrance. Don't randomly sniff when you don't even know what it is. What if it's poison? The Celestial Light Academy mentor scolded the students beside him. Mentor, I feel like I recovered a third of the mystic energy I expended in the battle earlier. Right, right, I feel the same way. Ludicrous. That Celestial Light Academy mentor continued to cover his nose as he scolded those two students who were discrediting them. How can there be such a fast-acting medicinal powder in this world? Don't be daydreaming. Beware of any tricks. All of you hold your breaths. However. The Celestial Light Academy mentor couldn't control people's breathing. Since they couldn't reason with the mentor, the students just kept mum. They still stealthily breathed in the medicinal powder though. Kiao Mu couldn't care less about that self-opinionated mentor. With a flip of her hand, ten gleaming needles appeared between her fingertips, and she stabbed them at the ten people in front of her like a fairy scattering blossoms. The ten people from River Horse Academy opened their eyes at the same time and all spit out mouthfuls of black blood. The Celestial Light Academy mentor screeched in alarm, You, stop right now. Quickly have the people in charge of the arena come over. How could they just let this little witch casually harm students from other academies? Who are you calling a little witch? Cheeks you anks you and hollered, If you don't understand what other people are doing, just shut up. Alright, Molian's group had already made their way to Kiao Mu at this point. They swept in different gazes at the blustering Celestial Light Academy mentor. Get out of the way. Fang Chen flicked a burst of spiritual energy at the Celestial Light Academy mentor's knee, which promptly made him drop to the floor on one knee. Subsequently, a gust of wind from a palm strike swept the Celestial Light Academy mentor away like trash. He tumbled into the seating area crushing several stools. Kiao Mu had not even looked that Celestial Light Academy mentor in the face. She took out a porcelain bottle and poured out ten pills. She then struck the ten people's acupuncture points from a distance, 
forcing them all to open their mouths. The pills entered each of the ten people's mouths and dissolved upon contact, leaving behind a faint medicinal fragrance in their mouths. This great master has incredible medical skills. My senile self is in admiration. A white-haired elder walked out from Shunshan Prefecture's Starlight Academy team. He gave Kiao Mu a friendly smile and cupped his hands courteously. Ah, isn't that Starlight Academy's great pill master, Great Master Zhu? Even Great Master Zhu is so respectful toward this young lady. It looks like this young lady's medical skills are truly incomparably impressive. Kiao Mu turned around and politely returned the greeting to Great Master Zhu. Senior is exaggerating. You flatter me by saying Great Master. I merely studied several years of medicine with my teacher and only know a bit. A hey, little Great Master, you're too modest. Great Master Zhu waved his hand with a smile. By this time, the Ten River Horse Academy students were also slowly stirring awake. Chapter 1995, Tracking Down. The leader, Shagwa, looked dazedly at the people around him. He struggled to sit up and asked in bewilderment, What, what happened? Kiao Mu flicker her fingers, and several talismans shot into all ten of the River Horse Academy students' foreheads with a faint blue light. Someone poisoned you guys and they even used a forbidden curse on you. When we were facing off earlier, you guys went completely berserk and tried to kill us. Kiao Mu explained calmly, rest well once you get back. You guys are fine at the moment. After saying this, she tossed Shagwa porcelain bottle. All of you take one pill each day, and you'll fully recover in three days. Thank, thank you. Shagwa could hear himself speaking with a lisp and he hastily covered up his mouth and smiled at Kiao Mu in embarrassment. Although he didn't know what exactly had happened, he could tell that it wasn't anything good from everybody's expressions. Do you all still remember when you lost consciousness? Mo Lian suddenly asked. Shagwa furrowed his brows in deep contemplation. He was at a loss and shook his head, recalling, I, I don't remember. I only remember that we went out together as usual in the morning. When we walked past a black carriage parked by the side of the road, I saw a corner of the carriage curtain lift up. Other than that, nothing abnormal seemed to have happened. Kiao Mu nodded. This person's poisoning methods are shrewd and ruthless. There is no wonder that you guys fell victim. Many thanks for Miss Kiao's assistance. Shagwan the other River Horse Academy students who barely managed to get up bowed toward Kiao Mu again. He then left with his companions. Kiao Mu gazed grimly at the direction they left in. With a flick of her sleeve, a line of miniature black poison-tailed butterflies fluttered out and chased after Shagwan company. My Kiao's section break, the Ultramarine Province, located in the Southeast Territory of the Upper Three Provinces. From a bird's eye view of the entire Ultramarine Province. It looked like an immortal realm wreathed in wispy clouds, with the multitudinous birds soaring among these lofty immortals' mountains. Because the northern Hope Forest and the Wangchuan Sea in the west separated this southeast territory from the Divine Province and the Nether Province, it was rather content with its existing governance. It had been more than a hundred years since the Ultramarine Province had been in war. The citizens lived and worked in peace and contentment happy and harmonious. The latest topic of conversation that everybody on the streets was chatting about was. The emperor of the ultramarine province had grandiosely brought his fourth son and the latter's mother back to the imperial palace. The imperial palace, in a corner of the southern court of the Nankiao palace, a man wearing a white robe sprawled lazily on the stone table in the gazebo at the center of the lake. He used his slender fingertips to fiddle with a cup filled halfway with jade flower wine. The man rotated the white jade cup with his fingers as he propped his hand on his forehead and let his mind wander from boredom. Your fourth highness, your fourth high, your fourth highness. Ah. The man gave a dull response. His voice sounded drowsy, as if he had just stirred awake. Your fourth highness, his highness the crown prince, his second highness, and his third highness carriages have reached the Dong gate. Will your fourth highness please tea tidy up before head heading to the main hall to greet, greet the three highnesses. Clunk. The man's cup got knocked over and a small stream of jade flower wine spilled out before flowing along the cracks in the stone table. So boring. Your Highness. 
His personal junior eunuch was nearly frightened to death. He dropped to the floor and repeatedly kowtowed, Your Your Highness. The Three Highness should just just about be entering the main entrance now. Chapter 1996 The Fourth Highness of the Ultramarine Province Swish The man ruffled his robe as he stood up, and he made large strides toward the main hall. Let's go, Your Highness. Looking at his slovenly and indolent highness, with his long hair undone and hanging to the waist, the junior eunuch wished for nothing more than to cry. His fourth highness was too unparticular about appearances. He casually flicked his sleeve as he stepped through the door in his pitch black boots. He could see the three tall and refined young men standing inside the main hall at a glance. The man's eyes flickered before he said out loud with a smile. Du An was unaware that elder brothers were coming to visit, so please excuse me for not going out to meet you all. The three young men turned around. They all had elegant bearing and handsome countenances, with dashing eyebrows and bright eyes. However, the eldest one in front had a somewhat abnormally pale complexion. Fourth brother. That man nodded at him with a smile. How are you forgetting again? You have already returned to the palace with Imperial Father. And it has already been announced to the world that you are the fourth prince of the ultramarine province. Your original name is wrong yo. Oh? Du An cut off the crown prince's words wth a chuckle and waved it off. It's only a name, the designation doesn't matter. Fourth brother, eldest brother is right. These twenty years, I'm already used to other people calling me Du An. Suddenly hearing people calling me wrong are wrong ha. I really have no idea who they're referring to. Du An flicked his sleeves and sat in front of the table languidly. He pursed his lips and asked the three young men, Elder brothers made this long trip here to talk to younger brother about this trivial matter? Of course not. The crown prince of the ultramarine province smiled faintly with his pale complexion, but his pitch black eyes were staring straight at this younger brother of his. Truthfully speaking, ever since Imperial Father brought back this younger brother several days ago, he had been unable to see through him at all. If you said that he didn't bother about trifles, you could see that he had a meticulous mind from the finer points. If you said that he was reserved, he treated everybody carefreely. He gave everybody a breezy smile, as if he was open-hearted and wasn't afraid of gossip. Even though all kinds of legends revolving around this fourth prince who had met with misfortune were circulating on the streets, he seemed as if he didn't care at all. Ha! Fourth brother. During the trip to the Imperial Ancestral Temple tomorrow, Imperial Father will personally record your name and Her Highness Noble Consort Du An's name into the Imperial Genealogy. As your elder brothers, we have come first to congratulate younger brother. Du An laughed out loud and waved his hand. Elder brothers are treating me as an outsider like this, no? How could I trouble elder brothers to personally make this trip for such a small matter? It will do to send a messenger. This is a major event for fourth brother. How could we not come congratulate you? The second prince said with a smile. Then many thanks to elder brothers. Do you earn you? Oh, that's not right. Wrong thanks elder brothers for your kind thoughts. Are you actually, according to usual convention, any descendants of our ultramarine province's imperial clan? no matter male or female, will be brought to the Imperial Ancestral Temple where the clan elders will carry out an inheritance ceremony. Du An smiled without saying anything, merely listening to them talk. During times like this, he just need to listen. There was no need for him to cut in and express some other opinion. The origin of our ultramarine province's Imperial clan can be traced to the ancient demon emperor. Unfortunately, Ever since an almighty predecessor obtained this inheritance more than a thousand years ago, no one else has obtained it since. This almighty predecessor who obtained the inheritance of the ancient demon emperor is the founding emperor of our ultramarine province. Du An furrowed his brows slightly but did not say anything. Chapter 1997, I have no expectations. Fourth brother, if you obtain the inheritance of the demon emperor during this trip to the imperial ancestral temple, your fortunes will definitely differ greatly from the past, the third prince commented with a smile. Even though it has only been several days since fourth brother has come home, brother has heard imperial father mention multiple times how fourth brother is gifted with unusual talent and insight. Most likely, 
Only someone like fourth brother can catch the ancient inheritance's fancy. Duan smiled without saying anything, merely giving the second and third princes mocking looks. These two people were being too eager. They were already anxious to put pressure on him when he hadn't even gone to the imperial ancestral temple yet. On the other hand, although his eldest crown prince brother was a bit sickly, his brains and insight was not something those two oafs could hold a candle to. No wonder even though he had been ill all these years, no one was able to shake his position as crown prince. The crown prince of the ultramarine province smiled. Second brother, third brother, the demon emperor's inheritance also relies on luck. That is true. The second prince pressed his lips into a smile. When the most outstanding member of our Rong clan, the king vassal prince Rong King, was born, it was said that the sky was streaked with resplendent colors and daytime lasted for three days and nights in the entire ultramarine province without turning dark. Duan nodded smilingly. He had already heard a lot of legends about this king vassal prince along the way before even stepping foot into Phoenix Imperial City. This king vassal prince was two years older than him. Apparently, he was the youngest person in the entire ultramarine province continent to break through to divine realm cultivation before the age of twenty-five. As for the legends concerning this vassal prince wrong, there were numerous wildly vivid versions. Duan alone had heard no less than seventeen versions, and the most ridiculous one said that vassal prince wrong was born with eight heads and sixteen arms. Even spiders weren't so horrifying. Three days after the king vassal prince was born, the people from the council of elders carried him to the imperial ancestral temple. The second prince smiled with slight schadenfreude. Yet he did not obtain a shred of the demon emperor's inheritance. MHM. Duan tilted his head and tapped his chin. That really is unfortunate. Ho, fourth brother, there is something you are unaware of. Gifted imperial clan members like the king vassal prince have another chance to enter the imperial ancestral temple. After eighteen years, they get a second attempt at the ancient inheritance. Oh. Duan nodded his head. But unfortunately, outstandingly gifted as the king vassal prince is, he still was unable to obtain the recognition of the demon emperor's inheritance. Duan nodded emphatically and concluded comprehendingly, Brother is persuading me not to have too much expectation. Without expectation, there naturally won't be disappointment. Many thanks for your reminder. Younger brother cannot thank you enough. You? The third prince was momentarily at a loss for words. He indeed wanted this exceedingly gifted fourth brother to know that it wasn't that simple to obtain the demon emperor's inheritance. Naturally, he had selfish motives to dampen this person's confidence, but wasn't this young man too cooperative? He hadn't even said anything, yet this fourth brother had already taken over and said such demoralizing words. This guy who didn't follow convention made him lost for words with no idea how to respond. The crown prince of the ultramarine province, Rong Li, smiled faintly. He took the teacup the servants handed him and sipped from it. Ah, we heard that noble consort Duan is feeling slightly unwell from the fatigue of the long journey, chapter 1998, when will you come? We have prepared a small present for noble consort Duan that will nurse her body. We hope that fourth brother will not decline. Then thank you, Eldest brother, after fourth brother goes to the Imperial Ancestral Temple tomorrow, Imperial Father should be bestowing an estate to you. Brother come visit again then for your estate's housewarming. Duan continued nodding with a smile. After making some more small talk with those three elder brothers, he personally escorted them out of Nankiao Palace. However, his gaze instantly turned distant as he watched those three people leave. Only after a long time did he turn around and follow the path through the garden toward the study. Your Highness. The junior eunuch followed his master with fear and trepidation. It hadn't been long since this master came to Nankiao Palace, and he was usually smiling, but for some reason, the junior eunuch couldn't help feeling a chill seep into his heart. Which personage in Phoenix Imperial City was a simple one? Bring their presence to the study first. Understood. 
Duan entered the study and carelessly kicked the door closed. He kicked back on the divan in front of the window and lay down for a while with his legs crossed and his hands behind his head. This was until the junior eunuch knocked the door and entered. He led a group of junior eunuch and junior royal maids in carrying all the presents into the study. Your Highness. Duan nodded and waved to dismiss them. Afterwards, he flashed in front of the pile of presents. He spent the whole afternoon opening presents. After opening them one by one, he examined them for a while before putting them back into their boxes one by one. He exchanged some of the contents of the gift boxes and also threw out some others. By the time he finished admiring all of them, it was already dusk. Duan sat down in front of the desk and looked at the tree outside the window. After letting his mind wander for a while, he then pressed open a concealed space under the desk. He took out a rolled up scroll from within. He propped his forehead with one hand while slowly unscrolling this painting with the other hand. Duan's gaze landed on the expressionless girl in the painting. He caressed her face gently and murmured, When will you come, your highness? Would you like the lamps lighted and dinner served? Duan let out a long sigh and rolled up the scroll again, putting it into the concealed space under the desk. He got up and strode outside. We're going to Chengren Palace. After a moment, Chengren Palace's senior royal maid came in quickly and reported, Your Highness. His Highness has come. Noble consort Duan stood up in delight. Just as she was about to go out to welcome her son, she saw his handsome figure appear at the entrance. He walked toward her with large strides. Mom. Duan sauntered over to his mother's side with a grin. Elderly Nanny Lin who had taken care of Du Anyu and his mother for many years while still on Saikong planet, said with a smile, His Fourth Highness must not have yet eaten dinner. This old servant will call for dinner to be served. Noble consort Du An grasped her son's hand with a smile and tapped his forehead with her finger. You child have no sense of etiquette. Look at this indolent attire of yours. You still think that this is the Du An clan on Saikong planet? Mom? Does your son need to doll up before coming over to your place? Noble consort Duan burst out in chuckles and gave him both an annoyed and amused glare. She took the comb the senior royal maid handed her and unhurriedly combed out her son's long hair. She couldn't resist nagging, son, you're not young anymore. After coming back from acknowledging your ancestors at the Imperial Ancestral Temple, how about your mom having your Imperial father arrange you marriage for you? Chapter 1999, He's a Bushy Beard. Duan nearly bolted up from his chair when he heard this. He grasped his mother's hand desperately and argued, Mom, don't randomly start matchmaking for your son. With my age, your son can only be considered a baby in this ultramarine province. Noble consort Duan nearly burst into laughter, and she swatted the back of her son's head. Nonsense. Mom, your son's every sentence is true. Look at eldest brother. He's almost 40, yet he still hasn't married or had children. Why the rush? But your eldest brother already has a fiancé. How about you? Noble consort Duan asked gently, Are you tell mom? Do you have someone you like? What do you mean? Duan ducked a strand of hair behind his ear and held his mum's hands, saying, Mom, if I do have someone I like, how would I not tell you? A son escapes his mother's supervision once he grows up. Don't keep saying these things to trick me. I have a feeling that my son has someone he likes. Duan's smile turned a bit stiff before blossoming into a wide grin. Mom, really? Ah, that's right. I came over to bring you eldest brother, second brother, and third brother's presents. They brought over a lot of nourishing tonics. Duan spoke quietly into his mother's ear. I have already inspected each of them. They are other good medicinal materials that mom can consume. Later, have an imperial physician come over and prescribe mom some recipes that you can use in conjunction with your diet. You impish brat. Noble consort Duan smiled with closed lips, and she patted her son's forehead. Think over what mom discussed with you when you go back, got it? Son, marriage should happen as soon as possible. Mom can also get a grandson sooner. Duan looked exasperatedly at the ceiling. Mom, like I said, 
The normal life expectancy in the ultramarine province is more than 200 years. Your son is only 20. I'll only be 21 after the new year. Is there any need for the urgency? That's right. Noble consort you aren't sighed in melancholy. People like you who embark on the path of cultivation have a lifespan of more than a hundred years at least. But mum is only a normal person. Mum is worried that in this lifetime, mum, rest assured, there are many pills and elixirs in this world that can lengthen people's lifespans. Besides, I have a friend who is an extraordinarily outstanding pill alchemist. Don't worry. The next time we meet, I'll ask for some pills that can lengthen one's lifespan. I guarantee that mom will be free from illness and live for two or three hundred years. Noble consort Du Arn couldn't help rolling her eyes at his glib tongue. Friend? What friend? Is it a girl? Du Arn twitched his mouth and hastily shook his head. No, it's a man. A bushy beard. Noble consort Du Arn looked at him in exasperation. So useless. Look at you. My son, you're young and talented, with such handsome looks. How come you haven't gotten yourself a wife yet in these past twenty years? Du Arn simply wanted to flee out of there. Whenever his mother got to this topic, it was like she had gotten hit with a repetition talisman. She would go non-stop about getting a daughter-in-law. It was so difficult to divert her attention elsewhere. Son. Have you finished packing your luggage for tomorrow's trip to the Imperial Ancestral Temple? Mom, what luggage do I need to pack? Everything I need I have in my inner world. Oh, that's right. My son is a very impressive Grand Mystic Cultivator. Du Arn couldn't help but feel helpless. His mother was only an ordinary woman. After failing to trigger her mystic meridians, she had never come into contact with the path of cultivation. Chapter 2000 caught red-handed. That's why his mother simply didn't know what cultivation realm he was in right now. It seemed like in her eyes, a grand mystic cultivator was the most ultimately impressive cultivator. Only after eating dinner with his mother and listening to her nag for a while longer did Du An return to the Nankiao Palace. After he spent the entire night cultivating in the inner palace until dawn, a manager eunuch came to bring him to bathe and dress. It was already evident that this day would be extremely busy and filled with over elaborate formalities. Du An's section break. The sky had only just brightened. Crown Prince Mo and Miss Kiao's figures appeared together by the side of the empty road. Kiao Mu gazed coldly at the black carriage that was parked by the side of the road. Just as she was about to go up, Mo Lian gripped her wrist gently. Stay here. I'll go over first and take a look. Molian spoke softly before flying over with a leap. Just as he landed in front of the black carriage, a scarlet flame flew up and burnt the black carriage's curtain to a crisp. The carriage was empty, but there were a good few poison-tailed butterflies on the floor inside. Kiao Mu walked over quickly, and her expression turned even colder after probing her head inside. That person shouldn't have escaped far. Let's pursue. Kiao Mu concluded coldly. Mo Lian naturally nodded. He scooped up his wife by the waist and leapt up. At the same time, Little Seven transformed into a meandering golden light. He jumped onto the dragon's back, and they pursued for several kilometers while the sky was still dim. They finally discovered two black flying hawks in the wilderness beyond the city outskirts. The two panicked men on them were currently fleeing for their lives. Kiao Mu squinted her eyes frostily. She stared at the hawks' backs and contracted her pupils. Subsequently, a red light shot out from her eyes. The two men who were sprawled on the flying hawk's backs and urging the latter to accelerate instantly felt gusts of wind approaching from the back. When they turned around to look, their hearts nearly jumped out from their chests. They saw two uprooted trees plowing through the air toward their backs. The two men hastily hit their flying hawk mounts, urging them to dodge in trepidation. Yet how was that fast enough? The moment Kiao Mu activated her psychokinesis, it performed seamlessly and was as fast as lightning. With only a thought, she could use any object within a hundred meters as she pleased. Boom, boom. After getting hit by the trees, their flying speed immediately slowed down. A streak of fire promptly landed on the two flying hawk's backs. The two hawk's shrill cries pierced the air when their feathers got set ablaze. The two flying hawks were unable to withstand the flames sizzling, so they plummeted from the sky while giving off smoke and crashed to the ground. 
Molian leapt forward while securing his arm around Kiyomu's waist and appeared in front of them, the two men attempted to resist, but Crown Prince Mo's two kicks to their chests caused them to tumble backwards and slam their backs on the ground. Kiyomu cut to the chase and sent two dictum talismans at the two men with a raise of her fingers, who are you people? She knew that after the mastermind realized the poison and puppet curses afflicting the River Horse Academy students got dispelled, the person would definitely come investigate. Hence, she had the poison-tailed butterflies trail after the River Horse Academy students and waited for these people to come knocking on their door. We are disciples from the Clear Sky Faction. Clear Sky Faction. I haven't come to ferret you guys out, yet you're causing trouble for me at every apparenti. Kiyomu was livid, and she clenched her fists tightly, 